mushroom, everything around me. Chop, chop, so they found me. Too high, can't ground me. Purple haze surround me. So open up them windows. I feel the way that wind blows. I gotta keep that temple, temple, that ink. Hello and welcome to the FIFA 21 Global Series Oceania Playoffs. My name is Kyle Walker and we have finally made it. We've had all of our qualifiers and here we are. The best of the best in the Oceania region are going head to head, all hoping of glory and getting themselves to that FIFA E World Cup. Joining me over the next two days, all the way in New York City, it is Mike LaBelle and Mike here we are. We finally made it. We've talked so much about the playoffs. We've talked to, about all the, the players wanting to get here. We've whittled it down to these eight and they're going head to head on day one and day two here of the playoffs. And frankly, I don't think your energy is up there yet. I think you need to step <laughs> it up a notch. I know it's early in the morning. It is currently 3 a.m. in New York City. This is what we've been building for. This is the make or break for every competitor. There's only been one winner today in terms of being able to get that FIFA E World Cup position to oh. go with bigger pockets. I'm excited. I am so excited right now. We, we know all these competitors, back of the hand, front of the hand, both hands on the sticks. Well, this is how all of our competitors from all over the world will make it to that FIFA E World Cup. As I said, we had our qualifiers in each of our regions. And here we are, Europe, North America, South America, East Asia, West Asia, and Oceania have their playoffs coming up for you, all hoping to make their way through to that FIFA E World Cup. Mike, this season, it has flown by. I feel like we had events every single week and here we are we're getting towards the end i've turned energy up now I've, I've seen you i've thought to myself it's three in the morning in new york i can't be doing that in the uk it, it's eight in the morning so i'm bringing it you're bringing it and the fifa the players they're going to be bringing it as well no doubt about it uh this is what the competitive year is all about and this means the world to each of these competitors massive opportunities I mean, if it's 3 a.m., it's this early, I got a collared shirt on, you know serious business is going down. <laughs> it is going down indeed. And if you're at home and you're wanting to get involved in some of the competitive action as well, well, you can do with the PS4 Tournaments Open Series. These are weekly competitions for all skill levels. You compete against your friends and rivals for unique rewards, competing online for prizes ranging from unique game-specific dynamic themes and avatars to in-game currency and cash prizes as well now those who play in ea sports fifa 21 will have a chance to show off their skills to friends and rivals in weekly broadcasts hosted by playstation and all you have to do is go to the competition center at compete.playstation.com and sign in with your psn id mike labelle take it away show them how it's done just the lock in here everything's integrated it's smooth it's easy this is your one-stop shop to anything and everything in terms of tournament play and really a great liaison to figure out where you're kind of at in the competitive world maybe you haven't qualified for a big event just yet and you want to see how you measure up against a mix of a casual and intermediate advanced player group or a player pool and you get free five fri prizes can't talk as you get free prizes <laughs> while you're at it i'm telling you my energy is up there today 
Uh, I love it, Mike. I do love that. So if you are at home and you're wanting to get involved, make sure you check them out. Also, we want to hear from you over the next two days. Join the conversation. Mention us at EA FIFA Esports and make sure you use that hashtag FGS21 and you can see twitch.tv forward slash EA Sports FIFA where you are right now. Jump into the chat. I'm monitoring the chat, all right? I'm having a look. I want to see your thoughts and reactions on there as well. So make sure you do get involved. Now, Mike, we talked about all these competitors. They've been going head-to-head -head in qualifiers, in other events as well, all for those FIFA Global Series ranking points. That's how most of them have got to this point right here. So let's have a look at our leaderboard. They've been battling out throughout the entire season, Mike, and it's been chopping and changing but truly we've seen some great performances from all of them throughout this season yeah in this uh region in particular we've definitely seen the majority of competitors face some adversity too we've seen ups we've seen downs we've seen guys make a final and then not make a tournament but we have our final selection of competitors and at the end of the day this is kind of a reset the idea is to get the playoffs and now everyone here is looking the same it's double elimination you all start off in the, the winner's bracket and then you go from there you do indeed, and it is the top seven from those standings that made it their way through to playoffs. And that eighth spot went to another competitor. Oh, no, the GOAT. And how did they get here? Who will they be facing off against? Well, we can show you that right now. Our tournament bracket, this is how it looks. This is how all of our action will unfold. They go head to head right here. All eight competitors start in our winner's bracket quarterfinals. Footwiz Naylor taking on, oh no, the GOAT. Marcus Gomes and Greek Freak. Mark 11, A Nazir, DW Dylan, Atlantide, Marco, all of them hoping to stay in that winner's bracket side of things. But if they do lose, Mike, they've got another life because we have our loser's bracket as well. And I'll tell you what, though, no one wants to lose that opening game. Not in a situation like this where each matchup gets you more money, gets you one step closer to being in the grand finals. You don't want to be one step going the other direction. You do not indeed. So make sure you stay right here because once those competitors drop down into that loser's bracket, that is when the pressure cranks up and that is when their backs are against the ropes and they have to fight to save themselves. If they want to make their way through to that FIFA E World Cup, well, they can still do it from there. It just means that their job is a little bit harder. But Mike... That's why they're here. They're the best of the best. And even if they drop into that loser's bracket, it's not going to be too much on them. I mean, you say that, but this is where you're going to prove that that you're at that highest level, the upper, upper echelon of a region. It really doesn't matter what you've accomplished previously, even in previous years. We're not going to take that away from you. But today, this is when your name, your, your recognition, your claim for fame, you want to sit on that pedestal. This is the time to do so. It is indeed. Let's have a look at today's schedule then. This is all of the action you'll be watching on day one. That first matchup, Marcus Gomes taking on Greek Freak. All four of our quarterfinals, though, will take place at the same time and then we'll drop down into our loser's bracket. We do not know the competitors just yet, but we'll have loser's bracket round number one, match one at 10 past 10 central European summertime and then we'll jump to loser bracket round one match number two at 10 past 11 central European summertime and then we go into that winner's bracket it is semi-final number one at 10 past 12 and then winner's bracket semi-final number two before we break all of it down in our post show Mike LaBelle I'm getting closer and closer to being ready for this FIFA 21 action. It feels like it's been a very exciting season. We've seen the gameplay change. We've seen some of our competitors have highs and lows as well. But right now, over these next two days, this is where it all counts for them. This is that summer buildup. Is it fair enough? We're in the middle of May. As we've reached summer, I think we're at least towards <laughs> spring. I can't tell this year. And in New York, it's kind of been cold here and there, so it's confusing me. But this is really what all the competitors have worked towards, is not only getting to this point, but now 
are you going to be able to become a, a FIFA E World Cup finalist? That is the, the major goal if you're new to the FIFA ecosystem. At the end of the year, biggest event, every competitor, that's what they're dreaming of being a part of. They want to be a member of that elite group and have a chance to say, I'm the best at FIFA this year. Yep, I'm raising my hand. I just, Yep, that's right. <laughs> Call me. Call on me. Thank you. I'm telling you, it's not just New York where it's cold. We're talking about summer. It's raining here in Manchester. Let's not talk about that, though, anyway. Coming up next, as you can see, our winner's bracket quarterfinal matchup. Marcus Gomes taking on Greek Freak and Mike LaBelle. If there's one match that can sum up this entire season in the Oceania region, the old guard against the new guard, it's Marcus Gomes taking on Greek Freak. Two competitors who have been there. We know what they're capable of, but Marcus has got that experience. We've seen him for a very long time. And Greek Freak, he's come in and he's disrupted everything with that new guard mentality. Yeah, that's been a narrative in this region in particular is kind of the, the new guard versus the old guard. New faces basically coming in, if, if you're wondering what are we talking about, versus some of the old guys that have had. And they're not even old competitors, but they guys that are a little more household. They have that recognition both domestically and internationally that have had a lot of success stories and a battle between the two of them with who's going to overtake who, who's really got those bragging rights. And with both of these guys in particular coming into this matchup, I'm wondering who's peaking right now because Greek Freak started the year fantastic. Marco was kind of in the middle and we, I'm not sure if either of them are in their best form at the moment. We've seen more patches. So this should be a great start to the, the day. And if I was picking out a matchup to watch, this would be the, the one that I've got highlighted. I need to see what's going to happen. That's why you're so excited, Mike LaBelle, because you know we've got the best of the best going head-to-head -head against each other. Well, before the tournament, we caught up with Marcus Gomes. It's been a huge season for him, and this is how he's preparing for the Oceania playoffs. Hi there, my name is Marcus Gomes. I'm a professional FIFA player for Melbourne City here in the Oceania region. Straight down the middle for Marcus Gomes. He's come back time after time. Dylan, it's saved! Marcus Gomes! For this season, I did have a slow start to the year, but I managed to pick up my form in the second Oceana Cup by winning it. Uh, that was my first big Oceana, I guess, tournament that I've won since I started competitive FIFA. So this competitive year has kind of been a ramp up in just my level. I'm hoping I can really once again pig uh, for the Oceania playoffs. My strategy for the playoffs is to take it one game at a time. I know that sounds cliche, but it really is about just pacing yourself and not thinking too far ahead about, oh, if I win this game and this game, you know, I'm on my way to becoming champion. It really is about one game at a time. I know what route I'll have to go to become champion, but I know it's just about pacing myself and just focusing on the next, next game. I feel very grateful to be considered a legend of the Oceana fever scene you know, down here. It's something that has great burden on me, but also I take great pride in. Of course, there's a little bit of extra pressure every time I compete. That extra pressure does impact me sometimes, but I would never replace it for anything else in, in the world in terms of FIFA esports. It's something that you know I, I crave, and it's also something that I'm just I take a lot of pride in. In my opinion, the best Oceania player right now is uh, Ryan Naylor from Brisbane. Uh, I mean, he's on top of the leaderboards, but he's been the most consistent player in our region that hasn't won a title or a, a chip. But I wouldn't say there's one clear, clear favorite in our region. I think a lot of people would agree in saying that Marco is my biggest rival in the FIFA scene here. Uh, we've been battling it out for the title of ANZ, you know, GO since FIFA 17. My expectations before the playoffs is to ultimately win it all. I think in the past I go easy on myself and try to just say, oh, it's good to just qualify, it's good to be there, and whatever happens, happens. But um, I really do believe I have the ability to be the champion at the end. And that's just self-confidence. I'm not trying to be cocky or overconfident. I think the person that deserves to win the, the playoffs the most is Naylor. He's the top of the leaderboards and say he's the most deserving. But, you know, as the thing with Marco and I, who have been at the top for a lot of years, that you can't, you don't just deserve something it's like given to you, you have to earn it. The first thing that comes to mind when I think about the FIFA World Cup would be just immense pride to represent Australia and Melbourne City on the world stage again. To hit that dream three times and to have another chance uh, to become world champion, the ultimate goal 
would just be you know on the way to hopefully a dream coming true. Marcus Gomes there telling us how he prepared for this tournament, talking us through his season as well. And Mike LaBelle, I will never, I'll never forget that moment he won that tournament, the celebrations from Marcus. We know for a, a long time he's been trying to do that. He talked about it himself. That's the biggest tournament he's won in this region. You could see the emotion on his face, but he's also talked about his season as a whole and how coming into this stage right here, the playoffs, like you mentioned, he feels like he's at his peak right now. Um, I definitely would say that he's been in a little bit better form than Greek Freak, who started the year amazing. And like I said, it's kind of teetered off just slightly. But you never know what's going to happen. People have reset to get used to different patches. I always appreciate how honest the competitors are with their gameplay and their mindset coming into tournaments. That was also the most subtle yet still i'm very confident uh interview that we might have seen where he's like well you know he should win but i maybe i can win i believe i can win i should be able to also win i'm like all right just keep building it up i love it be your own little hype man but giving a lot of credit to, to nailer and what he's accomplished this year but it doesn't work like that the reality is you can be the most consistent player in the region but if you don't show up in the biggest matches you don't show up in playoffs it, it's a nice takeaway. You get a little, little trophy to go, maybe. One of those participation ones, but, but you're not going to be there at the big stage. <laughs> Nobody wants that participation trophy. They want that spot at the FIFA E-World Cup. And how did they get that? Well, the action starts very soon. Mike, I've got to say, you're looking very fresh. I'm looking at the screen right now. I think I'm looking very fresh. And two people that I'm guessing look equally as fresh as well. Richard Buckley, Brandon Smith. Let's bring them into the conversation right here. Guys, we're all dressed up. We're ready to go. It is playoffs richard buckley come on i'm liking that you've got the pink shirt on very nice should be a hopefully a, a, as the action today will match your shirt color well yeah jazzy I, i'm looking forward <laughs> to it kyle uh, it's a pleasure to be part of this region um i've watched all the qualifiers up today i think you, you look at the winners, you look what's actually up for grabs as well. I think you glossed over it there yourself and Mike. 20K to the winner. They've been playing for 3.5K in these qualifiers. This is serious, serious sort of event changing money. And the pressure will amplify as well because of the ramifications of this tournament. I cannot wait. There's going to be mistakes. There's going to be magic. And we're here for it for two days straight. We are indeed. Let's jump into the predictions. And Brandon Smith, I'm starting with you. We've got old guard against new guard. We've got Melbourne City's Marcus Gomes taking on Footwiz Greek Freak. Who have you got? I'm going to say it's a nice way to be welcomed in. Throw, throw me a prediction and, uh, and I'll kick it <laughs> off for you. I mean, I'm going to go Marcus Gomes on this just because you look at the facts. There's only one E World Cup spot for grabs on this one. We will be... I guess putting the first name into the E-World Cup come tomorrow, which I cannot wait to do. He's been to two before. Greek freak. I'm a big fan of this guy. I remember his story when he first started out, but I just see more experience overall, a better year in terms of that championship win. He's won an Oceania major now when just Marcus Gomes for me takes this. Richard, who've you got? I'm actually going for Greek freak in this opening game. I, I fancy him. I think that it, when you talk about form, I think Marcus puts probably a little bit more pressure on himself. I can see him going far in the tournament, but I think he's going to have to do that from a loser's bracket perspective. Greek Freak, game one. Okay, Mike LaBelle, prediction time. Who are you going for? Well, I appreciate uh, both of those predictions, but I, I'm going to join Brandon here uh, with Marcus Gomes, mainly because he's the only really competitor that's played for FIFA E World Cup at spot and had that in multiple uh, occasions now. And I, I just think that, that even playing from home, I think it's going to play a factor mentally and that he'll be ready for the moment. Now we're at playoffs. I I'm bowing out of predictions because I'm going to have to speak to them a little bit later on and interview them. So no prediction from me. Shocking. Richard, Brandon, let's throw it straight across to you. Let's get into the action. Let's kick the Oceania playoffs. It's FIFA 21. One spot at the FIFA E-World Cup. 20K up for grabs. It's over to you guys. Thank you very much, Carl. And yes, I mean, it's an absolute honour to be here first and foremost, of course. A big, big thank you. And uh, again, appreciated to the, to the likes of Nate and Traders that have done a brilliant job of covering this region all season long. I'm sure they'll be watching uh, all the way from Australia right now. But we're in the hot seat for these next two days. We cannot wait to see, Rich, who will be taking that first spot, that first spot of 32 for a FIFA E-World Cup finals, which will, will be happening 
in August. I'm just so excited that we can actually see that in the distance now. There will be an E-World Cup. And I think for these guys coming into it, you know, it was only announced, what, yesterday, the day before? Now the stakes have been risen, plus the $20,000 on the line. It's been a long old season, three different qualifiers, and eight of the best will battle it out uh, across these next two days. Uh, I mean... The, the first proper LAN event back as well in, what, about 17, 18 months? There's there's a lot on the line right now, and every single one of these players is going to want to be that representative. Also, you're competing sort of uh, in, nationally right now within your, within your country, within your region, but whoever the representative is to go from the Oceania region to the Grand Finals, They've also got a lot of pressure representing this sort of very proud region. Everyone gets behind that one player. We've seen it in the past, and I expect to see it in August. But the question that we are looking to answer, who is it going to be? Yeah, who is it going to be indeed? Well, this will be our first game of the day. We must say this now as all of the games are taking place. All of these winner bracket quarterfinals are taking place right now as we speak. We will do our very, very most upright best to give you an update of all the scores as they go in, whether that's in between the legs or as the goals do go in live. Of course, this is our game in focus. Marcus Gomes of Melbourne City up against Footwiz's Greek Freak. Um, and of course, across the board, you've got Footwiz Nailer. Just put pen to paper for Footwiz about 24, 48 hours ago. Up against Ono oh ago, fresh off an E-League uh, win with Western Sydney Warriors. Great to see one of those goats back in the scene there. Of course, SF9 Mark scored false nine. A brand new esports organization. His player up against Aina's up. DW Dylan takes on Atlantide Marco. And the question is, who will prevail? Who will be on their way? to day two tomorrow. Only six players can go to day two. Strap yourselves in. It's the playoffs. It's back again for another year. And we're kicking it off all the way across the other side of the world in Oceania. Two days of action. Marcus Gomes up against Greek Freak FIFA. Who will take that first spot in the winner's bracket semi-final? Of course, Marcus Gomes kicking from left to right in this game. Greek Freak from right to left in that foot with strip. And we'll do our best to break down the teams. There are squad restrictions that have to be followed for all of these matches, of course. Let's not forget that. But by the looks of things, they're team pretty icon heavy. Is our nine back to goal? Can't find the run of Cristiano. Finds him instead now. Ducking and diving back to... And brought in the end. I'm just trying to look at these teams, Rich. I'm... I think about having a lot to count, Brandon, because there's uh, I'm just there's seeing icons, icons everywhere. Yeah. A lot of icons on the pitch for both players. See Vieira, Hullit, Zambrotta, R9, Ronaldo. Team of the year, Bruno Fernandes making his debut there in the top left corner. No excuses in the team department for sure with every single foot item available. It's interesting you say that because we've been based around a, a squad restriction scenario all year long where... Of course, you've only been allowed to use, what, certain icons, certain team of the years. Now that's thrown completely out the window. Comes even more of an even playing field. Lovely ball around the corner. CR7 to maybe get things underway. And Oceania, oh. no, off the post. And it was a great chance for Marcus Gomes to nearly break the deadlock with what? Just 10 minutes gone of this game. Has that hit the post as well? Marcus didn't even flinch. CR7 at the near post rattling the upright inside the opening period of this first game here. As you said, all the matches taking place at the same time simultaneously. We'll try and keep you up to date with the goals as they go in from our winner's bracket quarter final matchups. So much action. So much action. Is R9 into CR7. Marcus Gomes off the mark. In the Oceania playoffs, the man that will be hoping... He can go to another fee-free World Cup and make it three out of three. Just see a very, very early pause here queued from Greek Freak going into those custom tactics, changing things up. 442, second variation for him. Great finish from CR7, you got to say. It's been coming as well. Hit the post early doors. Little finesse shot past the goalkeeper, keeping his composure on that occasion was Cristiano Ronaldo. And just as we got a glance at the squads, yeah, I'm 99% sure, Brandon, that they are uh, unlocked accounts and those team restrictions 
have been lifted for the playoffs, which I think is very good as well because the uh, you, you don't want your E World Cup spot to be on the line when somebody might have a team advantage, someone might have a team disadvantage. So you've done very, very well to get to the playoffs. Now you're here. You should have every every right to compete on a level playing field. If there was any nerves, Richard, they have been calmed down ever so slightly with that goal from Cristiano Ronaldo. I mean, you look across both of these two years, I think the, the main storyline that came out for Mark up his first major in this region. He's been called a go. He's been called one of the very best over the last couple of years. Is Alfonso Davies. How far forward is he for Marcus Gomes right now? He's going to be heavily involved in the attack and he doesn't mind at all. But that victory that he got back in qualifying number two, I remember just sitting there watching it, Rich. I think we're about to, to commentate one of the other regions and that penalty shootout, that heartbreaking penalty shootout, I mean, for Dylan on the flip side, DW Dylan, who will be in action a little bit later on today, if we can see him on the broadcast. Such an emotional grand final. It meant so much to Marcus Gomes as well as he looks to come forward for that second goal defended. Well, at the back, piling on the pressure, looking for goal number two already. Oh, look. Bruno Fernandes gets dispossessed. On the flip side, for Greek freak again. A player that I've seen He's this in. man's journey sort of progress and get bigger and bigger over the last couple of years comes forward with Pele first chance he's been in the box here's our ninth and Cristiano Ronaldo in the team as it looks unless he's been pushed out onto the he is, left hand yeah. flank yeah he is he's just sitting out there on the left yeah I was just about to comment on that actually almost in sync as you brought it up CR7 out as a, as a left mid at the moment with Pele and R9 leading the line I'm, I'm sort of surprised by that typically you'd see CR7 as that focal point as the central striker and, and Pele potentially pushed out wide, but Great Freak electing to go with the two Brazilian icons as the two central players and CR7 in the wide area. I mean, if you look across the board, always going to be looking at a Vieira in there alongside Rude Hullet. Those two have been a, a duo in midfield, but there has been one man that's Sort of shaking things up in that midfield this year. It's been, or two players should say, it could be Alfonso Davies that's in there with an argument. Or also, cannot forget Bruno Fernandes coming forward. Here's Pele now for Greek Freak. Scoop turns, twist turns in the box. Pele! Cracking goal. If this is a indication of what we're going to expect here in this Oceania region, I am all on board. Count me in. I have booked my ticket on the train. Fantastic goal from Greek Freak. Great dribbling, finishing it with the heel to heel into the near post. Game on. One thing that I wanted to touch upon with Greek Freak, he's a player that started his you know, pro career, funny enough, was back at a tournament many, many moons ago where we actually won a ticket to go to ESL Cologne to play in a head to head FIFA tournament. He flew all the way over from Australia for it. He was the only player that took the spot from Australia. And that was a tournament just gave him that taste to compete, that taste to, to really showcase as well how good he is as a player. We moved 12 months on from that, 16 months on from it. And look at him now with Team Foot Wiz. I mean, there's no better team to honestly be with in terms of an organisation that understands this region, understands competitive FIFA so, so well. And they've just helped and progressed him on that journey. And for him to be involved in these playoffs, even though we'll say on social media that he's had a bit of an up and down year, uh, Look across the broadcast, he's been top eight, top eight. And he finished second in one of them. Only a handful of players to have qualified for all three of those individual qualifiers as well. And, and he's one of them, Brandon. So a very consistent year. Yes, it might not be particularly winning tournaments, but just getting to the top six, the top eight. It is very impressive. You see a shake of head there from Marcus Gomes. I think that's more on the point of that he has been on top. He has created quite a lot of chances in the first 45. But on the flip side, for Greek Freak, he may have only had one shot on goal and it's been the perfect shot. A brilliant little bit of build-up play there. The scoop turns, the ball rolls, the, the skill cancels. It was just a brilliant combination that allowed Greek Freak to get himself back into the tie. But I'd certainly say that Marcus Gomes was in the driving seat and Probably thinking, how have I not maybe scored an extra goal going into the halfway break? A couple of changes 
to be made. And we'll be back underway for the second half of the action. If you have just tuned in, depending on where you're watching from all around the world, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, we should say. Two days of action in front of you here in our first playoffs, of course, across all of these different regions that we build up to the FIFA E World Cup. That will be happening in August. It will be an event, and there will be a new world champion this year. The question Speaking is, who will be goals. the first name? Well, the first person Sorry. to book a plane ticket, I should say. Yeah, I'm very much excited for that, Brandon. Just at half time there, we're just going to jump in. Speaking of goals, uh, we've had pretty one-sided affair in leg one between Naylor and Ono. A goal. Naylor leading five goals to one at current standing. Dylan leading 2-1 against Atlantis Marco and Mark and A. Nazar, 0-0. All those games still in the first leg. And all the winners' matches are being played as we speak right now. Eight players made it to these playoffs. Brilliant ball. This could be it's a running race for R9. Has he got the legs on him, though, to get round the defender? I know he hasn't on that occasion. Very well played by that Aaron Wambasaka. His team of the season was deemed good enough by pros to fit into the team. And that says a lot as well in an unlocked. Sort of account where these guys can use any player up to a certain day that wan gets that nod over, you know, maybe pastime pr prime Maldini's, of course. Now our players, we're looking more at Varane. Chance Pele. Nearly got the hookings on that one in front of goal. Even Vieira, if you're playing a fight with about Vieira as a makeshift centre-back that's been able to play there over the years, certainly can do a job. But wan Richie, He's deemed good enough by Marcus Gomes, and he makes the squad. I mean, look, one percent. He, he just suits everything that you need at centre back. And, and yes, people might call me a rat for saying things like this, but he's quick, he's strong, he's physical. He is arguably the best centre back, converted centre back in FIFA right now. He catches up to CR7. He catches up to R9. I've got him myself. I managed to pack him from the team of the season guarantee. He is that good. And there's a reason that pros are using him, whether it's a fullback or a five-back at centre-back. There's another shot comes in there, blocked away. But just in those moments, Rich, Greek freak. He sort of just ramps it up, doesn't he? He goes from like 60, 70, 60 to 70% of effort into like an 85, 95 plus, where he's just moving, he's twisting, he's turning, the skill moves are out, the combinations are on point. And he knows exactly what he's looking for. Might even see it again now. CR7 will have R9 in support on the overlap. Can't find that. Vieira does well just to clear up the danger. He's a prime example, Greek freak, of a player that has just sort of just been grinding out with the stream and grinding out. The man loves a weekend league. Here's Zambrotta all the way from fullback on his own. He went for the shot. Very audacious from... Marcus Gomes, you've got to rate it. Back to CR7, reversal has to go back inside. CR7 still well played defensively from Varane. He held his ground, he defended well. Poor Greek freak. Still building. Davies, back to CR7 again. Where will that ball come? Where will the directional nutmeg come? Another save, Jan Oblak. Cracking save from Jan Oblak. Very well worked there from Marcus Gomes. The actual initial strike at goal is just a few substitutions coming on here. Eusebio at striker with Zambrotta, I think it was. He's just playing for the rebound there. He's looking for a, a palm into the middle of the box or just a deflection off the goalkeeper. Something to spill it back into the danger area. Very, very good save though from... Jan Oblak at that near post. He read the direction, nutmeg, little shift across. And equal to the strike from Ronaldo. Now just looking across the bracket in terms of these two sort of matching up or being near to each other. There's been so many times across qualifier one, qualifier two, of course, those were the only two that we saw Marcus invo involved in where they were literally one game apart from matching up in terms of being on the bracket and in the final eight. This is the first time we've really been able to see them on a broadcast this year in the FIFA 21 Global Series. A couple of changes to report on there. Eusebio comes on for Pele. Pele's been the goal scorer, the only goal scorer for Greek Freaks so far in the time. Mbappe. 
pressure off the bench. He'll give you so much to work with. It's a finesse. It was always going to be ambitious. Wins a corner. Well played short. Recycled well. Into Mbappe. Zambrotta. CR7 is packed. It's congested in the box. Referee says, get back up on your feet. Thought it could have been. I'll be honest with you. It looked like there might have been a collision inside the box. Definitely seen those given. We've seen penalties given for less as well. Sometimes referee can be very fragile in and around the box. This man's fresh off the bench and very fragile in these sort of areas. You say, but oh nine, Bruno Fernandez, the interchange. Well, will he get the icon back into possession? He's got that five-star weak foot, which only so many icons do have in the game. That one makes him so much more deadly. I see our seven in a running race with Xiao Cancelo. Another one of those team of the seasons. That has been deemed good enough by pros to make the team. Maybe final chance of the first leg. Might fall to Greek Freak. CR7. Waiting. Buying his time. Buying the opportunity to get the ball into the box where there's going to be a guaranteed goal. Yesabio strikes. And Greek Freak strikes himself into a 2 1 for lead. Great work inside the box, hitting the cutback. It was all down that far left hand side with CR7. He did very well to drive into the box. As soon as he came out, he was then very direct to back in. Directional nutmeg, got to the byline. That's the most, in, most important thing about that goal. He drove and he made sure that he got to the byline in that area. Your opponent can't press circle. They can't foul you. They can't even really come towards you. He left UCB open in the box and a simple tap in. And I think in terms of being clinical, we've seen that from Greek Freak. In those sort of moments, he's been so, so clinical. Marcus Gomes had so much of the ball in these sort of areas now. Defensively, you've got to give plaudits where you can. And also, for moments like that, I mean, that's Bruno Fernandes there. He's just dropped back in to make that five at the back. He's <laughs> waited for the, the right time to come in, the right time to jump into the tackle. He's done exactly that and won the ball back. And we could be seeing a third goal here, potentially, from Greek Freak. He'll come forward now. Bruno Fernandes into your Sabio. No idea which way the Portuguese icon will end up. Referee, how much more is left in this first leg? Well, that will do us for the first match between these two here in the Oceania playoffs. The first set of playoffs to unfold. And what an opening game that has been in our winners' quarter final. Greek Freak leads by two goals to one against Marcus Gomes. And just back to that point, Rich, I feel like Marcus Gomes had a lot of the ball, had a lot of that opportunity around the box. It was trying to find that final pass. And you look at two ways there. You know, maybe a lack of trying to be creative from Marcus Gomes on the flip side, Greek Freak defending superbly well and also being very, very clinical in front of goal. Let's have a look at some of those match highlights again. It was Marcus Gomes that took the all-important lead. Talk me through all the highlights, Rich. Yeah, both players defended very well. It was a relatively defensive game, in all honesty, and I'm not surprised by that when there's so much on the line, there's so much money, there's so much sort of... <laughs> potential ramifications to the rest of your career, rest of your season, if you get that E-World Cup grand final spot. So I'm expecting semi-defensive games. This is great work. He turns out, sort of fakes it, and then as soon as he sees Wambasaka not selected, he's driving into the space. CR7, directional nutmeg, on the cutback, Eusebio with a simple finish, and you see the reaction as that second goal went in. Yeah, There's the stats. stats. You spoke about the possession, 57%. I, was say, I mean, it felt like he was just on top in terms of the possession that Marcus Gomes did have at the break point in that one, Richard. Of course, there is still a second leg to come up in this game. We can see the Twitch chat as well. We can see the YouTube chat, wherever you guys are watching from all over the world. Thank you so much for joining us for the next two days of action. It's going to be a really enthralling journey. There's eight players all hoping that they can do enough to get themselves to the FIFA E World Cup grand finals where there's only one spot and it's crazy to think rich if it was marcus gomes to do it it'd be his third fifa interactive world cup third fifa e world cup of course he was involved before it was rebranded to the fifa e world cup what an achievement that would be for him and that's out of a region where there isn't many spots but that's the consistency levels that he showed 
Yeah, well, the consistency at being at the very top of the game as well. There's a, you can be consistent at a, a good level. And a lot of FIFA players are. They are very good at FIFA. They'll make events where there's sort of 64 players going to um, qualifiers. They'll, they'll go to events. But he's been consistently great at the very top level, has Marcus Gomes. He's been representing this region on a national level, on an international level, and on a regional level at the very top, whether it's for uh, <laughs> Melbourne, whether it's for Australia, whether it's representing himself at the FIFA Interactive World Cup all the way back in 2017. He's been at that level consistently for coming up on four years now. Yeah. That sort of, that people say he's one of the legends, he's earned that status with performances like that over such a period of time. It only felt like yesterday that we were in Doha, Qatar for the yep. FIWC 17, where we saw Marcus Gomes for the very first time. I mean, there was all the legends about their Ono oh, ago. He was there as well. Marker, of course, all these players that we knew about, about the Honey Badgers. And that was where we first saw this region. We fell in love with this region. You know, one of the regions where you'll go to, they'll probably take you out for a pint as well. And you, you go, and, uh, go and enjoy some food for the evening. And we saw Marcus Gomes for the very first time there. And look at him now. I mean, years on, he, look, look what he's still doing. Do you want some updates? So I've got Go some on. updates from Go around on. the grounds. Okay, let me just... Yeah. No one's talking to me. I'm just doing it for a dramatic effect. Um, Mark from SF9 won. Ground Zero's Nazia won. One apiece at the conclusion of leg number one. Uh, DW Dylan, three. Atlantide Marco, two. And Footwiz Nailer, six. Oh no, a goat won. So Nailer coming out flying after recently being signed by Footwiz, 6-1 up at the halfway point in that particular series. It's a conversation for later on in the broadcast, but how that man has not won in terms of an actual trophy this year or that first place spot. Yes, we know he, of course, topped the table joint with Mark in the, in the recent uh, E-League, uh, of course, for the Newcastle Jets. But how that guy's not won? He's come second a couple of times. He's been involved in every single qualifier. People have been spoken about him as the most consistent player this season. This would be the tournament for him, Rich, to go and win it. $20,000, a spot at the FIFA E-World Cup. Who knows? I mean, these are the storylines that we're going to hopefully see emerge over the next two days. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, a lot of people can say you deserve something and you've been consistently good for a season, but... You've got to get over that line as well. Winning is the hardest thing. Getting to finals, but then getting over that hump, getting that trophy. There's a there's a reason we call it the winning mentality, a championship mentality, because it's very, very hard to do. It's very hard to accomplish yeah. getting that trophy. And potentially this could be uh, Naylor's time to shine. <laughs> I just think when you, there's so much up for grabs, it's going to be that extra 2%, that extra 3%, that extra 1% in the mind, that mental edge, whatever you can have, whether it's you've matched against each other previously in a tournament and you think, well, I'll beat him then, I can beat him now. Or you've been to an E-World Cup before, Marcus, Marco, having that advantage in that particular aspect, whether you've been a champion in this region, whether it's Dylan, Marcus Gomes, or A. Nazir, you've won a, a regional title in FIFA 21. There's going to be just any little advantage, any little stride you can yeah. get on your opponent is going to be the huge sort of distance between the two sides. And I've just been told Naylor's now leading 7-1 against Oh No A Go. So it's a, it's a pretty rough start for the current E-League champion here in the playoffs. Yeah, it is. It's great to see him back involved, though, because if you know the, the leagues, the way they've worked this year, the leagues are sort of linked into those playoffs and the E-League has been one of the pop well, is the leading league, of course, uh, out here in Australia um, and Oceania. And it's been a brilliant league again. Some brilliant storylines, of course, have emerged from that. You've got a mark of, of SF9. He obviously was the PlayStation winner in that. He's currently in a really difficult game at this moment in time. And then those that are watching the stream thinking, why are you not showing us all the games? Well, we've got a game is our focused game. That is Marcus Gomes against Greek Freak. And what we're going to do is just keep you up to date with all the scores that are going in from the other three matches. If this game, this next leg becomes a bit of a blowout, I, I really doubt it will be. Then we'll jump to another game. But here we go. We're back underway for the second leg in this one. Marcus Gomes against Greek Freak. And currently, Greek Freak leads by two goals to one. Whoever wins 
goes into the semi-finals on the winner's bracket side. Whoever loses, they won't be out, Rich. We have to remember that. You are not out of the tournament from losing just one game. The loser's bracket is everything. You can have a great loser's bracket. You can come through and you can really turn it around. The main thing is you just got to get through day one. In itself. It's such a difficult task. Especially when we've seen how good this region has been. It's Pele. He's been the danger man for Greek Freak. Holy oh, scored in that previous leg. What a goal it was. I mean, it's probably not first game of the day, but that could be in goals of the day. Marcus Gomes, we said he had a lot of possession in leg one. It was just about finding that clini clinicalness in and around the box. Maybe this is one of those moments. We expect to see more of this end-to-end fee for only 11 minutes into this one. Both both players are going to be certainly looking to flex the muscles in the attacking third of the pitch. I mean, Marcus knows that he's got to score to keep his winner's bracket run alive. Speaking. Greek Freak can play a little bit more passive. He can play a little bit more sort of deliberate in these midfield areas. However, he will know as good as anybody a third goal in this game. That two goal advantage is paramount in FIFA 21. Oh, no doubt about it. Speaking of goals, Richard, well, goals are flying in around the grounds as we speak right now. DW Dillon leads at landside Marco five goals to two now. All of these in the second leg. Squad force nine, Mark, leads 3-2 against ground zero, Aina's up. And then, unfortunately, if you're an Ono, a goat fan, he trails by eight goals to one now to foot whiz Naylor. I mean, what a pickup for foot whiz at the right time. Imagine if he can then go to the grand finals. What a story. That would honestly be. We'll keep you up to date, as always, with the scores as they're going. No doubt this is the most nip and tuck game. Chance, aren't I, around the corner? This is the Greek freak now. Can he find those combinations? Can he find the directional nutmeg? What a save, Edwin van der Sar. Huge save from van der Sar. R9 bullying Juan Basaka on that occasion, just shrugging him off. Needed the... Goalkeeping expertise of Edwin van der Sar. Look at this for a counter-attack. CR7 hasn't got the legs, apparently. To get past Carlos Alberto, the trusty icon. Makes it back into the team. You're wondering why you're seeing so many icons in. There is no squad restrictions. For the playoffs. To be honest, we're at a period of the year now where everything is pretty much being released into the game. In terms of the major promos. Sports have changed over the year, over qualifier one, two and three. Now they'll change once again for the playoffs. R9 can't find a way around the corner from Varane. Sam Brot has been... Made to run down this right-hand side for Marcus Gomes. That's what that five at the back will allow you. Fullbacks that have to get forward will be instrumental to any attack that you can form and can create. Speaking of the uh, the new promos coming up, Brandon, we obviously saw Bundesliga release yesterday. I'm expecting maybe Ligon to shake up the squads a little bit, but apart from that, yeah, icons heavy in the squad. You can see why with R9. What a save from Van der Sar. When you're speaking about icons, you can't look past there with Van der Sar. Somehow flicks that over the bar. But it's in moments like that, I mean, I would hate to be defended against Greek Freak. So unpredictable. So difficult to understand. Vieira now. Building into R9. R9 steal. Directional nutmeg. R9 ball roll. Greek Freak gives himself a two-goal lead. Absolutely nothing Edwin van, van der Sar can do about that. Rooted to the spot. It came from the short corner. 
Vieira just firing the ball into R9 Ronaldo. Sees up his man, directional nutmeg, and then having the composure just to do a little ball roll, shift it onto his right foot, and just bury it into the back of the net. We spoke about how deadly he is in those sort of moments. Well, look no further. And to be honest, Pele could make it even worse. The point I wanted to make, Richard, I think this team scenario, of course, these are all fantastic players, but it's going to aid you even more. You know, qualifier two, qualifier three, qualifier one, you couldn't have Pele, R9 and all of them in, in the same team together. You just couldn't. Been very, very impressed with Greek Freak here, playing the game perfectly in this second leg. Just looking to hit on the counter where he can, when he's got the opportunity to play that slow build up and get it into R9. He looks very dangerous whenever the ball is with R9 or Pele in the attacking third. Very comfortable on the ball in high pressure situations and finds himself in a very comfortable situation at half time you talk about possession in the first leg being very dominant in the favor of Marcus Gomes and the Melbourne City man team footways dominating the ball here in leg number two yeah the tables have, have turned no doubt Richard in terms of how that looks now in this game I mean one goal to nil it's 3-1 and aggregate to Greek freak he's 45 minutes away from then moving in to the winner's bracket semi-final. After this game has concluded, of course, four names will drop down to the loser bracket. Four names will continue their run into that winner's bracket side, of course, no doubt. Still so much to play for here, so much up for grabs. But from what we've seen so far, not just that. The possession has been great. It's been dominant in so many ways. And Rich, I believe... We have got some final scores coming on through and we do some indeed. big, big scores indeed. Yeah, Footwiz nail at 10. Oh no, a goal three. That is a final score. SF9 Mark beating Ground Zero's Nazar three goals to two. And Dales Dillon beating Atlantide Marco 5 2. So that means Mark, Dillon, Naylor, all. Progressing through to the winners bracket semi-finals. Marco. There's a oh no a goal. And the loser of this match right now moving down to the losers bracket. And of course, we knew that Naylor was going to come in strong. We knew he was going to be confident. But for me, I think the biggest result that jumps out to me there is that A Nazar one against Mark. We knew that Mark's been great this year. Top fours, qualifier one, two, and three, PlayStation champion in the E-League with the Newcastle Jets. But A. Nazar, a player that has won a qualifier, you know, Summer Cup Series last year when we didn't have playoffs. Loses, goes down to a loser bracket. Now he's playing Elimination FIFA alongside Marco and uh, Ono Ago. I think those two, just, I'm trying to picture the loser's bracket in my mind. I think Marco and Nazar might match up, Brandon, round one loser's bracket. That is a game that we can conclude, Rich. I've just heard it in my ear now. Pele to conclude the tie to send Greek Freak into a winner's bracket semi-final. And he's been the main man. Pele, so, so good. Him and R9, they've interchanged, they've exchanged the ball in so many ways. But more importantly, they've got that ball in the back of the net for four times across the two legs. Pele outpacing. Team of the season for Ran right there. Ran right around him. No chance at all for Varane. As soon as Pele was clear, he wasn't getting back. And an emphatic finish into that top left corner. However, what that does mean is that we could be seeing an all-footways game. Chance, Marcus needs to pick him off. He will. Big goal. Big, big, big goal there from Marcus Gomes. A silly mistake at the back from Greek Freak.
It was Hullet, wasn't it? Stealing the ball back. Quick turnover. Carlos Alberto tried playing back to the goalkeeper. Jan Oblak just... I mean, wasteful? Rushing at the back? Giving Marcus Gorms a lifeline in this game. Be looking just to extend that lead again. Marcus Gomes throwing everything forward. Final 30 minutes now. How would that goal evaded his hopes of a comeback? See the and press already from the get-go. So many Melbourne. We've watched enough games of competitive FIFA. In this position, as crazy as it sounds, the trailing player almost feels as though they're potentially the one in the driver's seat. And look, you might be 4-2 down, but it's so easy this year in FIFA to press, to get the ball back, to hunting packs. If you can get a third goal before the 70th minute, we've seen a lot of games of FIFA in a click of a fingers turn around and the tie completely turn on its head. Especially in terms of that mental side of the game, which is so big and often... Never really looked upon with enough respect because it can be so difficult mentally. It's exactly what he needs to do here, Greek Freak. Just hold the ball, pull Marcus around. Noble touch from Pele. He's been the cult hero. Not on that occasion with that sort of touch. Pele on the flip side. Marcus Gomes in a running race with Alfonso Davies. It will be the Bundesliga fullback that comes out on top in that one. Final 20 minutes now. This is the last game to conclude in our quarterfinals. Chance in. to conclude it. Vieira. Oh, he went to try and be clever and play it around the corner. It looked as though a little ball roll was the perfect option there. He went for the sweat. He went for that extra pass. Will that come back to haunt him? Marcus Gomes running rampant now at the defence of Greek Freak. So many blue shirts forward. Another big win, Carlos Alberto. He's got to look after the ball better, Greek Freak. This could be the chance to conclude the tie. Pele, he's in a running race. Can't get round him with Van der Sar. Bruno Fernandes. Great challenge. Another Maybe a game-winning win. tackle right there. Final 13. Two goals are needed still. Again, the ball ricochets back to Marcus Gomes. These moments now. We've got to see the Marcus Gomes that we know. R9 into CR7. Back to R9. We've got a game on our hands. Uh, I told you. With 20, 25 minutes left to play at 4-2 this game. Is far from over. And then Ronaldo, good extra pass inside the box from Marcus Gomes. You're just backing R9, you're hoping, you're praying that he's going to finish it. 12 minutes remaining. <sighs> you cannot call this at all. Well, well, well. As much as Vieira was winning the ball in the midfield there, Bruno Fernandes was also doing his part. It just was not enough. And his press from Marcus Gomes was relentless. Too relentless. Mentally as well. I often talk about the mental side of FIFA. Greek freak. He just has to put those that missed opportunity out of his mind. Just has to focus on the next 12 minutes. These are very important 12 minutes for him in this tournament. You get rid of Marcus Gomes, you send him down to the loser's bracket. You start to look ahead, potentially. You have to forget about the chance that you missed. So if he starts thinking back, what could have been, Marcus Gomes will quickly catch up to him like a lion chasing an antelope. Final 10 minutes. Another goal does go in from Marcus Gomes. Well, extra time will be. 
on our hands in front of us. Things have changed in Oceana coming into this tournament. There's more money on the line. There's a FIFA E World Cup spot on the line. That means we need to see big performances, and we will see some incredible games of FIFA. Charles Greek free to conclude the tie to send himself into a semi final. Oh, nine on his own. And I think we can pencil that one in now. Outstanding composure from Greek Freak. He took his time. He played the percentages to a T right there. Waited for the error from Marcus Gomes, waited for the goalkeeper movement and whipped it into that far corner. Well, if he was an answer like Richard, he's, he's run away into the woods and we'll never see him again. Marcus Gomes will drop down into a loser bracket. And what that does mean is that if you're a FootWiz fan, And you've got an interesting next game on your hands. Who are you supporting? Are you just going to say, sit back, let's just have a good game of FIFA, lads? Eusebio on his own. Eusebio, what a save. And the side has pulled out some ridiculous saves, as much as it won't matter now. Marcus Gomes, he tried his best. He gave us a, a really exciting last 10, 15 minutes or so. However, even if he scores now, it won't be enough. Eusebio will. And five goals to four will not be... Enough for Marcus Gomes. It will be enough for Greek Freak, though. He'll move into a winner's bracket semi-final. And Marcus Gomes will have to face Ono oh, Ago in the loser bracket. That plans to be another great game. Very, very good win here for Greek Freak. He progresses through, and I, I don't want to say that maybe only one out of the four was correct, Brandon, but... I mean, Kyle bottled it, didn't he? He didn't even give a prediction. But Richard Buckley was correct with Greek Freak FIFA. First game, one on the board, but a very good win for Greek Freak. I think you talk about the sort of experience, the mental side, the the composure that he showed, all three of those things in abundance right there. Good win, and he will be full of confidence going into the next game. Yeah, well, that's our first game done and dusted. Four players move into the winner's side of the bracket. Four players drop down to the loser side of the bracket, playing Elimination FIFA in the next round. We're going to throw it back over to Cole and Mike. They're going to break down all that match. Richard, Brandon, thank you so much for that one. Wow, what a way to start the Oceania playoffs. Mike LaBelle, let's try and break this down because we were messaging during that game and we were talking about how crazy it was back and forth, the old guard against the new guard, but I think we can agree to extremely great, I'm going to say, FIFA 21 players showing up and showing what they've got. Yeah, and it starts out in the opening leg you see Marcus kind of set the tone, splitting through ball, beautiful pass, open up the body, the ball roll, the finish. You see an early pause cued. And if anything, Marcus is probably going to sit with this result a little bit and say that he should have had more. He had a lot of opportunities right in or around the box where he wasn't able to convert. As you see Greek Freak start to battle back what it means to him. And it was more of the same. It was more of the same. He was able to add to that lead with Greek Freak. And it was really, really impressive how he came back or was able to bounce back from being down in this matchup. And when you're looking at all the results, which I'm not gonna spoil it for you, Kyle, because I know you've got a, a list showed, or a list on paper to, to kind of break down for everyone else, or to at least give the lay of the land uh, in terms of all the matchups, but it's gonna be a lot of old guard going up against old guard is all I'm saying in that loser's bracket. As you see a through ball here, 50-50. Pele, a little bit of a bump. And Pele's really came into teams more and more. Even when you did have squad rules, uh, we were seeing Pele used instead of the likes of uh, using even R9 in some instances. Big turnover. We started the message, as you were saying, where Gomes could be back on an agenda. He's got his own narrative. A little double tap pass, the one, two, near post. You love a back heel, but it was not to be. It was not enough. You see this final layoff, too much time for R9, he pulls it back, takes that time, shows the composure, finesse shot, open up the body, GG and Greek Freak moves on. He does move on indeed in the final few moments though, Marcus did manage to pull one back, 5-4 it ended, Mike.
Marcus, let's focus on him. A little too late. You can see the frustration on him, but he's got to turn this around very quickly. He drops down into that loser's bracket. If he wants to progress, what's he got to do? What's he got to change? What's he got to adapt to, Mike? He has to be more clinical. Uh, he could have set the tempo completely against Greek Freak. He had all the opportunities in that first leg, and that's just not how it how it went. He, he mishandled and misappropriated some opportunities within the box. And if you're not going to finish a 1v1, FIFA's pretty unforgiving uh, in many regards. It can be very cruel just because you're you're having more possession play or you're having better buildup. You're in the right area in those key moments. If you don't take them, if you don't grasp them, if you don't convert... You don't always get the second and the third opportunity. So that would be my big feedback from Marcus because he didn't put Greek Freak under pressure. And then it was too little too late when we saw kind of the comeback being forged. Right, let's have a look then at how all the other matches played out. And we can see how all competitors got on. Naylor there representing Team Footwiz 10-3 against, oh no, a goat right there. That means that Naylor goes through into that winner's bracket. Oh, no, a goat drops down into the loser's bracket. For Naylor, he's had a very consistent season. Marcus Gomes was the one talking about him. He goes through and joining him in that winner's bracket as well. SF9, Mark 11, he comes out 3-2 winner against Ground Zero, A Nazir. Those two going head to head and it is Mark who comes out on top moving on to our next matchup right now DW Dylan he took on Atlantide Marco again new guard taking on old guard and it was DW Dylan who represents Dire Wolves who comes out on top five goals 2-2 two, two, and he goes through to that winner's bracket right there Mike LaBelle I mean when you're looking at all of these results we can see how they play out and who moves forward like you said a lot of the new guard well they've gone through into that winner's bracket Naylor Greek Freak Mark 11 and DW Dylan. I mean all four competitors right there they put themselves in pole position and they want to continue this momentum well, and they've also at least doubled their money at, at this point but it's much easier and it's definitely uh, a much better circumstance when you're able to be in a position like this where you don't have to grind through the loser's bracket, even more so when it means so much. And you could say based on form, especially when you're looking at the likes of Dylan or Naylor, that these two guys have been arguably the most consistent. They got those results, but look at these matchups and what potentially we could have on the books. Yes, indeed. As you can see, that round number one in the loser's bracket. Oh, no, a goat takes on Marcus Gomes. And then ground zero, A Nazir takes on Atlantide Marco. This is it. Last chance saloon for them now, Mike LaBelle. We talked about cranking the pressure up for some of these players. Within the first two hours of the playoffs, it could be done. Two of them are going home. I didn't know that we were going to a country western with the saloon of the, the lower <laughs> bracket or the loser's bracket. But, I mean, this is what it's all about. I like the tension. I, I like that the, in the competitive space, you always can control your own destiny. And we've also seen a lot of players and competitors throughout this year be able to make that run from the loser's bracket and become the, the grand champion. So right now, you've lost one, but it's how you're going to rebound, how you're going to battle back or lack thereof. Well, we will be watching Marcus Gomes take on Oh No A Go. One will progress through that loser's bracket. We will say goodbye to the other one. Make sure you stick around. If anything to go by from that first matchup, I can guarantee you there's going to be lots of drama. So make sure you do not miss any of it. Stay with us. Stay tuned. We'll be back after this short break.
It's been a long road. It's been sort of an up and down. But we're finally here. This is the best season in terms of Oceania FIFA. Get hyped for FGS 21 Oceania playoffs. You guys can head over to Twitch, EA Sports FIFA. The stars of the region are ready to shine. The quality definitely won't disappoint. $50,000 is on the table. I know you guys have been looking forward to seeing me play. My strategy for the playoffs is just to play my own game and definitely try and win it all. Keep going, Mbappe. Touch Bruno. It's three of the best vanilla. The controllers are ready to drive the players into the spotlight. I probably am the favorite. Not convinced yet? Guys, tell them. The playoffs coming up. Watch the Oceana playoffs event. Make sure to tune in on Saturday and Sunday to watch the Oceana playoff. Come and see, he's gonna take the riding rides home. FIFA Global Series 21 Oceania playoffs is brought to you in part by Turtle Beach. Hello and welcome back to the FIFA 21 Oceania playoffs. We've had our four quarterfinals in the winner's bracket and now it gets interesting. Four of our competitors have made their way through to the winner's bracket. Four are in the loser's bracket and to break it down with myself, Mike LaBelle joins me right now. Mike, we talk about this part of the tournament where it gets interesting because we're going to say goodbye to some of our competitors and ultimately they've made it this far but that's the end of their competitive season when it comes to FIFA 21. The stakes have definitely been taken up another notch uh, even though I will say the vibe and the energy is a little bit different this weekend in general with it being the playoffs. I can feel it, you can feel it, I'm sure that everyone that's watching kind of feels the same type of energy because every win puts you one step closer. This isn't just for global series points. You not only have a little bit of heavier pockets but you're also one step closer to the FIFA E World Cup. And for almost all these competitors, that would be a first. It is indeed. And one man I want to talk about, Marcus Gomes. It's almost an expectation of himself and of the FIFA community as well that we see Marcus at the FIFA E World Cup. We know that he's been there before. He's one of the most experienced competitors, not just competing this weekend, but in the scene overall. So for him, do you feel like he feels extra pressure, Mike, that he's got to grab that FIFA E World Cup spot? I don't know that he feels extra pressure pressure to get the pve e world or the fifa e world cup spot there's a lot of going on there but i <laughs> <laughs> remember it is early morning but I, I i do feel that he feels pressure in particular in this matchup because marcus gone has been grinding all year and even though oh no a goat is a competitor that we've seen over the past couple years very active in the scene this has not been one of his better years we haven't seen him on broadcast this is his first appearance he kind of i, I don't want to say squeaked in but he got himself into the tournament and he didn't look good in his opener at all against Naylor, conceding 10 goals. And that's going to dent his confidence, definitely. So now he's got this matchup, Noah Goat, taking on Marcus Gomes. For him, it's a great chance for him to bounce back, to showcase and to prove that he is here to compete. He's not making up that eighth spot. He's actually here to do some damage and to take out one of the biggest competitors in this scene. So what has he got to do, Mike, to beat Marcus Gomes? Well, he needs to have short-term memory. Uh, he cannot <laughs> think about what just happened in the previous matchup. And be clinical. He has to take his opportunities. Maybe assume that you're not going to have as many. But all the pressure sits on Marcus Gomes' shoulders, not on Oh Noah Goat. And that does make me a little concerned for Marcus because he is somebody that is known to be so self-critical in terms of his gameplay. Sometimes it benefits you. Sometimes it can be a, a deterrent. But it is a little bit of a concern because... You saying, I could go out right now, I could be eliminated, I'm supposed to beat this guy. You start adding all this additional pressure onto yourself that other people maybe haven't applied. We just bring it up for a discussion uh, point. But at the end of the day, it's single elimination now, you can't lose any more games. We're going to have players progressing and players going home or turning off the console. Well, turning off the, the consoles right there and not making their way through to the FIFA E World Cup. Let's bring in Richard and Brandon into this conversation right here. Guys, when we're looking at Marcus Gomes, when you're looking at Oh No, A Go, Brandon, I threw that question to Mike about Marcus. He expects himself, or we expect him, we want to see him at the FIFA E World Cup, but he's made it slightly harder for himself, Brandon. He has, and I think, I mean, Richard Buckley, I don't mean to keep just hyping up this man, he did say that Marcus Gomes looks like he needs to go to a loser bracket, then to go on through and, and, and do it all. But also, 
there's a potential storyline here, Carl, that Marcus Gomes can make it three FEWC finals. I mean, that would be an incredible storyline. Yes, Onoa Goat is a, a bit of a legend in this scene. He's, he's popped up late, a bit of a late bloomer in terms of the E-League. But I still feel like, for me, Marcus Gomes just takes this game off experience, off winning a qualifier this year. And if that's not a wake-up call in that last game for him, this one will be. It's elimination FIFA. I think Marcus Gomes takes this. It's elimination FIFA indeed. You're going straight in with your predictions. So, Richard, I'll come to you. Brandon's already gone with Marcus. You're 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 going with the beard right there. I'm not I'm not as lucky to have one of those. Uh, I can't look <laughs> off into the distance. You know who are you going for? Be, 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 beard's a bit strong, really, isn't it? I mean, I, I, look, I appreciate it, it being called a beard. Uh, I've had worse. Um, <laughs> I would probably go. I think Marcus Gomes take this. Uh, I think he he was also getting better as that game went on against Greek Freak. Yes, he did score late, but his sort of off period was end of the first leg, beginning of the second leg. He looked better as that game went on. I think he's coming into this game somewhat decent momentum wise. And look, it's much easier to bounce back from a five four than it is a ten three. A 10-3, you're assessing everything. You're going, what, am I just playing bad? What went wrong? Do I have to change formation? I think Mike has gone take to this. Mike, I don't need an explanation. I just need a name. Very quickly, who have you got? Oh, Kyle doesn't want me to talk. I understand. <laughs> I, I think Gomes is gonna, gonna gonna get this win. I feel like this could be poised for that Gomes versus Marco potential matchup. Winner goes through, loser goes home. I'll throw that out there. I just want to... Uh, put that you, manifestation. You're still giving me an explanation, Mike. I just needed a name. <laughs> Richard, Brandon, I'm throwing it over to you. It is the loser's bracket. Let's get into it. Thank you very much, Carl. And yeah, this is no doubt one of the big, big, big games for these guys now. Because if you lose, it's the end of the season, Rich. I mean, what are you doing? Just twiddling your fingers for the next, what, however many months until FIFA 22 hits the streets. For me, this is a special game. I've touched upon it before. We saw these guys, FIWC 2017 qualifier, all the way out in Doha, Qatar. These two players were there, and I think it says a lot that what? FIFA 18, 19, 20, FIFA 21, they're still in the conversation, and they're still in a, a, a tournament where they could have a chance to then go to a FIFA E World Cup. And I think people keep making this debate about the new guard, the old guard. These are two players from the old guard, and I think they deserve a lot of credit for everything that's also happened in this region in terms of just bringing through talent showcasing how to handle yourself how to build a brand for yourself and this plans to be a great game it's time to roll up the sleeves because you're about to get down and dirty in the losers bracket you're in the trenches right now lots of fifa ahead of you lots of elimination matches ahead of you it's time to really put that grind in put all those hours of weekend league of rivals to good use chance here for marcus first chance of the game r9 tucks it in Early goal, much needed early goal as well for Marcus Gomes. Yeah, massive goal for Marcus Gomes. As you said, it was a wake-up call for him. He didn't play a bad game against Greek Freak, but for him, he'll just look at the fact that I've lost the game and I'm in a loser bracket scenario. I've got to turn up, I've got to switch on, and I've got to play so much more better than I have. Of course, elimination FIFA. I'm in right now. Oh, no, a go. Looking for an equaliser off the mark. Bruno Fernandes cuts it back inside. Bruno Fernandes still. Oh, the 2021. E-League e -League Australia. Xbox champion. Chance around the corner. He's on. Nine. Whoa, out the back. It was a bit of a coming together between defender and Edwin van der Sar. One thing we know about the Dutch goalkeeper is he was putting off some ridiculous saves in that last game. I'm sure there'll be many more to come across this evening and tomorrow. Yeah, he's actually debating me, potentially picking him up, you know, that Edwin van der Sar, Primark on moments. Seeing a lot of good things about him. After that last performance for Marcus Gomes, it was a potentially, nearly, game-winning performance. However, Greek Freak just pulling it out in the end. Couple of I mean, late, late goals. Just just on that, in, in terms of Rich, he's been obviously a, a PlayStation year this year, has Oceania been? Which means, of course, any Global Series points can be accumulated on the PlayStation from qualifiers, from qualifier one, two, and three, from weekend league, as we know. 
See, oh no, a goat was an Xbox representative. He came in and sort of put all his eggs into one basket, that being the E League Australia finals. What does it say about him, Rich, that he went to that after not seeing much of him in the Global Series and then went and won that tournament? Yeah, it, it just goes to show maybe deep down where he's potentially mockable as well. I think the the console debate certainly is rife every single year. Who's better? What is there a particular console that is better? But everyone being on the same competitive console this year, I think has certainly streamlined the Oceania region. And you've got, there's no debate. Do you know what I mean? You have one leaderboard, you have players at the very top who are the best players. It's very easy to see who's been consistently better. Chance. Oh, no. For Marcus Gomes. He was twisted and turned in his own. Oh, no, often loves to do. There's a corner for his efforts. Speaking about a player that been in this thing for so long just looking at his resume for Ono ago FIFA 19 he was involved in foot champions cup March that was a very long time ago and also FIFA 20 was knocking on the door to try and get his spot in one of those foot champions cups he's been around the block he's been involved for a very long time have both of these two players Marcus Gomes though I think that's why he got the all the votes really in predictions just because he is just so much more experienced. I think him winning. The Oceania major was massive. And I think it does say a lot as well when you've got a player that's played for the same club. For what, three, four years now, Marcus Gomes has been at Melbourne City. You never see that sort of loyalty in terms of a club to a player at times in competitive FIFA where there's that equal partnership. Of course, part of the City Group. There's been such a good year for the City Group in general. Look across the board of Melbourne, New York. Of course, they were dominating the, the MLS for so long. You saw Manchester City do well. They won the E Premier League. Chance for Bruno Fernandes. Brilliant save with the feet of Nick Pope. Wins it again on the second bounce. And I just think there's just been a big investment in terms of esports. And they've brought on psychologists on board for this year with the City Group. Everyone working behind the scenes has just been echoing that winning message and I just think for these guys it's been a breakout year for a, a selection of football teams that have invested into this space superbly well and they deserve all the rewards that they're getting yeah I, I completely agree with everything you're saying in that sentiment right there in regards to the the mental side of the game they've always been big advocates for esports uh, fever esports have the city football group however that sort of psychological side they've certainly invested in and they've reaped the rewards as well and I say that because off the back of Marcus Gomes last year, he knows it wasn't the standout year for him and a difficult year for the world. And of course, the Global Series never was concluded. This year, we know it will conclude with a FIFA E-World Cup Grand Final. And Marcus Gomes wants to be within that 32 in London come August. He looks to try and find that second goal of Arno and five minutes away from half-time. Another mistake, Arno a go. Could get pickpocketed here. Arno into Bruno Fernand. Seven available. No, it wasn't. Vieira. The last ditch tackle. Keep an Ono a go in the tie still. It was very well pressed from Alfonso Davis high up the pitch. I think for me right now, Ono a goal just looks to be forcing a couple too many chances. He played that through ball there. Wasn't really ever on. Down the line. Yeah. Almost trying to force himself and will himself back into the game. Especially after the, the result that he previously had, losing 10 goals to three. He knows that he has to try and score very quickly to try and get instantly back into this game. So if he gives him a lead, Marcus Gomes. So he will many keep last inch tackles being thrown around. Sorry to, to jump in there, Rich. I mean, Hull had a chance. He could have another one dragged back into a ball row. He's on a stroke of half time. Last chance of the half referee says, no, we'll just call it there. I'm surprised he didn't play. That extra attack out, but I mean, last each tackle was coming in here, there, and everywhere. Keep an oh no, they go in the tie. Other than that, we haven't seen too much from the e League Australia champion. He's had 40% possession. Marcus Gomes has been in that driving scene. It's the 5 3 2 up against the 5 3 2, as we've seen in this game. 
And that probably is a, a very good reason as to why the game has been a little bit quieter from both players. Two formations seeing each other up. There's no extra room on the pitch. There's no extra space for players to attack into. Alfonso Davies, Cancelo, and uh, on the other side, Cancelo and Phil and Mendy. Both wing backs playing quite high up the pitch. You saw Davies winning the ball back on a few different occasions for um, on our go there. But really, and the reason he's winning the ball back, he's playing centre mid. So just echoing back onto that, it hasn't just been the full-backs into centre-back, which has been a debate this year, and some of the many pros have enjoyed. You can also play full-backs in at midfield. Alfonso Davies not seeming out of place at all in one of those central midfield positions. Back underway. For the second half of this match in our loser bracket. We're into those loser rounds now. I mean, you look across the ball, what a brilliant other loser match we've got coming up. Azar against Atlantide's Marco. Another elimination game. One of those two will not be going to the E-World Cup. And to be honest, I think you look at them two, they've had a great... I mean, a great resume of all. Marco's still been in the conversation. He was so close to winning that E-Club World Cup all those months ago. Of course, he was playing with Nail about then. On the flip side, Nazar, he's won a qualifier this year. He's also been in the conversation as ever. Pull it into Cristiano Ronaldo. TR7 still reverse Elastico. What can he do down the byline? There's the cutback. What a block again. Very, very unlucky. Great play again from Marcus Gomes. Reverse loss goal down the line, playing the byline, utilising all the space that he's got. Alfonso Davies just going to be having a little chat there with the referee. No booking to come out for him. It's been a few of those, hasn't there, though? Like, sort of last-ditch blocks, last-ditch tackles. From yeah. Ono ago. Every one of his defenders earning a, a paycheck at the moment for him. If he was to go through today. Oh, no, it gets a bounce, cuts back. It was a clever idea because Hale was waiting for it on the edge of the box. It was well read by Vieira. Final 28 minutes here. You just feel like Marcus Gomes wants a second just to try and create a bit of a gap between him and his opponent. Oh no, Goat's done very well to just keep himself in the, the tie. He hasn't had much possession. He struggled to really create going forward. Well on Mendy. Into Davies. Interchange as well. Final 25. Good feet in the box from CR7. Went for the LTL. Couldn't find the clean breakaway. Oh no, back to Mendy again. Back to Oh no, another great block. Maldini this time throws himself into it. Still alive is the chance. CR7 again. Maldini there. Everyone at the back throwing over a go. Putting in an absolute shift at the moment. So many bodies behind the ball for Hono Ago at the moment, especially when it gets in around that box. Bodies on the line. And maybe that is a, a concerted effort to try and just concede less. You conceded 10 in the opening game of the tournament. Don't want to keep reminding him, but he knows that defending is an area that he had to improve upon. He certainly looks to have done that. One thing we haven't seen enough on is moments like this from Ono ago. Pele, chance! What a save, and the up. Probably the best chance we've seen all game long from Ono Oko. It's one thing where he's lacked is getting the ball forward and trying to make things happen. That was the best chance he's had all game long. But Edwin van der Sar, we said he'll make brilliant saves. There's another one to add to the collection for Marcus Gomes. Edwin van der Sar very much 
putting on a performance to remember here in the Oceania playoffs. So having a quick look at who's going to be introduced. Frankie De Jong, a player that I was very, very much looking forward to potentially packing from my elite rewards, whether it be as a, a tradable or as a red pick. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to see the Dutch man. But I'm going to get a chance to watch him in action here. Alongside Pele coming on and also... Kylian Mbappe, team of the year. Chance to drive forward. Is he on side, Mbappe? No, just a little bit too keen off the mark. But at the end of play tomorrow, someone will get $20,000, the biggest prize pool there has been this year in Oceana. Cancelo. Why well, no a go? Find an equaliser. Bruno Fernandes twisting, turning the box. Can he find CR7? Does well! I tell you what, a really well taken finish by no a go. The way he shifted the ball from left to right. And the left stick dribbling inside the box as the ball fell to CR7. Very, very good play from Ono Ago. He's not showed us a lot offensively in this game, but that right there was magic. CR7 creating the space and an emphatic strike into that far left corner. A massive goal from a player that needed to give us more in those sort of areas. You can just see that disappointment from Marcus Gomes where he's been dominating so long in the game. Honestly, what a storyline this would be for Ono ago. There was nowhere to be seen in those Global Series rankings before. The yearly illegal Australia came round where he did turn up. And he took that number one spot and the playoff spot alongside it. CR7, Marcus Gomes now looking to get back in front of Mbappe. Referee. It's a little bit suspect there, didn't it? I mean, at this point, the referees, you just, you just sort of let them play. Do you know what I mean? You just let them be. For a bit of a rule out on the ball, got away from the man. I've no idea how the referee is not, and all the animation is not set the player down there. Where's the ball back? Oh no, a guy if he snatched his first leg. No, he, he would be so so pleased with his performance because defensively, as I said before, leaps and bounds better than the first game that he played. However, Marcus Gomes knows that a goal has to come. He has to give himself a lead in the second leg. It's not going to happen. Well, that will do us for leg one in our first loser bracket matchup here. If you have just tuned in, this is the FIFA 21 Global Series Oceania Playoffs. My name is Brandon Smith. And of course, alongside me is Richard Buckley in the commentary booth. We've just seen a very interesting first leg there. A dominant first 45 from Marcus Gomes. Did the exact same just a game ago in leg one. We'll have a look at some of those highlights again because it was a dominant start and it was a very dominant Marcus Gomes for the first 45. It was, yeah. And look, I'll be honest with you. When he went 1-0 up inside the first four minutes, I thought we might have seen a, a one-way performance. I thought we might have seen another sort of... <laughs> Defensively flawed performance from Ono a goal. However, I was completely wrong. Great work from Ronaldo inside the box there. Left stick dribbling. Real, real nice. And you just see that reaction from Ono a goal as the goal went in. Very, very happy. Defensively, 100 times better than his 
first performance and really uh, this second leg it's a one game shootout you win you go you carry on you lose yeah end of your season yeah exactly that you saw as well behind him that e-league australia golden control he was the xbox champion of course as we know got the playoff spot the playoffs are on playstation so had to you know change over and, and get used to that new controller as soon as he could well we've got some exciting news to tell you guys that are watching this right now when it could be that you at home could get your hands on a turtle beach headset of course they have been a fantastic partner of the Global Series this year, especially in Australia. Well, the FIFA 21 Global Series Oceania playoffs are brought to you in part by Turtle Beach. Be sure to follow at Turtle Beach on Twitter and stay tuned for a unique hashtag that you can tweet later on in the broadcast for your chance to win the new Stealth 600 Gen 2 headset. So stay tuned. There will be a hashtag that me and Richard will tease for you guys a little bit later on in the broadcast today. Who knows? You could have a headset like we've got on at this moment in time, just for sitting there and watching some FIFA. Still so much to be played and still so much to come today. Just to confirm, we will be playing until there is just six players left uh, in the tournament. We'll have, of course, our two loser games, our two loser rounds, and then we'll have our two winners semi-finals. And then, of course, we'll know who will be the remaining players left in the tournament here. Still another leg to come up. 1-1 one, one is the scoreline. Still so much to play, but Marcus Gomes... And I should say, I know a go. It's elimination FIFA. You lose. That is the end of your FIFA 21 season. If you win, well, you're still in. But we'll talk about it more as the night goes on, Rich. The loser bracket is a long, old run. And you also <laughs> get to a grand final where you've got to make a bracket reset happen as well. And the loser's bracket is stacked with a bit of a uh, shark-infested water territory as well, shall we say, when you consider that Marcus Gomes or oh, no, a goal will go through this game. The winner of this will play the loser of that all footways tie uh, between Naylor and Greek Freak. So you're starting to look at rematches already. You then consider who's in the other loser's bracket round one game. I'll tell you, Marco from Atlantide and A. Nazar, two winners, two champions in their own right, matching off in loser's bracket round one. That was a final last summer in the Summer Cup. Now, it's a, a, I mean, it's outrageous that this is a round one game in the loser's bracket. It really is surprising to me. And look, I think it, it goes to show the quality certainly stepped up. A lot of this new blood that we've been talking about, players like Naylor, players like Dylan, uh, Mark as well, they're stepping up to the mark and they're certainly showing why they should be accounted for in the winner's bracket. We're going to get back underway now for the second leg. I mean, I can only echo what you're saying. Yes, there hasn't been an Xbox sort of side or a bracket this year in Oceania. But it's been a different year. It's been a difficult year. But credit to everyone involved working behind the scenes within the Global Series this year. I think, if anything, more money has been up for grabs across all the regions in total. It was an extra million in prize. And more players have had a chance to showcase themselves to the FIFA world. And the fact that we have now got that news and that news in paper when writing I should say is that there will be a FIFA e World Cup final it'll be a ridiculous end to this FIFA 21 Global Series as we know only one player though from Oceania can get themselves to those playoffs here's R9 here's Marcus Gomes twisting and turning in the box the Berber spin was out R9 was trying to find a way past that final defender unfortunately that wasn't to be the case what will be important now for Marcus Gomes is an early start in this game. He started the game after just four minutes in leg one where he scored with Mbappe. Hopefully, he'll be thinking that he can do the same again. However, this man was on the back foot in leg one. Bounced back late into the tie. He'll be looking to start this game just so well. What a defensive tackle that was from Rude Hullet. So to get all a little bit nervy right now between these two. Chance here. R9 looking to get in behind. Vieira with a huge interception. Send it all the way back to Nick Pope. You're absolutely right, and it should be getting exciting, Rich, because this is elimination FIFA. It will be the end of your season. Failing to win this game. Here's R9. Pressure. Piled on. Marcus, go! 
The perfect stop. CR7. Wheeling away in celebration. Really one of the top, top players. Through ball into CR7. No reason to take a touch. Just hitting it in your stride. And very similar to leg number one, Brandon. Marcus Gomes taking the lead again. It wouldn't be a FIFA tournament without Cristiano Ronaldo scoring a goal in all honesty. He's just been so good. Got to squeeze him into the team somewhere. Whether it's out wide or down the centre as a forward. I'll guarantee you goals. It'll always be deadly. Want to come in, watch out. Mbappe was there. Edwin van der Sar's had a great couple of games. And then for Marcus Gomes, you saw him when he was just chatting to himself after scoring that goal, sort of just saying, come on, Marcus, get yourself in the, the right frame of mind for this one. If you have been following this region this year, you would remember that he did go and win qualifier two. CR7, it's moments like this where you've got to be clinical. And he'll do exactly that with Arno. Very good work in the middle of the pitch there. Bruno Fernandes playing the through ball, perfectly weighted for CR7. Double tap pass into R9 Ronaldo, hit it on the first time, volley. The finish itself was rudimental, but it was all from the pass from Bruno Fernandes. For a split second, to be honest, I was a little bit worried about that. Sort of felt like he was caught in two minds there with Cristiano Ronaldo. He's like, was the ball on to R9? Was it not on? Lucky enough, that was to be the case. Chance into the box. Ooh. Let's just see that pause cued from one of these two players. I imagine it would be Ono a goal. Trailing three goals to one. Let's not forget as well that Ono Ago just came off the back of a 10 3 defeat against Naila. I didn't have long to sort of reset himself and to get himself back in the right, main, uh, the right frame of mind. Difficult first result to take, no doubt about it. See a change of play style for Marcus Gomes. I'm sure just wanting to get himself into half time. The score line like it is at the moment. Pele into the box, it will go. There's options there. Van der Sar flaps at it. Probably just making sure this pause doesn't come in from Ono ago for half time. She's only six minutes away from. Options in the box. CR7's there. He's got. Ooh. Loading up onto the edge if he wants to look for him. Very nearly, wasn't it? That pass. Quite a. Sort of a unique pass. Very rarely do you see that ball played on the diagonal into the box Marcus Gomes certainly knows that he wants to make that pause or no a go he just don't let the ball go out of play done a good job of it to be fair he's had the ball since like the early 30 minute Well, no one can tell you other than these two pros what a big match this is. The biggest game, no doubt, they would have had this year in the Global Series other than that grand final for Marcus Gomes back in qualifier number two. Half-time in this game, I mean, those stats have got to change for Ono Ago. No shots registered, 50... He did have, sorry, he did have about 59% possession at one point. Now he ends the half with 49% possession. 
And that's just come from Marcus just sort of controlling Keeping the game it. for the last yeah. five or ten minutes or so. Just having a, a little glance at his team here. 43 one not the most attacking of formations, in all honesty. It's, it's a formation that you, you tend to more play when you're sort of in, in, in tight games or in comfortable positions. You can keep hold of possession. You can keep hold of the ball. He has just changed to press after possession loss, however. So he is going to be throwing more bodies up the field, trying to squeeze Marcus Gomes into submission. 3-1 down. He trails Ono a go. But there's still plenty of FIFA left to play. So much FIFA left to be played. I think, as you said, if you were... So looking at the odds coming into this matchup, you'd look at the... The facts that they are of... We've seen more of Marcus Gomes across the last couple of years, more this year. He's won a qualifier. He's been involved in... Just so many more tournaments. I know a go. I said it in the predictions. He has been a bit of a late bloomer. He came in late. In the E-League, Australia. Virtual League. Xbox champion there. Did very well. To then get his spot through here. Could be a chance to conclude the tie. Ronaldo just offside if he was up. Inches, wasn't it? Inches offside there. I didn't know if Wamba Saka has actually played him on CR7. He's on that Very time, though. CR7 back post. Ooh. Davies. And the change of his counterpart in the midfield. Offside again. CR7 a little bit too keen off the mark. And into a pause menu will go again. We've got Ono oh Agoats POV here. 4 2 3 when he sits in the moment. But again, yet to register a shot, yet to really challenge Marcus Gomes. Is it time to throw everything forward? I think it is, Rich. Let's do or die FIFA right now as well. You don't have time to play a different sort of style. It's a loser's bracket game. This is an experimental phase. It has to be offensive FIFA, and it has to be right now. At least he can say, if he doesn't win the game, Rich, he can say, you know what, I went for it. I gave him my all. Final 30. It's a poor pass, isn't it? We'll get caught on that pass as well. Both players rushing a little bit. Final 30. Only two goals are needed. Lose this, you're out of the tournament. They'll be the first name to leave the Oceania playoffs for the FIFA 21 Global Series. Can Marcus go and sort of suck up all this pressure now? Then maybe pounce on the counter attack. He finds one more goal. It'll be all she wrote. The clock is his best friend right now, Marcus Gomes. Beautiful switcher play as well, bringing in Jacques Cancelo. Doesn't need to go into the box. We'll look to, though, Ronaldo. Up against Jacques Cancelo on the flip oh, side. What is that? Back to Bruno Fernandes. He's onside. What a chance again. Still is alive. Back to CR7. Elastico. Last these tackles from Ono Go have been very, very good. It was Vieira, it was Ono Agot who headed the ball back to Bruno Fernandes. He needs to land a chance, he needs a goal. The 
Paul's coming in from Ono ago, looking to make a final change. Marcus Gomes will recognise that, conclude the tie, send yourself into the next round. CR7, Nick Pope says no, not yet. Well, maybe now. Mbappe, offside. Fabulous save from Nick Pope. A lot of FIFA players, a lot of FIFA analysts, a lot of FIFA content creators will say Nick Pope in those one-on-one -on -one situations, in those one-on-one -on -one scenarios, is the best goalkeeper that you can have there. He just seems to save it all the time. And it's hard to say why. Great save from Nick Pope, keeping Ono a goat alive here in the Oceania playoffs. It goes into a 4-2-4 now, so it looks. Of course, with the same constant pressure installed, the same in-game custom tactics there. And two players brought in as well. Those include Messi and Mbappe late onto the game here. 17 minutes left. Marcus Gomes, this is what could be a massive win to send you into the next round and also a great opportunity to show how good you are with all the pressure and all this constant pressure that is going to be thrown at you for these next 60 minutes. You can suck up and go and get another goal. Yes, we'll know he's through. Alternatively, just defend, defend, defend. Go, Van der Sar has been there. Just looks very safe, doesn't he, Van der Sar? It looks like a safe pair of hands. In goal. Not being the most flamboyant goalkeeper, but it's been very good for Marcus Vieira bundling him over inside the box. Could have uh, maybe been a penalty, but nothing of it from the uh, from the referee. Big win from Ullet. Conclude the tie, this is the chance. Options in the box, well it's still on his own. Nick Pope, so tall. Such long arms, somehow got something on that one as well. Even when you're taking that shot though with Rude Hullet, you expect him to score. You expect him to go high above the goalkeeper into that top bracket of the net. Final seven. So our next game coming up will be our other loser bracket match. Marco against Ain is up. Pull it. Mbappe. Bruno Fernandez on side. Marcus Gomes keeps his tournament alive. And he's hopes for a third FIFA E World Cup final. Picking him off on the counter attack. Bruno Fernandez just on side as the ball came into him. And I would argue one of the nicest strikers of a football in FIFA, Bruno Fernandes. Very little backlift on the ball, very little error on his shots as well. That team of the air, Bruno, he hits it and it stays hit. It's a great strike. One more, put the not? icing on the cake. If he can, of course he can. Marcus Gomes will remain in. The Oceania playoffs in elimination FIFA. It's going to be a very long old road still for anyone that makes it in the loser bracket. However, he's done the job. When questions were asked, he answered them. And oh no, a go. Unfortunately, will fall out the tournament. He'll be the first man to fall out the playoffs. He was a, a late bloomer this year. He can't look away from the pride that. That result of an E-League Australia Championship will give him the Xbox champion there. He'll have to take that into next season. But unfortunately, that'll be the end of the road for the players for him. And the chance of the FIFA E-World Cup will have to wait until next year. Marcus Gomes motors on here in the Oceania playoffs. Keeps his season alive with a win. Needs to do more of that if he wants any hope of getting that FIFA E-World Cup spot. We'll have a look at the best moments from that game with uh, with Kyle and Mike but Marcus Holmes keeping his season alive Brandon
Yeah, keeping his season in, alive indeed. And I think that said a lot for Marcus as well, because that, that first game was very, very nip and tuck. It was a 1-1 scoreline. It was a difficult matchup. However, in the end, came out, provided so much, and sort of so much was what he was about. But Marcus Gomes does the job, keeps himself alive. And that other loser bracket game, Rich, A. Nazar against Marco, that one plans to be just as good, right? Yeah, it certainly does. I cannot wait to see that game unfold. But that is it for the first game in our losers bracket. We're going to send it back over to Mike and Kyle to break down all the action. Richard, Brandon, thank you so much for that one. Marcus Gomes keeps his dreams alive of getting to that FIFA E World Cup. Unfortunately, we do say goodbye to Oh No Ago. Mike LaBelle, let's break it down. Those two legs we saw definitely in the second one, Marcus Gomes' experience and the fact that he can see out games, we saw that come to fruition. Yeah, and if you're Marcus, you had to be feeling a little bit stressed out after that first leg. It was one all. He was all over Oh No Ago, but he wasn't really able to convert those chances, which was kind of my criticism from his first matchup today versus Greek Freak is that he had a bunch of opportunities and he didn't convert those opportunities and then allowed Greek Freak to, of course, be able to stay in the match, stay confident, and then he went on a scoring spree. A lot of credit to Greek Freak, but you see Marcus sets the tone, opens up with that goal. Uh, as I said, though, wasn't able to add to it. And then, oh, no, a goat is able to uh, nick a goal kind of late. And it really changes the dy dynamic going into leg number two. And Marcus really showed uh, what kind of player he is, the poise that he has, the composure that he has to battle back. Because when you start feeling as if things are going against you, it's really easy to get down on yourself uh, and to start second guessing or overthinking. And I always say this with Marcus in particular, but because he's so critical of self, even more so in those situations when, when the game maybe isn't rewarding you or you're missing easy opportunities or you're not able to break through a defense. But after the floodgates sort of opened, Marcus was able to add to that. You see him in the 1v1s, little double tap. You're not going to miss from there. Back-to-back -back goals. You did indeed. That second leg, we saw Marcus Gomes fight until the very end. Even though he'd sealed the victory, he wanted more and he got more right there. And you can see the smile on his face hidden behind the incredible moustache. We've, we've talked about it so much this season. But that final score right there, five goals for Marcus Gomes to oh no, a goat won. 14 shots, 12 of those on target, 55.5% possession, 90% pass accuracy, 12 tackles. But as I said, the most important stat of all was the fact that Marcus Gomes got the victory. He got the dub. Five goals to one, and he progresses through into that loser's bracket. Mike, for oh no, a goal, it was a, a short playoffs, but it's incredible that he did make it here. He should be very proud, and hopefully he can build on that next season. No doubt about it. I definitely think with the type of season that he had, to be able to get into the the final eight and to make the broadcast is still huge for for his own uh, personal legacy. Well done to him. Uh, we would definitely say that some of the other guys are more favored, favored to go further in the tournament, and that's shown up to this point, just in terms of some of those matchups. And Gomes keeps the, the dream alive. And I hate this, and I'm sure that Richard is going to remind us, but it is setting up very nicely with Richard's prediction. He said lower bracket, poised to make a run. He's got that legendary status. He's going to battle through the, the loser's bracket. All of these things are coming to fruition. They are. We are seeing them. And for Marcus, I guess we saw the frustration on his face and hopefully we'll get to chat to him so I can talk to him about this. But for him to be able to park that to one side, have that short-term memory, as you said, to bounce back as well, it shows his resilience. But it's the experience at the end of the day, Mike. How many times has Marcus been in that position and we've seen him fight back? Well, at the end of the day, even with that experience, you still got to make it happen. You still got to bring it together. And that still comes down to your ability and being able to handle the pressure. There's thousands of people watching. People want to see the results. And there's major expectation. Marcus deals with almost an unfair expectation sometimes because he carries uh, such a name, so well recognized internationally and domestically. You always expect him to make a final. And that's really difficult. That weighs on your shoulders a little bit heavier that you know that you kind of have to put on for the region. Right, let's talk to him then. I want to throw that question to our winner. Progresses through into that loser's bracket, round number two. Marcus Gomes, congratulations on the win right there. We're going to jump straight into the deep end, Marcus. 
Do you put that expectation on yourself to get to that FIFA E World Cup? Do you feel that pressure? Uh, I definitely do for myself, from you know people around me, the community. Like I, people don't try to try to put pressure on me, but it's definitely there. Like once you've been you know twice and you've had high rankings all throughout, like from 17 onwards to 21 now, you that pressure's there, but you just got to learn to deal with it. Um, of course, sometimes it gets you, but you just learn to just deal with it and play with the, the burden, really. And Marcus, what do you think your biggest adjustments are going to be going into this next round? Because we've seen some of the same, but we've seen other areas that need to be a little bit tighter. I think it's fair to say in the first game versus Greek Freak, if you finished better in that first leg, it would have changed the entire matchup. In this game, a bit of a slow start, but you're able to obviously turn it up into the second leg. What needs to happen differently where we're not sitting in this battle of two different legs? Uh, I think my decision making in the final third needs to improve. I'm going to watch back my all the chances I had tonight. And I think if I just take an extra touch or an extra ball or a little bit of hesitation here, I think we'll just got a lot more goals and made things easier on myself, especially in that second game. So that's the big thing. Defensively, I was I was okay. Uh, obviously, lapses here and there. But offensively, I definitely should have scored uh, more goals tonight. Now in the next matchup, we are seeing A Nazir taking on Marco. We watched your interview before. You said that your your biggest rival is Marco. We might possibly see that game right now. We might see the rivalry. Does, does that fill you with excitement? Does that are they the matches you want to play? You want to play against the rivals? Oh, you definitely want to play against Marco or whoever it is. There's so many good players uh, in this region now, and this top eight shows it. But um, I'm sure a lot of the like the fans or the AOC community would love to see a, a you know Mark and I dueling it out in the loser bracket, winner goes home kind of situation. So I mean, there's a high chance because Nagidi is a really really good player, but there's um, nothing stopping Marco from winning this game. I mean, he's also a legend of the scene, and he's going to use all that experience to try and get that win. Well, we will see who you face after our next matchup. Marcus, go and watch all of that gameplay. I'll leave you to it, all right? And we'll see you a little bit later on. Congratulations. See you later. See ya. Thanks, guys. That was Marcus Gomes right there after he got the win against Oh No A Go. He progresses through into that loser's bracket. And Mike, it's very interesting. You could see the, the wry smile on his face when we talked about a possible matchup against Marco. These two have gone head to head time and time again. And for Marcus, it, it looks like he's quite excited to see if he could possibly go up against uh, Marco in this next match. Uh, I mean, Marcus is a man of the people, uh, and, and he kind of said that as well with a Marco Marcus uh, rematch. If that were to happen, I, I know that we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves because A Nazir is definitely a threat without a doubt. And I would even say that he's a slight favorite over Marco in this matchup, but that is the FIFA enthusiast or the FIFA historian matchup. These are the two guys that have been leaders from this region. You always expect to see them battling it out against each other. Uh, making it to international events. Maybe you throw Jamie into the conversation who's had a bit of an off year for his own expectation. But there's a few guys that you always brought up. That was part of the narrative. And if you get a chance where it's a win or go home type of matchup and they decide everything, decides your fate, you, you want to see that. You're going <laughs> to upload it. You're gonna, I want to like that double tap and everywhere. Now, before we do get into that, we have got our losers bracket round number one, match number two. First, who comes out on top? Well, they will face Marcus Gomes. But for this one, it's A Nazir taking on Atlantide. Marco, make sure you stick around with us. You do not want to miss this one. We'll see you after this short break.
FIFA Global Series 21 Oceania Playoffs is presented by PlayStation 4. Hello and welcome back to the FIFA 21 Global Series Oceania Playoffs. My name is Kyle Walker and we are deep into our losers bracket side of the competition. This means that only one competitor in our matchups will progress and the other one, it is time to say goodbye to them. Breaking it down with myself, Mike LaBelle. Mike, we've seen some dramatic FIFA already. We've seen plenty of goals. No clean sheets as well. That's We don't want any of those clean sheets right there. Now, we are seeing uh, our competitors go through we spoke to marcus gomes just then and now our attention turns to another legend another goat another person that we've seen time and time again atlantide marco now let's explain this losers bracket a little bit because to some people at home, it might look like the winner of our next matchup will face Marcus Gomes, but that's not actually the case, okay? The winner of our next matchup will then join Marcus Gomes in round number two of the losers bracket, and they will face the losers from our next winners bracket side of the competition. However, after those matches, all right, that is when we can possibly see... What we said before, Marcus Gomes taking on Marco. But for that to happen, Marco would have to win this game against A Nazir and then win his next matchup. But this one, let's start with it, Mike LaBelle. It's not going to be easy. We've seen A Nazir. We've seen what he's capable of from the Summer Cup series last season all the way through to this season. He's shown us exactly what he's capable of and how he can progress through and how he can ultimately showcase his talents, but get the W's and win competitions. And at the end of the day, both of these competitors have that champion's pedigree. However, A Nazir has shown or showcased that champion's pedigree uh, more recently than, than Marco. Uh, we talk about how Marco is from this old guard and the same with Marcus. And it's so funny because we're basing that off of 2017. <laughs> it's kind of the beginning of the real true competitive ecosystem where we had a competitive calendar and we have a certain amount of events and a, a point system and so forth just the, the build out of competitive fifa but it's not that long ago is the point that i'm trying to make uh but they've been there since the beginning uh but i actually think that nazir comes in actually as more of a favorite in this matchup against marco even though i think for anybody that's been around for a long time you kind of want to upvote or be able to watch marco go for this late uh running through the losers bracket we might have jumped ahead or foreshadowed a little bit as well just talking about the potential of a gomes marco matchup where someone goes home someone stays in the tournament but can you blame us it's just the fandom that is very true we're getting very excited and we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves as well one man that will be hoping to crush mine and mike's party right there his name is a nazir and we caught up with him ahead of the playoffs So what's going on guys, it's here, Abinaza, um representing Ground Zero, and we're just going to be talking about the playoffs coming up. Uh, I mean, I haven't had the best season um, in terms of ranking-wise uh, to qualify for the playoffs in sort of a different uh, method, which was winning the ESL. But um, yeah, there's definitely a lot of things I need to work on um, before playoffs comes up um, to be the best. I don't think I'm the best player in the region at this moment. Um, the rankings on the FIFA Global Series don't lie. Uh, those are the true rankings, and um, Nailers deserve that. He's put in a lot of grind, a lot of effort um, this uh, this FIFA, and he's been like on the rise for many FIFAs. It was just about time until he got his um, turn to be first. So um, yeah, I don't think I'm the best, but I believe I can be the best. Favorite to win the playoffs, I think, in my eyes, it's either Naylor, who's sitting first, or DW Dylan. Uh, my toughest opponent, I would say, is Mark 11, because we go back and forth on a lot of friendlies. Um, this FIFA, I think we've played more than 100 friendlies alone, so uh, it's 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 always a tough game when you verse when you verse someone that pretty much knows your game inside out. I believe my chances are pretty high to win the club because um, when it comes to a tournament setting, I, I seem to do so much better 
um, than it than like I do in qualifiers where I always go through loser bracket. I mean, knowing that this playoffs is double elims to their loser bracket, but um, in terms of FIFA, I haven't really like set my eyes on like my um, biggest dream in that aspect, but I've always set out goals that I want to achieve at every FIFA, and um, this FIFA pretty much hit every goal, which is good. My season so far, yeah, I mean, it's just an up and downhill. I mean, now it's just focusing on uh, on the playoffs, sorry. Uh, not a specific strategy prepared. I'm um, just going to be playing my best game. I'm just going to try and limit out mistakes. I mean, it's, at this level, you cannot afford to make any mistakes. They can cost you very badly. And um, yeah, just limiting mistakes. You guys can watch the playoffs at ESports FIFA. Um, Twitch.tv.com, yeah. Ain is it right there telling us how he prepared for the playoffs, how he got to this place right now. Mike, one thing that slightly frustrates me, I'm not going to lie, when they asked the question, who who, who do you think is in the best position to win the playoffs? Why don't they say themselves? Why don't they back themselves, Mike? It could be some reverse psychology, right? Well, this guy should do really well. <laughs> he should really perform. Don't look at me, but then when results happen, please look at me. And in this case, maybe maybe A Nazir is just a marketing genius. And we've also seen him come up from that lower bracket. Maybe he wants max airtime. He just wants to battle through every single game. We can't stop watching him. Uh, but I, I think this is going to be a really, really good matchup. Uh, if you're here from a neutral perspective or you have a fan of one of these guys, expect it to be back and forth, uh, a lot of attacking action. And uh, I, I think that we're going to see a lot of goals when no clean sheets. I'll build off of that. Now, one man that always backs himself, Richard Buckley. He's joining us with Brandon Smith, who doesn't really back himself in weekend league because he can just about put five, six wins uh, together. Uh, uh, Brandon, uh, how is your weekend league going so far, mate? Uh, have you started? Yeah, it was started and lost the first three games. And <laughs> ended up for, you know what, let's just put it to the side and come commentate some FIFA instead. Uh, but no, speaking about this game, Carl, I think... It's going to be an exciting one. If anything, this is the game where I'm literally sitting on the fence because these two played back in qualifier number one, but they played in the Summer Cup series, as we know. They played in qualifier one this year. Marco won that game, sent A Nazar into a loser bracket. That man went on an absolute rampage in the loser bracket and then went, flipped the bracket, bracket reset, won the whole thing. So, oh, I'm just going to say A Nazar. All right, that's, that's me. You do it. You do that. Richard, who have you got? Well, firstly, Kyle, I'll tell you why they don't actually say that they're going to win. Because they're not liars, okay? <laughs> they tell the truth. That's why. Uh, and he's not favourite to win it. I don't... Is he favourite in this game? Potentially, but... I think Marco takes it. I think Marco... Right. Wow. You're, you're just coming out all, all shots fired right there, Richard Buckley. Mike LaBelle, who have you got? I don't think it's going to be the end of uh, A Nazir. I think that he's going to make one of those runs that, that I don't know if it's going to be triumph at the end of it, but I just don't see him going out this early. Well, let's see what happens. Let's get into it. Match number three on the stream. Let's throw it straight across to Brandon Smith and Richard Buckley. Thank you very much, Carwin. Yes, this is our second loser bracket game. If whoever wins this game, they will go into day two. Marcus Gomes has just done that right now, Richard. He, unfortunately, uh, for any Oh Noah Goat fans, knocked him out of the tournament, ensuring that Marcus Gomes booked a spot in day two. He says he's going to look back on his games. A great interview, as always. Always puts himself forward in the best way possible. Does Melbourne City's FIFA Pro. However... Same story applies to this one. Someone goes home. It's the end of their FIFA 21 competitive year and someone books a spot in day two. And I honestly think I'm so in between this game. Yes, I went for Ain on the prediction. You went for Marco. Marco's been to FIFA E-World Cups. Top nine he was in the last FIFA E-World Cup. You know, out of all the players from all across the world, he was so dominant back in that year, the last time we saw, obviously, our LAN, our proper last LAN year, uh, in all honesty. And he can't look past that experience. You know, he finished second in the E-Club World Cup this year, did Marco, for Atlantide Wave. You know, that would have hurt him. And he'll be thinking to himself, come on, Marco, come on. You know, this is a tournament where I need to pick it up. This is a tournament where I need to play. I want to be at the E-World Cup. It's so difficult to get there for anyone in Oceania because you only get one spot. That's why I think he comes into this maybe with that extra added oomph. But A Nazar, I mean, they've got history, these two. They've got a lot of history. A Nazar's been a winner 
this year, and that's something that Marco can't say he has been in competitive FIFA in FIFA 21. I think for Marco, he he knows that he has to perform. He knows that he has to do it now when, when he's looking long term, when he's looking into the future. He has to win these games. He has to win even this tournament, this playoff, Brandon, to get the spots and really give himself a lot of confidence, give himself room to grow as an individual but I know that he doesn't like playing Nazar he's a very possession based player he plays relatively slow it's not going to be a quick build up it's not going to be a, I don't think a goal fest maybe a 3-1 or a 4-2 something along those lines we'll have to wait and see two legs of FIFA in front of your very own eyes right now only one player can book a spot in day two the FIFA 21 Oceania playoffs remember there's a FIFA E World Cup spot on the line only one player can get there and also take the $20,000 that result I'm just thinking about to there Rich it happened all the way back in January where we saw the most ridiculous loser bracket run incredible incredible run from A. Nazar after losing to Marco. Marco and back by. Picks up the pieces. Found the loose ball. And speaking back to qualifying number one, this is the exact way the story went. Marco knocked A. Nazar down into the loser bracket, being in five goals to one. Yes, that was a very long time ago, but it is still history that must be looked upon. And well, A. Nazar, well, as also... we know, went and won that qualifier. Went an unbelievable rampage run. One qualifier, number one, and that gave him some huge confidence. But back to the point, Richard. Sorry to intervene. And bad boy, picking up the pieces and putting Marco one goal to the lead. Yeah, on the goal quickly. It was a great tackle from Mbappe. High up the pitch, winning the ball back, turning it over. And, and a good finish from Killian coming in from this left-hand side. When you're talking about these two in particular, there's also not a lot of data to go on. There's a couple of meetings. There's a couple of storylines there. But it's not like they've got a a 10-15 game competitive history sort of rivalry against each other. Yes, they've played before. Yes, they've played in tournaments. But it's not sort of Textasari-esque where they've played six, seven games and you can see a pattern. Oh, no. Hoping to restore some hope in any. And as are hearts are any ground zero. And Tart's an organisation that put pen to paper for him this year. I think when we saw him in the Summer Cup Series win that event against Marco in a grand final. Let's not forget that. We always knew that this was a player to watch, a player to keep an eye on. Look at the year that he's had other than this. In terms of the points he's accumulated, what he's been able to achieve. Close the year out in fifth place. He's heavily involved in qualifier number one. We didn't see him in qualifier number two. Was didn't make a top eight there in qualifier three. He did squeeze into a top six on the side of Marco. Marco was involved for qualifier number one and two. His two top six finishes for him there just sort of lack to get those extra couple of wins to really go for those deep runs in the tournament. Looking for a second now. Ronaldo into CR7. Because he got the composure. Of course he has. A massive goal for Marco. Composure. Calmness. Personified right there from Marco. Cristiano Ronaldo with a very simple 1-2 with R9. Ball roll around the goalkeeper. And a very, very strong finish and a strong start to this tie from Atlantides, Marco. Yeah, funny story about Atlantide Way. There's been fight. FC Schalke's very own Sane. The interesting part was as well, Naylor was actually part of this organisation back at the, the days of the E-Club World Cup. 
as we know, only just a couple of days ago, put pen to paper with Team Foot Wiz. If you missed the earlier game today, Greek Freak against Naylor. It's going to be an all Foot Wiz matchup coming up a little bit later on today. On the flip side of that, of course, we'll be seeing Mark in action against D.W. Dillon. Those are our winners' matches, the players that remain in the winners' side of the bracket. Two goals down. He said hey, Nazir was a possession player. He can't do that anymore, Rich. He's got to come out and play. Hasn't got a lead to defend. Hasn't got much of a say in the tie at the moment. Marco's defended well. He's played superbly. Look how he's controlling those two midfielders. Superbly done. And also, Frankie de Jong making the team. Some pros will look to back the Dutch midfielder in there. Some maybe not. However, both of these two. The Dutch Barcelona midfielder makes the starting 11. Ronaldo into R9, into a CR7. The two interchange well. CR7 nearly got that perfect shot away. I'm not surprised by Frankie de Jong's admission into these squads. He, he's just so, so well-rounded. Maybe even Leon Goretzka could be another player who we see more and more of as well, Brandon. Um, in future playoffs when the accounts are further updated. R9, sticking in the block there, but Goretzka, De Jong, there's a, an abundance of very, very sort of well-rounded attacking and defensive statted centre mid CDMs. Foot birthday, Renato Sanchez is... is has gone past now. He's to the wayside, unfortunately, in these unlocked accounts. Half time in this game. I mean, he's got the possession, but unfortunately, he's got nothing else to show for at this moment in time. Very interesting as well. Zambrotta plays as a centre back for Ainazar. And she said these guys are on a special edition of the game where they can use any player up to a certain date. I mean, that surprises me. I mean, he's, he's got a lot of faith in. And Brotter, whether that's an idea to then let, change later into a, a fight at the back of some sort, but then you wouldn't go for Jao Cantelo as well, in, in my opinion, on that one. Oh, I mean, Zambrotta is an interesting selection because he's, he's pacey, he's strong defensively, he is decent physicals, but on unlocked accounts, is he the, the out and out centre back that you want? Probably not. So it. it the only issue why Zambrotta is very good in that position, Brandon, is you mentioned it there with the five-back. He's versatile. He can play a numerous different positions. He can play wing-back. He can play, play CDM if you want him to. The versatility is certainly there. Mbappe. To make it three for Mark. I went for the ball roll. It was all perfect. If it wasn't for Vieira there. Mark would have been up by three to nil. Ross comes in, punched away, headed back into the danger zone again. And Sybil claimed that one. Mark had everything right there. Everything right. The ball roll was, was very good. Vieira just getting back, saving Nazia really. Defensively, right there, De Jong has been outstanding at the in the defensive areas as well for Marco. Certainly one that I think a lot of people's ears will have pricked up when he was released and available in these squads. If you can get him in there with chemistry, the strong links of Rude Hullet, a couple of other icon links, he's so so usable. Pele, still oh, massive goal for up no reaction, no celebration. Just get the game back underway. Pele, directional nutmeg, pass Vieira. Too slow on his heels, the French icon right there. You're not going to stop a 90 plus pace Pele inside the box. Pele. Usually, Pele is one of those icons. Yes, he features, but he's not the star man. I would argue he's been more instrumental in these games today, Brandon, than, than R9. Yes. 
And sometimes an icon that maybe doesn't always get the, the limelight that he deserves. However, today, he's been heavily involved. Solo efforts, brilliant goals. And a massive goal for Nazar. I mean, that's how the cookie can crumble, though, in FIFA Esports, in terms of Mark, but that brilliant chance with Cristiano Ronaldo, where the ball roll was there, and you're thinking that's three goals to nil. That doesn't go in via a block from Vieira, and then down the other end, Pelé restores the hope now. For an unbelievable chance. And that goal was how, certainly lifted as I can see how he's attacking. I was just about to say, how quickly can a game change? He had the ball roll at one end to make it 3 0, did Marco. Vieira gets the block on it, and within 15 minutes later, I was just about to say, Nazir looks like he could be equalising, but Marco, Pele, inside right channel, cuts it across, another class block. I mean, who is it by that time? Zambrotta. The makeshift centre-back. Ronaldo, still on nine, dancing around the box, back to Pelé, a Sam Brotter again! Maybe we were wrong then about Sam Brotter, because he's been outrageously good at the back. Oh, no. To restore the hype, I mean, fair play. I'll, I'll be quiet about that for a second or two because Sam Brotter has been here, there, and everywhere at the back. Block after block, interception after interception, he's been class. Building to the perfect chance is Marco. Back to R9. Referee, where's the advantage at least? There it is. 21 yards out. Let me find Direct another shot. goal for Marco. Go on, Marco. Something from the training ground. R9 plays short into Mbappe. Seems the body of a player at the back there. Final five minutes of leg number one. I think forward wins the ball back, kind of sleep. Chance on nine. Back to Pele. Still Pele. Pele on his own. Wasting time. Oh. That is an awful finish. <laughs> Pele. We were just picking him up. Absolute shank city right there from Pele. That is such a bad strike. 99 rated Pele. May I add? did everything right fortunately that finish was not on target a minute of added time one more chance maybe for Ainers up and Bappo where's that killer pass it was there tomorrow night and that will do us for leg one Marco will probably feel like he could have had three or four in that game however he will leave with something to talk about Richard that being a goal two goals to one that came had everything an end-to-end -end game of FIFA to be honest with you I mean still so much to be played and still a second leg to come up I was just watching back then as the as it's come back to us that that chance from Pele it's it's genuinely awful like the ball roll you expect him just to just to hit it just to score but a, a shocking strike into the back of the net and really Ain as I was was coming into that game, he was getting better and better. But the counter attack prospect was always on the cards for Marco. And another day, Marco wins that game, four five one. Let's have a look at the highlights then from the game, Rich. I mean, it was Marco that took the lead, and it was via this goal here, Mbappe picking up the pieces to make him go one goal to the good, and then he extended his lead 
to two goals to nil. And to be honest, it could have been three or four. No, it certainly could have been. We'll see some of the best chances here from the match. A very simple little one-two between R9 and CR7. Goalkeeper comes out nowhere near it as Ronaldo passes it into an empty net. This was a, a big moment here in this tie. Frankie de Jong high up the pitch for Ainazar. R9 picks it up. Pele, directional nutmeg out of his feet and then smashed past the goalkeeper into that bottom left corner. Game well and truly on coming into leg number two. But I think Marco will feel... I mean, both players will feel hard done by because Ainazar had chances to win that game. Well, not win, but equalise, I should say. Pele being the main one. But Marco had chances to, to see this tie off. Four or five goals. Uh, and one man that deserves a mention is Sam Brotta. Yes, we know fullbacks have been the centre-backs this year, whether that's been in the different squad restrictions with Rhys James, for example. We've seen him Kyle obviously Walker. make a, a great impact there, Carl Walker. But in terms of when we've got, you know, no squad restrictions, you can use any player in the game. I wouldn't have thought that Sam Brotta would have been sort of that, that top player in the squad of a fullback to then move over to centre-back. But as we saw in that game, and I think the chat was saying it as well. He's a fighter and he's uh, he's been here, there and everywhere at the bat, making superb blocks. And clearly that's a, a player that Ainazar has been a big fan of this year. Yeah, I mean, look, the, the fullbacks at centre-back is rife at the moment, especially with how many good fullbacks there are in FIFA. I think there's been a, a systematic approach to bring more high-paced centre-backs in Team of the Season out to potentially try and get people using centre-backs again. Varane... Yeah. The, the new Bundesliga player as well, Lacroix, I think, something like that. He's got an X on the name. I don't know if it's silent or not. Um, you, you look, there's, there's a lot of defenders that are, are very high-rated, very high-paced, statted. But those icons still... Uh, icons and also fullbacks still so, so good in, in the area at central defence, just stopping the through balls in behind, stopping the, the sort of directional nutmegs in their tracks and... The goal that Marco conceders, he's playing Vieira at centre-back. Does wan react better to that chance? Does Zambrotta react better to the directional nutmeg past him? Vieira maybe a little bit slow on his heels to try and spin in behind. Potentially uh, uh, something to ponder, I should say, yeah. for Marco if he was to get past this very tough task in a Nazar. Yeah, I mean, no doubt about it. I mean, there's just so many options now. And I think as we go forward into... These other playoffs as well. I think Asia's next on the list. Then it's South America, then North America, and then we conclude it in Europe. I mean, back then, you're going to have everyone in terms of all the team and seasons that will be released. Any extra promos that, that maybe come on their way uh, as well. The teams are going to be ridiculously stacked. And as there is no squad restrictions, it just throws up such more of a conversation and debate of who could be the team, who should be the team that is in use. But we're back on the way for our second leg in this one. Marco is in front by two goals to one. Against Ayin Azar, dominant first leg. However, couldn't find a way past that Zambrotta. At the back for Ayin Azar. Marco from left to right in the red. And Ayin Azar from right to left. Hoping the Heat can pull this game back. We have to recall it, Rich. If you don't win, you're out of the tournament. That is the end of your FIFA 21 season. Loser's bracket action, it really is. Knife edge stuff right here. The first loser's bracket tie. Well, that was a 5-1 win for Marcus Gomes, but he won it late against Ono oh Goal. Are we going to see a late surge from one of these two? Or oh, extra time, penalties even potentially needed to separate these two warriors. Two players that have got such a resume in this scene, let alone in this region. Summer Cup Series champion, FIFA E World Cup Grand Finalist, E League champion, qualifier number one champion this year. I mean, that's between both of these two. You can understand and guess which way each achievement can be placed. And is up, starting on the stronger foot, wants to get himself back in the tie. Pele around the corner, directional nutmeg was nearly. Able to just about come off. Pull it into our nine. Everyone throwing themselves in front of the ball at the back. 
Doing his best to find the gaps in between. Opelo. Back to R9. Directional nutmeg around the corner. He just can't find the extra touch. I mean, it's the, the original directional nutmeg, which is great. It's just that little extra touch between where the defender normally just nicks it off the player's foot. Yeah, the directional nutmeg, it's, it's a skill move that is just so, so strong in the final third. You want to do it on that angle, that sort of 45 degree angle where you can hit it into the space past the defender, but be able to shoot first time out of the skill move as well. They're the, the dribbling techniques, they're the skill moves that are so good this year. The ones that you don't have to take another touch. You can pop it off and then shoot first time. Elastico, reverse elastico, ball roll, heel to heel, and also the directional nutmeg all possess that quality. The, the least amount of touches inside the box before getting a shooting opportunity, the better. Less time for blocks to come in, less time for defenders to get back and clog up your area. Pele, back to R9, and Nazar, he's done so well, but on the flip side, Marco, just taking these hits at the moment. Players standing strong, players standing in the way. Ronaldo from distance! Oh! of dreams Brandon, give me the wine that one? give me the wine please <laughs> oh my gosh have I just stepped into a time warp have I just gone back 24 months to 2019 what on earth have I just seen I feel like I'm back in Bucharest it's like the on the finesse needs to come back out of the archives from <laughs> the days of FIFA 19. I mean, the only thing that I can put that down to is the goalkeeper has moved slightly off his line from a corner and then somehow R9 has just gone. You know what? Why not? Well, well, well. Ain is up. It was 2 0 down. And on this game, he started on the stronger foot. Look at Pele now, back to R9. Wins a free kick. Referee says no. The, the thing is, that's completely changed this game now. Not only has he leveled it up and scored, but every time he gets the ball in that sort of area, in and around the box, on the angle, Marco also has to think. He could just finesse this. He could just shoot this. And it's just another strength and another sort of arrow to his quiver that he possesses. Ground zeroes, Aynazar. And so far in this half, it has been all Aynazar. Marco's had his work cut out and he's defended very well in terms of all these directional nutmegs and skill moves that have been thrown upon him. He now needs to go forward and really put himself back into the driving seat. De Jong back to Hullet. Last chance of the half. Marco, can he restore that lead? Just offside. What a game this is. Elimination FIFA. You win to remain in the tournament. You win to remain with a chance of getting to the FIFA e World Cup. Whoever loses, back to the drawing board for FIFA 22. As harsh as it may sound, that is... The lay of the land, the rules that are in place. You've got two chances. Chance, Marco! Ooh, tried it. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that long shot has spiced this game up drastically because Marco just doesn't even try that shot if if if, if Enazar doesn't score this, his finesse shot. It's, it's almost added a different dimension to the game. Because let's be honest, the the attacking players, prime icon moments R9, prime icon moments Pele, team of the year CR7, team of the year Mbappe, they're good enough to hit those finesse shots. They're good enough to score those goals.
it's just a percentage chance of him going in, maybe 50-50, maybe 60-40, without goalkeeper movement. But no one's taking a 60-40. You want a 90-10, you want a 95-5% chance of scoring. But when the going gets tough, as my favourite Ronan Keating says, the tough get going. I mean, you raise the point that no doubt all these players can score goals and can be so deadly. In matches like this, elimination games of FIFA, you don't want to be taking 60, 70% chance of scoring a goal. You want the 90s, the 95 pluses. Hence why you get in these areas. You look for a directional nutmeg. You look for the perfect finish. Pele. Making things so difficult. Now it's a Ronaldo. Marco. Ah, he sort of just scooped into the player. It's hoping that the ball would have went through the defender's legs. Unfortunately, that wasn't to be the case on that occasion because guess who was there? Zambrotta. And is up to complete the perfect turnaround it. Pele. Shifts it out to CR7. Will that cross eventually come into the box? He'll do his best just to split apart this bat line. Oh, no, no, fakes to go one way, goes the other. Cuts inside, still in possession. His is up. Where will that final chance land? Where will that final? Ball end up bouncing. It's been so good in moments like this. And it's so difficult for Marco to guess and defend and to, to switch his players into the right directions. Who knows where he's going to end up? Oh, no. Running around in circles right now, Pele. Hill to hill. Where's the perfect chance? Pele still with it. Into corner. I tell you what, unbelievable, both attacking and defending. Patience personified right there. Header off the line. It's got bounce back up. Ronaldo across. Oh wait, chance. Still alive. Oh. It must be so difficult, Marco. He's having to just defend and concentrate at such a level. Where is he going? Where's the final ball landed? Mbappe this time. A chance to drive four for Marco now. This is where he's got to be better. Because in all honesty, Enazar has made this so difficult of a game. He's played so well in this second leg. Oh, he's for sure been the better player. Marco looks... He's just not been the same in this second leg. He looks a little bit shaky, if anything. Final 20 minutes. We're yet to see extra time here. You know, Shiana in these playoffs. Who knows? I'm sure we'll see it at some point. Ronaldo, there's the play a lot. First time we've seen that try to be implemented into Marco's game so far. Sometimes not even to use it, but just to show your opponent that you're thinking about doing that. Might be enough to just throw them off there, Mark. De Jong. Back to Mbappe, just getting back on the ball. Give Marco that added, ent added ounce of confidence. Sorry, 18 minutes left of this one. And you win, you go today too. Mbappe can't scoop, turn his way past. Another chance to get the forward now for Reynas up. Cannot forget, he won qualifier number one after the most ridiculous loser bracket run after Marco beat him all that time ago. Had to win like four or five rounds, then make a bracket reset happen in that grand final. Oh, he's just ran away of it in the end. De Jong. To the De Jong on the opposite side of Ainers up. Not the best of passes either. It wasn't really a pass that was was on as he played that double tap. Ainers up. Into R9. 
Still one iron, where's he going to go? Pele, half a drag back, tried to disclose and to hide that pass, he did very well. One moment is all it's going to take, one second to separate win and loss. Season continuing and season ending for one of these two. That will be a corner. As we watch Einazar's POV here, Pele going to be brought off for Ronaldinho. Is it going to be De Jong making way as well? Remember, these are changes that will be used in extra time. We're very close to that being a potential predicament. Just the one change. It's going to be, as we said, Primacon moments, Ronaldinho making way for Pele. Just having a look, Rashford, Cruyff, Bruno, Messi, all potentially game winners there on the bench, but he's elected for Ronaldinho to do the job for him. Marco also making changes. Bruno Fernandes coming on. And Ronaldinho for himself. Final six minutes. Who has got that nerve? The extra 10% to book a place into tomorrow. Ball into the box, headed back into the danger zone where R9 will be. R9's also there on the defensive side. Ronaldo. Into his fellow striker counterpart in R9. Can those fresh legs inject just that bit more pace into the final third? Final chance of the game. Extra time looming. Extra time on the cards, maybe. Unless Hey Nazar's got other ideas. Wins the ball back, does Marco? Has he got a chance to get forward? It's just a minute. I wouldn't surprise me if you are into extra time. Ronaldo. And that'll do us. For two legs of FIFA, Richard Buckley. Nothing to separate the two. 30 more minutes needed here. All ground zero, Einazar, in this second match between these two. It's, it's so one-sided. You just had a quick flash of the stats there. It's going to be Johan Cruyff up top. R9 still on. CR7 also still on the pitch, but Cruyff coming on as that central striker. Marco, I think, has had one shot, one on target in this second game. He's just not been at the races offensively. Defensively, yes, he's been very good to uh, to keep it to one goal. Here we go. The biggest 30 minutes of FIFA which means so much to either of these two seasons right now. You win, you stay in the playoffs. There's a chance of a fee free World Cup still looming. You lose. And unfortunately, that is the end of your FIFA 21 competitive year. The chance of the playoffs providing you with the e World Cup will be no longer a possibility. Ronaldo into R9. Here's A Nazar now. Ronaldinho's got space. Can he look to drive into it? Ball rolls into the defender of Vieira. Wins it back again. It's been a battle in the midfield for so long and so many moments in this time. I don't know if I see a winning goal in this game. I'll be honest with you. I really don't. Well, into Ronaldinho, Cruyff, the danger man off the bench, got a five-star weak foot in his arsenal. 
Young still, Ronaldo, will he be just on side? Yes, he will. CR7 can't get the clean directional nutmeg and he can't get the clean finish. In a goal he was looking for, just swipe the ball and kick the air in the end. Just getting enough on it. Alfonso Davis there, went for the directional nutmeg, just getting a toe on the ball, literally a toe, to not make it clean. And to be honest, Richard, I think that's something that Marco's done very well, if that even is to be a, a skill. To stop a directional nutmeg, which has been become and, and has been such a, a deadly way of getting past your opponents. You know, I've suffered too many goals to count on weekending from, from a directional nutmeg. But to match up and to get a touch on the ball, to make it difficult, and we're talking about these are players like Ronaldo's, uh, R9's, you know, Pele's. And Marco's done it so well across the two legs, and it's something that I'm no doubt going to applaud him for. No, he really has. I mean, I don't think there's a a setting stone way of defending directional nutmegs. I think if there was, there'd have been a tutorial on YouTube already telling us how to do it. I just don't think there's a, I don't think there's a way to do it. Um, however, he's certainly defended very well in around the box. He's made sure he's got strengthening numbers as well. He's not really been isolated in the one-on-one -on -one scenarios where the directional nutmeg is so, so strong. You just see Bruno Fernandes coming on here for a Nazar. Final roll of the dice for both of these two to try and save themselves the misery of a penalty shootout. I mean, penalty shootout to decide whether it's the end of your FIFA 21 season or whether you have still got a chance to make it today. So there's the player lock. Ronaldinho, can he make an impact? He was just brought off the bench for... Marker, but we yet to see him do anything as of yet. On the flip side, he might. One of the changes that Aynazar brought on late to the game. We knew that these two had a great final last year in the Summer Cup series where Aynazar really announced himself to the FIFA competitive world. And also has another name in Oceania. We played Marco in a enthralling grand final. That was chance. Maybe months on, looking for that revenge in the sweetest way possible to end his season. Final five. Penalties in the distance, looming in the distance. I should say, and Mbappe. Marco went for that finesse or at least the skill move. Still can't get over that R9 goal. You forget it went in in this game, don't you? Yeah, I mean, just think if he didn't hit that with R9 right there, we're probably right now hearing the thoughts of Marco speaking to Kyle and Mike because it was the only chance in the game. I think we're going there. I think we're honestly going there, Rich. A minute of added time. You win, you stay in the tournament day two. Of the Oceania playoffs. Lose. That's the end of the road. Last chance saloon here. If it's going to be played, wins it back to Tullet. Penalty shootout. Here we go. Strap yourselves in. Up steps Marco first. With Bruno Fernandes off the bench. Which way is he going to go? Down the centre and will score. Hain is up. His time to reply. Bruno Fernandes him as well. Saw oh, the post. Timed it green as well, Ronaldinho to put Marco in a very, very good position. Straight down the middle again. Big two penalties coming up here. Ronaldinho for Enazar down the middle, 2-1. Well, can it be three out of three, Richard? That's the question. R9 to step up now. For Atlanta waves Marco. Can he make it three out of three? Of course he does. Must score this to stay really in the tie. Cruyff steps up for Enazar. Does score. Marco to go four out of four from the spot. Killing Mbappe from 12 yards. Down the middle again. Huge penalty for Marco. A Nazar must score. Rude Hullet steps up to the spot, does score. Well, this is it. Score, you win. You're in today too, Marco. Hullet, the man that everyone relies on in the Global Series over the last few years, steps up and scores. Marco! Books a spot in day two, and you can see the outpour of emotion from him.
He knows what a game he was in. He knew what a player he was up against. But when it came down to the nitty gritty, when things got tough, he stepped up and held his nerve from the spot in a dramatic penalty shootout. A Nazar, that is the end of his season, unfortunately, for any ground zero and A Nazar fan out there. Marco hanging in there with that experience of a player that's been to E World Cups before and been in this scene for a very long time. He's in day two, and it's funny that him and Marcus Gomes also still just clutch up, Richard, in the loser bracket. Offensively, very poor, Marco, in that second leg. Defensively, one of the best performances I've seen him put up. A very, very good defensive performance. Forced Ainazad to take long shots in order to get back into the game. Marco goes through, but eliminates a big name from the tournament. This loser's bracket blown wide open with the sort of defeat of yeah. one of our previous champions, A Nazar. Yeah, what a game. What a game it was. I mean, that's only our third game of the day. We've still got two more of those to come up. But all you need to know is that Marco does remain in the tournament. Marcus Gomes also does remain. Of course, them two in the loser bracket. Commiserations, A Nazar, the end of his season. Oh, no, a goat with the first two players to leave in the Oceania playoffs here in the FIFA 21 Global Series. That's a wrap from me and Richard. I'm going to throw it back over to Kyle and Mike. Gents, what a game. What a game indeed. Thank you so much, Richard and Brandon. Mike LaBelle, do you agree with what Richard said there? Offensively was not the best of performances, but defensively for Marco, what an incredible display. Well, it's another one of those classic uh, tail between two halves or two legs, uh, in this case in particular, where we saw players adjusting to each other. And when both players want this, you see uh, Aiden Azira kind of battle back and was able to get himself back into this matchup. And you started to say, oh, maybe he's got all the momentum here because once you're ahead, like, like Marco was in this case, as you see him start off everything, he's got the opener, he's setting the tone, he's setting the tempo, you see some of that experience. And then as a Nazir starts to battle back, you say, okay, well, maybe this is gonna be his game because once you've scored one, you've scored a second, you've started your comeback, or you've gotten to a point where you've equalized, uh, you can carry that. And that confidence goes a long way, whether it's to extra time, even to penalty kicks. But in this case, you got to give a lot of credit to, to Marco, who was able to, to not only sit pretty deep and defend really well against uh, A Nazir, just to avoid um, going down or, or potentially losing this game into that in that second leg. And then he kept the same focus. What a goal. How do you defend against that? What are you supposed <laughs> to do? I don't even know to shoot from there. It might be the goal of the day. See, fair play. The reaction. Uh, you've got to have something in your system even to take that and then five for five from the spot and we have seen some dodgy some suspect penalty kicks you and i have been present for those this was not the case both competitors looking very comfortable we did see both go down the middle plenty but we're not talking about a bunch of saves and it was a really really close uh, matchup it comes down to those fine margins and congratulations to marco congratulations indeed very tight affair between A Nazir and Atlantide Marco, but that final score, it was two goals each and it took penalties and it was Marco who came out on top, five penalties to three right there. He managed to hold his nerve, let's say, uh, Mike, right there because it, it must be so difficult being in this position right now. You're in playoffs, you're in the loser's bracket, it's gone down to penalties. It's literally fight or flight in that situation. And for us, we build up those moments. But if you're a competitor, if anything, you want to slow play it. You want to downplay uh, how uh, how massive this actual moment is in terms of all the eyes on you, your competitive year, the financials behind it, your reputation, the recognition, the bragging rights, just all inclusive. They are indeed. Right, let's bring Atlantide Marco into the conversation right here. Marco, congratulations. What a game that was right there. Ended in penalties as well. Very close between the two of you throughout those two legs. Explain yeah. that to us. Was it about adapting to your opponent throughout those two legs? Um, it was more so I knew I needed to try and get the first goal to give myself a chance. Um, Nagidi's an incredible player and... Uh, He's shown his quality this season as well. Um, I'm just glad I was able to get that first win on the board and hopefully try and push on from here. And um, yeah, I was, I mean, it wasn't really adapting to the way he played. I just knew I needed to play my game if I had a chance, yeah. Well, first off, congratulations. Always a pleasure to be able to speak with you after Thanks, a win. Man. And we've been, uh, we've been kind of building this narrative, maybe manifesting. I know there's still games that have to happen, 
But if we could get a Marco matchup against the Marcus Gomes, I think the people would want that, both locally, internationally, you name it. How does that feel that that could be the potential decider here in the loser's bracket? I mean, me and Marcus have played for the last four years, I'd, I'd say, the last four or five years. And um, he's obviously incredible at the game. And I don't know, to play him again, it's probably, I don't know, we'll see what happens. But... We'll worry about it when we get down to it and he's, uh, <laughs> we'll deal with his five at the back of the end, a little, a little rat. <laughs> <laughs> you do make it into day number two, Marco. Uh, and for you uh, this season, how do you look back on it? Obviously, you are in the loser bracket right now, but for you going into playoffs, uh, is that a success? How far can you actually push it? No, you know, honestly, um, I didn't have the best season and you could probably tell that by just my ranking and my results. Um, I just wanted to come in and, you know, show that I can still perform at the highest level, no matter the circumstances of the world. And um, I think I've shown that, but uh, hopefully try and go that one step further, but uh, we'll see how we go. Yeah, let's see how we go indeed. Atlantide Marco, congratulations. You get the win right there, making your way through today. Number two of the Oceania playoffs. Thanks, Good please. luck for Thanks tomorrow. For we'll speak to you tomorrow, yeah? Yeah, speak to you then. There we have it. Marco makes his way through. We're getting closer and closer to that big matchup. Both of them will have to beat the next round of the losers that comes through into that losers bracket. But Mike LaBelle, you said it, locally, internationally, all over the world, people want to see Marcus Gomes against Marco, two heavyweights of the FIFA scene coming together, hopefully. But... Before we get into that, I mean, they've got another round to go. They're on the ropes right now, but they seem to be surviving. We're just building the narrative, and I'm sure that they're both happy to be still in the competition. Once you get to playoffs, it doesn't matter the region. Every matchup is so competitive because it's the best of the best. All of these guys have proven at the broadcast level. They've had the consistency throughout the year. Uh, and it's just a matter of kind of bringing together that best package or the best way that you can express your FIFA gameplay in the biggest moments, which is much easier said than done. It is much easier said than done indeed. And Mike, for all of our competitors that have made their way through, I mean, eight out of this region, we know how good this region is, but this eight that have made it through right now, they should be definitely proud of themselves because it's a tough region and we've seen it. We've been on all the events this year. So many people have shown up and, and showed out and, and shown the world what they're capable of and their skills. And it's just getting tougher and tougher this region right now it's difficult to actually call who's going to win certain events and the reality is there's only one spot for the fpe world cup which is everyone's end game goal uh, it's not just about of course the opportunity to put put some money in the pockets but also of course to get the fpe world cup spot and to have that claim for the year and it's what you've been building on so you maybe can give yourself a light pat on the back but the job's <laughs> not done that's why we're here this weekend that is very true, right? Let's have a look back at some of the action from today already. It's time for our game highlight presented by PlayStation. Thank you so much, Kyle. And I want to take a, a look at an earlier goal today. We had Greek Freak up against Marcus Gomes. Of course, Greek Freak still undefeated. And why you should attack the space. When you should definitely use this bridge. So as you can see in this uh, breakdown of this freeze frame, the back line's been pulled up. You're not going to have an easy pass and move. That, that's not there. The back line is flat, so you resurface, and this signals you to attack that space. That's exactly what happens. And we always talk about professional players and going for a chance that's a 100% conversion rate. My mother, my sister, my brother, my uncle, my aunt, everybody can finish that 1v1, even if they don't play FIFA. And that's credit to making a chance is unmissable so to speak you're never going to hit the post there's no crossbar that's going to happen we're not having that challenge and pros do such a good job of being able to recognize what's happening and then reacting to that recognition so we got to give a lot of credit to greek freak and of course the pass across is as easy as they come it is indeed right let's climb up let's have a look at our winners bracket right now we're jumping back into the winner's side of things here in the oceania playoffs this is how all the action has unfolded as well all eight competitors started in the quarterfinals of the winner's bracket and only four went through footwiz nailer greek freak mark 11 and DW Dillon right there into our winner's bracket semi-finals. And that are the matches that we turn our attention to 
And this one right here, Footwiz Nailer taking on Footwiz Greek Freak right here. The Footwiz Derby, Mike LaBelle. I mean, this is what we want. We want narratives like this. We want stories like this. We want teammates going head to head. This is what makes it so exciting. And two different storylines this year where Greek Freak started out amazing. And then we haven't heard from him the same way. Uh, still undefeated, of course, eliminating Marcus Gomes earlier. And then Naylor, who has been the most consistent player, comes in with the top ranking. Very dominant in his opening matchup against Oh Noah Goat. But with all that being said, I don't know about you, Kyle, and I don't want to put words in anyone's mouth. But I also, also don't feel that he gets the respect or the recognition that's probably deserved. Maybe because he hasn't won an event yet. So this is huge for him. If there's ever a time not only to, to make a slight run in playoffs, but go ahead and win this thing. Then everybody has to say, this is the guy. Nailer should have been the man that we're talking about that we put more of an emphasis on from an analyst perspective. And he's not just consistent, but he does have that champion's pedigree. Well, let's see if he can do it. Make sure you stay exactly where you are. The Footwiz Derby is coming up very, very shortly. Footwiz Nailer taking on Footwiz Greek Freak. You don't want to miss it. It is our winner's bracket semi-finals. We'll see you after this short break. FIFA Global Series 21 Oceania Playoffs is presented by PlayStation 4. 
Hello and welcome back to the FIFA Global Series 21. We are in Oceania and it is time for the playoffs. Yes, we've made our way through all of our qualifiers in each of the regions and now it's down to the nitty gritty. It's the business end of the season and we're halfway through day number one here in Oceania and joining me to break it all down, Mike LaBelle. Mike, what a day it's been so far. We're jumping back up into our winner's bracket. We've lost some competitors competitors as well the pressure's turned up the excitement's turned up and most important thing of all the energy's turned up as well no doubt about it uh now we're looking at the guys that have really been flourishing to start off today on the broadcast end and you, you're putting yourself in a better position if you're able to get these victories uh and it's also a great send-off kind of for the day that you're able to build on that momentum you're one step closer and we're dealing with a lot of the young faces. This is the future for many of this region in particular. Right, if you're at home and you're thinking, I want to get involved in some of the competitive action. I want this energy, this excitement. You can do with the PS4 tournaments, open series. These are weekly competitions for all skill levels competing against your friends and rivals for unique rewards you compete online for prizes ranging from unique game specific dynamic themes and avatars to in-game currency and cash prizes as well now those who play in ea sports fifa 21 will have a chance to show off their skills to friends and rivals in weekly broadcasts hosted by playstation and all you have to do is go to the competition center at compete.playstation com and sign in with your PSN ID. It's as easy as this right here, Mike. Yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. Everything integrated into the console and it's kind of your one-stop shop for everything and anything involving FIFA, whether you're looking for tips, you want tricks, you want the intricacies, the ins, the outs, you need some practice, that repetition. And it's a great way to not only get involved, but kind of see where you're at. Are you still in the beginner region or the intermediate, advanced? At least if we're looking at your introduction into competitive FIFA and you can get free stuff uh, while you're competing. It doesn't get much better. I, we talked about it maybe a month ago, but I played in a, a couple of these where it was top 64 that got payouts. Top 64, Ooh. the majority of us might be able to make a result there or get ourselves into that conversation. The majority of you, but the minority, including myself, probably probably won't get anything right there. We're beating but... Kyle along our way to top 64. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Right, we, we have got our winner's bracket side of things right now. And you talked about this puts them in a great position to make their way through. Staying in the winner's bracket is so important, isn't it, Mike? Because not just are you coasting through the tournament, going through that winner's bracket side of things, but if you make it to that grand final, well, it means that you're already one game up in a best of three. Well, because the stakes are also elevated, I think it's more important to go through on the winner's bracket than it has been in some of the previous regionals. Because beforehand, you didn't have that pressure. The stakes were as high. You still need the points. You want the, you want the financials. You want to make a run. But everything is so much larger for playoffs. And there's such less that you can achieve. If you get second or third or fourth, yes, you're able to have something there. But you were one step closer to FIFA World Cup stardom. And that's what the goal is. I, you talk to any of these competitors, they're not even going to tell you that the money's helpful or anything along those lines. They're going to say, I want FIFA World Cup. I want an opportunity to represent my region. This is what I've been grinding for all year long. I'm here, right here, right now. Eyes, spot, a light. Give me everything. Bright lights, Times Square. We might do New York City references. I'm sorry. But uh, you, you want it all. You want it all. You're here for it. This is what you train for. Each of our competitors are dreaming of making their way through to that FIFA E World Cup. Richard and Brandon, let's bring them in right here to the stream. Guys, we're all dreaming of the FIFA E World Cup and we're nearly there. Richard, these playoffs, it's one step closer. We've had all the qualifiers. We've had all of the, uh, well, we're starting all of the playoffs. You're putting up the three. What does that represent? What does that uh represent? Just, just to let you know that Richard Book is three for three on predictions for oh, today, yeah. and, and nobody's, nobody else is close. So, uh, I'm just gonna let you know who, who the king is, king of New York. Why not make it here, <laughs> Richard Buckley? <laughs> I'm here to stay. Okay, okay, all right then. So I'm gonna come to you first, then, Richard. You're the prediction king. Obviously, you, you've not got a rival because I, I'm not actually doing any of the predictions right now. I'm staying impartial today. So if if I was going to make a prediction, 
I would have gone with all of the ones that you've gone with as well. Yep. So we'd be three for three each. But who yep. are you going for in the fourth matchup? Uh, it's a tough game. Whenever teammates match against each other, it, it's always a 50-50 in my opinion. However, I'm looking back to the previous round. I think when you win 10-3, it, it just goes to show confidence is sky high. And I think a lot has been made made of Naylor. A lot's been made of his performances. Everyone's been saying in these interviews, yeah, Naylor's the one to watch. Naylor's definitely the favourite. Let's see it. Let's see Naylor in action. I'm going for Naylor in this semi-final tie. We're just on the same wavelength, aren't we? I mean, if I was making predictions, I, I think that that's, that's the one I'd go for as well. Brandon, who have you got? I hate to be boring, but I think I'm on the Naylor train as well. This man, ranked number one, qualified for every single qualifier. One thing he's missing, though, Carl, is a win in a tournament. You know, runner-up E-Club World Cup. He has been everywhere this year. In terms of a dominant year, look no further. I mean, I just feel sorry for, for Dan and, and the guys at Team Footwoods. They're like, this wasn't going to happen. We weren't, gonna, <laughs> we weren't meant to play against each other. We were meant to sort of avoid each other in the bracket. I think Dan and the rest of the team just says, you know what, I'm just going to sit back grab a brew and let's just have some good FIFA played in front of us because whoever loses, remember, they are still in the tournament. But I just think like Naylor's had a dominant year. I think he's going to win this one. Mike, there's one spot reserved on the Naylor train. Are you, are you taking it or not? Choo, choo! We're getting on. <laughs> Where's the conductor Brandon at? Give me some B-Smith eSports. I'm joining him. I know that might have been a little bit cringe. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, I'm going to... I think this is the time for Naylor. Uh, this year, he's been kind of the, the the guy that's always been there, but hasn't really been able to get that big result in a final. I think he's going to build off that. Everybody's talking about him, saying this is kind of his time, his year. I think he believes it. Ten goals on a broadcast. That's not accidental. I agree with everything that's been said. And also with Richard, he also has terrible predictions often, and we don't talk about those. I just want, I just want to put that out there. There's, also, uh, there's been plenty of days where Richard hasn't got anything right. All right? Just, we just we only remember the good. We only remember the good. I also just want to say, I think Mike LaBelle's on an alt account in the Twitch chat because someone just said, LaBelle is the OG, Bloke is the epitome of Dapper. Oh. Not too sure about that one. Mike yeah. LaBelle pay, paying people $10 a compliment, apparently. That, that's, that's you don't have I a second or third, that. a few burner accounts? Come on. <laughs> right, let's get into it then. The Naylor train seems to be taking off. Let's see what happens. Richard and Brandon, take it away. Thanks, Carl. Yeah, this is the big game, this one, because it's a back to our winner's bracket now. So we've got two games left in today's broadcast. This is our first game, the all Foot Wiz matchup. The man that recently just put pen to paper the team Foot Wiz, and what an, a sort of accusation that is to the team. Top in the rankings here in Oceania. He's been involved in one, two, and three qualifiers this year. He was a runner-up in the E-Club World Cup, and he was playing for Atlantide Wave with Marco, the man we just saw win a penalty shootout there. However, Greek freak, I mean... He's had an up and down season in his own words. It's been a bit of a topsy-turvy year. He was second in a qualifier before. These two played on a broadcast and it was actually Greek Freak that did beat Naylor. That was quite a few months ago though. And I think one thing that I'll take from Greek Freak's performance is that when he's had this Unlocks account, this, this, this team where he can use all these icons and Pele's and R9's, he has been so good in front of goal and he didn't need all the chances in the world. One or two chances, he was that clinical and that good, Richard, that... Again, this is going to be a tough game, but I'm back Naylor, and so have you. So we've got to see what happens. Yeah, I cannot wait to see this game unfold. Footway's got to be happy, both of their two players in the semi-final stages. One of these two guaranteed a winner's bracket final spot. Guaranteed a top three finish as well for Team Footways. However, all that matters is that number one, $20,000 for first prize and more importantly than that, an opportunity to be the representative seed for the Oceania region for the FIFA E World Cup 2021. Let's get it. That's what we're playing for. One of 32 spots up for grabs in the FIFA E World Cup Grand Finals. Early start, maybe for Nail here. Twisting turn of R9. Can't find a way around the corner. If you have just tuned in, this is... The FIFA 21 Global Series Oceania Playoffs. Two days of action in front of your very own eyes. A $50,000 prize pot. Of course, it is Greek Freak in the white from right to left in this second. Oh, oh wow. Oh, wow. He's been taking notes in that last game. Oh, no, not the finesse. And it's been the finesse of dreams. Nine minutes on the clock. It's number nine on the pitch that scores for Greek Freak. And the game is underway. 
The game is afoot. What a finish from Arnaud Ronaldo. 20 yards out. Finesse shot rattling in off the post. Just what this game needed. Just what the doctor ordered. An R9 finesse shot. Greek freak. The dream start in this one. However, one thing we need to know about Naylor, he has been relentless going forward. He netted 10 in his opening game of the day. Greek Freak will have his work cut out, I can assure you on that, across these two legs. I think the storyline has been for everyone in this region, they can only echo it. How good Naylor has been this year. He's been so consistent at getting to broadcast, to getting to finals, into the final day. It's just been getting over the line. Is that one area where he's lacked? If he can win today, he's in again. He'll drop down. In today, too. He's our nine. Oh, oh R9. Oh, oh Pele. Chance back inside. That little composure touch from R9 was nearly perfect. Yeah, he, he put it through his legs. It was again Naylor trying to pass out from the back a little bit poorly. Can't see if I nail up the NCR7 shot blocked. That little touch through the legs was beautiful as well. Honestly, it feels like every single time each player goes forward, they look like they're going to score. De Jong, surely for Naylor. Back to R9 again, another last-ditch tackle. So much space. This game being played at 150 miles an hour right now. Pelé, still. Want to play quickly. CR7 does well. Some of the ball just sticks to his feet. I'll tell you what, Greek Freak has been relentless up in 26 minutes, Brandon. So quick and so relentless in the way he's played. Coming forward is our night. Chance for Greek Freak to make it two! Oh, no. Oh, no. grabs a brace. He has been the danger man. Again, leaving the goalkeeper rooted to the spot. Nothing he can do about it. Oh, no. Long through ball. Emphatic finish past the goalkeeper. And Greek Freak. In dream one right now. Statement he's sending out as well. As I said, these two matched in qualifier number one. It was a long, long, long time ago. Well, they did play in that game. Honestly, the goals were flying in, in it. Matched up in a semi final. I'm oh, sorry, a winner's final they played. 7 5 it was. Greek Freak won that. Before she went on to go and lose against Ayn Azar, the man that just got knocked out of the tournament. There's just been so many nip and tuck games between all of these players. Where this region and where the sort of that top bracket of players, Rich, is, is so, so good and so above the rest. Throughout the qualifiers, you just see so many repeated matchups, whether that be Club Bowl Cup in Zone 1, whether that be in the, in the Australian E League, or whether that be in Qualifier 1, 2, or 3, or in these playoffs. It must be so difficult to try and separate yourself from opponents because, you know, Naylor's top of the pile, but he hasn't won a single qualifier. He's been that consistent at making finals. Then you've got players like Ayan Azari won a qualifier. He's just been knocked out. And uh, I think it's important, Brandon, yes. Naylor super consistent throughout this season. There's been a, a number of players who have made repeat qualifiers. Chance here for Naylor, R9, a clutch of flick inside the box. Don't think that was intended, probably a lack of However, there's not been a player that has just run away with the region. It was similar to sort of where in Europe, you've had hashtag Tom, you, in South America, Matthias Bernano, North America, Jotsam, who have just won and won and won and made top threes back to back to back. In Oceania, there's not been a player like that. We've had three different winners. We've had 
a different winner in the Club World Cup, it's been different on every single occasion. Dylan's been the most consistently winning his player. Last chance of the Fineda into R9. Something's got to stick, something's got to give, and I'll tell you one thing that has been superb. That first 45 from Greek free, defensively sound, going forward he's been clinical, and that is what you need to see. For a man that's had 39% possession, he soaked up, he's counter-attacked well, and he leads by two goals to nil in the first 45 here. I can't believe it. I genuinely, I cannot believe this first 45 minutes. Did not expect this at all. He's had 39% of the ball. Every time he's had a chance to go forward, he's gone direct. He's gone with a real impetus in the final third. An attacking intelligence. And he's he sort of put Naylor not only on the back foot but he's put him under a lot of pressure in this game look at the space for R9 to go on his own a solo effort nearly one thing you've got to remember this is a long 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 game of FIFA two legs of it We've seen the most ridiculous comebacks happen in past times. It's only two goals. Right now, that wall of white shirts is so difficult to break down. Pele. Back to R9, interchange superbly well, back to R9 again, it's nearly perfect around the corner. Still wide open though, this game, even though it might be 2-0, even though Greek Freak might be in control right now, this game is still all up for grabs. Young Lacroqueta from side to side. R9 back to CR7. R9 again will look to make something happen. Does well, and that finesse. If that goes for a goal kick, is a pretty woeful finesse from Ronaldo and Zaria. I'm not too sure Naylor can believe what this forward just produced there. Finesse off the mark, off target. Back to the drawing board. He was just trying to get some space, wasn't he? In around the box. The Lacroqueta cancels were frequent in that attack. Greek freak just not diving into anything. Chance a nine, three 0 and it's the perfect hat trick from the perfect striker. Three of the best for Arnaud. And I just see a big puff of the cheeks there from Greek freak. He has been a freak on the sticks, part of the pun, but he has been so so good. This isn't just the result, this is a statement. The stakes have been risen. There's a fee free World Cup on the spot. I should say on the line for this. Oh, she's looking for that long through ball again. Greek freak. Find a goal, just something to take into the second leg. It oh, no. again, twist, turning, restoring a bit of hope into the hearts of any Naylor fan out there. Very well worked goal from Naylor. Borrow scoop turn back onto his preferred right foot, and then just finesse shot instantly into that far corner. Very nice goal from Naylor. Game well and truly back on. Oh. 
It's been the R9 show. Four goals and they've all been scored by R9. Maybe one more. Pele. R9. Number five? Maybe? Can he find the space? Pele might instead. Goes on his own. R9 might get lucky on the bounce. There's been a few very sort of shaky shots, I think, the best way to say it, where not fully connections, sort of half half chances, half shots. You get the angle that both players just want to get themselves into that winner's bracket final. With the ability to still fall back on the feet if you have to. And how this double elimination bracket works. Pull it. Back to Mbappe. Let's do well to move the ball and shift it from left to right, but being well read at the moment. Here's CR7, making life difficult for Greek Freak. Elastico, reverse Elastico, he's pretty much here, there and everywhere, it's just so fast. It's been, it's been one of those games where Naylor's had a lot of the, the opportunities in like the, the final third, just on the edge of the box. Nothing really past the halfway line. I should say past the, the penalty box in the 18-yard, 12-yard area. But it's been those those chances on the edge of the box, 20 yards out, where it's a pass away, a shot away, a skill move away from creating something golden. And sometimes you just got to go along just like that. Last chance of the game. Fenella to take a second goal into the second tie. Oh, nine. Oh, what a block again. Now the bag. Get the ball clear. Referee. That will do us for leg one in our first win in semi-final. Greek Freak leads by three goals to one against his fellow teammate in Naylor. I think we came into this expecting a bit more to see from Naylor. Maybe Greek Freak said, you know what, I've got a point to prove. No one backed him from, from our talent selection in terms of this game. He has looked good. He's looked very good in front of goal. And to be honest, he deserves to be in front of this moment in time. He's defended superbly well. Let's have a look at, back at some of those highlights from the game. I think this was his second goal that he scored. A really long searching through ball. They found the path of R9. That made it two after 30 minutes. I mean, it's just a through, belt, through ball meta right there. That's what's effective in FIFA right now. It's what is strong. Little ball out wide here to Mbappe. He plays back inside to Bruno Fernandes. First time strike from R9 Ronaldo. Naylor did get a goal back with 20 minutes remaining in this tie. R9 was the player. Couple of step overs. Ball roll scoop turn back onto the right foot. And a finesse shot into the far corner. I think the the reason that Naylor might be overplaying just a little bit in the final third. You, you, you heard it earlier in an interview where uh, Nagiri was talking, in, in particular, A. Nazar, was talking about Mark, uh, Mark 11, in the, in the tournament saying they've played over 100 games and the, he almost knows what he's going to do before he's even done it. Maybe these two, they are teammates. Obviously, recently picked up teammates, but still, they are teammates. They've probably played a lot against each other, whether it be friendlies, whether it be warm-ups, I would imagine. Even not, they've watched each other's games. They know how each other play. Naylor just looks to be sort of mixing it up a little bit too much in some cases in the final third, over-dribbling, over-playing in and around the box and potentially could be falling to his, his detriment right now. No, I mean, I can only echo what you said. I think at times he's been moving the ball a lot. The combinations have been there, but what's he been gaining from those chances? Not much, to be honest, because Greek Freaks defended well. And also, I said it in commentary, I think last game, where this region has got such a, just a, like a sort of a circle or a group of players that are always qualifying, always repeated qualifiers, always involved in, you know, the E-League uh, Oz. They've always got a team in there. They're playing against each other. They're playing so many reps against each other. You know, that's why we've got a player like Naylor, for example, that hasn't won. 
anything this year. I mean, yes, he topped uh, topped the E League alongside his teammate uh, in Mark, and they, and they took uh, the E League Australia Championship with Newcastle Jets. But he's been so consistent. But he just needs that win. And I think it's crazy to think where the quality is just so so high. Anyone could be anyone on anyone's day, and we've seen that today with the players that have been knocked out of the tournament, the players that are still in the tournament, and some of the results we've seen as well. You know, we saw Naylor win 10-3 in his last game, now in a predicament where, you know, he is trailing against Greek Freak, but there is still a second leg in the tie left. If you win this game though, Rich, you're into day two in a winner's bracket final, and you'll just be sitting there waiting for either Dylan or Mark to join you uh, in that match that will be taking place tomorrow. Yeah, it's going to be a, an enthralling winner's bracket final. That's to come up tomorrow alongside the, the loser's bracket semifinals and all of those loser's bracket matches that will follow. Grand final will be happening tomorrow as well, where we'll be finding out our first of 32 competitors for the FIFA E World Cup. I can't wait for the E World Cup coming up in uh, first week of August, I believe, 6th through the 8th. And... Look, it's going to be in London. It's going to be a, an amazing spectacle, Brandon. Um, as of right now, with all the COVID situation that is currently transpiring, it is set to go ahead as a LAN event. And yeah, and seriously, cannot wait. Fifty thousand dollars, Rich, for a winner. Again, that question is, who will be Oceana's hope? of that player to go and lift that trophy. That will be confirmed tomorrow. What will be confirmed today is who will be the final six players who will make it there. We're back on the way for the second leg here. Naylor again in that foot with strip from right to left in this game. Trailing by three goals to one. Looking for an early start. Looking for an early goal. Referee and waves away that one. It's Pele. For that, a culture flick around the corner, whether he meant it or not, it's a different question. He nearly got away with it. Freak Freak from left to right, looking to start the game early with that man on your screen. Ooh. R9, the width of the post away from firing Greek Freak into a 4 1 lead. An opportunity. Chance just goes missing though, goes begging. A lifeline for Naylor. That would have been the worst possible start to this game. De Jong, Hullet, R9, interchange well back to R9 again. R9 steal, scoop turn. Ooh, very close. Nearly squeezed that one past Jan Oblak. Big win. Oh, nine. Patience is everything. Pele might get the Watching the bounce in his side, won't work there. You have just tuned in. This is day one of the FIFA 21 Global Series. Oceania playoffs. Of course, there is so ball. much up for grabs. Pele. There's the player lock. There's R9 for Naylor. R9 still does well. Scoop turn, dancing, fake shot. Diera does even better. Still on iron with it. Another fake shot. Varane is there on the second time of asking. And again, play a lot into the box. R9 twisting, turning. Looking to just get some sort of space. Greek Freak is a lot more direct when he gets the ball. He's in these areas and then he's just looking to create a little bit of space and get that shot away. Those cancels of the skill move as well are so deadly in these sort of moments. Mbappe can't find R9, can't twist and turn past his defender. I think where the players have got so much better defensively too. You've got the likes of Varane now, team of the season out. This is one of those examples. Players that will give you 90 plus pace at the back that with a chemistry style, no doubt. 
helped boost that, that just line. fill it with pace. We just saw that through ball there from Naylor. He tried playing a long through ball down the line, hitting Pele. Just a little bit forced, a little bit direct. I think frustration is building. That's a huge goal to fire himself back into the tie. Killing Mbappe with it. 3 2 the score line. Two thirds of this game still remaining. And a player that's been very quiet is Killing Mbappe today. When I say quiet, I mean he's been pushed out wide or not even involved in a lot of these teams. Just because of how dominant the icon selection has been. That is a big goal, though. The last time we saw a Greek freak in action, it was against Marcus Gomes. There was a couple of times where we questioned that mentality of Greek freak being in a winning position, you know, keeping in that winning position. He did, he did such a good job against Marcus Gomes because he went and scored again. He restored his lead. And the problem is that goal that just went in for Naylor is only going to fire him up. Player that has dominated this region in terms of consistency of qualifying. Greek free. Oh, no. Referee, no. You thought maybe. Yeah, it looked like potentially a little, little shove inside the box there. Referee says it's fair game. Wambasaka just outstrengthing R9. That's a great interception high up the pitch. Another big win. And have a chance to come forward again. R9 back to Mbappe. Mbappe still. Last chance. R9 left right back of the net. Good night. Left, right, good night from Footwiz Naylor right there. Beautiful play in around the box. Kylian Mbappe turned away from his man, R9, just with that little bit of space. And then rattled it into the near post. And I mean, uh, it's this scenario now, isn't it? You worked so hard, so hard to get into a winning position where you got two goals, but... Two goals are not safe. We've watched a lot of FIFA, Rich. Even a three-goal cushion across two legs of FIFA is still not a safe scoreline. And it's how you pick yourself up now in this position. This is where the real winners are made. Those real sort of figures in the competitive FIFA scene across all of the world. South America, Europe, Oceania, the list goes on. This is why people were back in nail or why pros said he was their most fierce competition. Even when it might not look like he's playing that well, even when it might not look like he's creating a lot of chances, he's still deadly in the final third and potentially going to take the lead here just before half-time. Perlite, back to our nine! Unbelievable from Naylor! There's a reason why so many people have feared this map. In any competition, whether it be the Australian E-League qualifier one to three or these playoffs, no one wants to face this man. You can fully understand why. The switch has been flicked. Greek freak. Looking defeated at the moment. 3-1 opening the... Blink of an eye. Naylor turning this tie around. What? The first 45. How a game of fever can change. We saw the best first 45 minutes in leg one from Greek Freak. Leg number two, it's been a different story. It's been one-way traffic. Much as they're both footwiz players, the traffic has been from the man that's wearing the footwiz jersey in the game of FIFA 21. That's been footwiz nail up. Four goals to three leads. Greek freak, we need a reply. And we need it now. That would have been a very ambitious finesse from 30 yards plus from R9. Don't get me wrong, we have seen them go in. So 
such an emphatic second leg performance from Naylor here, real top stuff. He looked down and out, I'll be honest, Brandon, coming into leg two. He was not attacking that well. So just ran out of options, didn't he? Chance, scoop turn inside, back to one nine again. Moments like that, he just so, so relentless in the way he plays in these sort of areas. I think the word for it is just smooth. With all the transitions, with the skill moves, it's just looks very slick in the final third. Everything's thought out, everything's planned. And just to add on to that, we always see this around this time of the year. Playoffs and grand finals come around. You see players that are at the top of their game that have worked out mechanically everything they can do, how they can play in game. Oh, no. Oh, dearie, dear. Referee, come on. That one will be a bit of pill to swallow if it goes into the back of the net. It will. Feel a little bit hard done by that. Greek freak, it looked like he got a toe on the ball. The follow through of the tackle is the thing that's brought him down. Pele slotting in from the spot. I mean, it really is a tough one to take for Greek freak. A penalty where, in all honesty, that was not a penalty. The referee said, yes, it was. The animation worked in his favour. Four goals to nil, five goals to three on an aggregate scoreline. But that's the point I was sort of originally looking to make there, Rich, in terms of we get to a stage of the year now, a play like Naley, you've got so many reps in. E-Club World Cup qualifiers. Australian E League with different players, different formations, different stages of the year after the game, of course, was patched in many ways early on to the season. You start to just see these really complete FIFA players. I mean, this goes to anyone that's in the playoffs, I should say. No, I certainly agree. And those sort of mechanical improvements that Naylor's been making throughout the year, you'd have to say he's peaking at the right time. If he can get his first sort of title of the season at the playoffs, He's going into the FIFA World Cup with all the confidence in the world. Um, I think if this tie does finish as it is, yes, Greek Freak will be disappointed to have lost this match. But there's been no reply from him. He has been outplayed, outclassed in this second leg. Yes, the penalty is unfortunate. It probably shouldn't have been a penalty. But Naylor has been on top for 76 minutes and 30 seconds in this second leg. And Greek Freak has to do something right now if he wants to change his fortune. Final 10 minutes. As he said, it won't be the end of the road for Greek Freak. He'll go down to the loser bracket. That will be happening tomorrow. Of course, you can understand the frustration, though, from him. Penalty that was harsh to gear. Back to our nine. Oh, once and twice. The touches aren't good enough. This is in Naylor's hands now. Seven minutes away from a spot in a winner's final. He's done it many times already this year. And when it counts and when it matters in the playoffs, even in a losing predicament where we thought maybe, just maybe we're going to see a huge result from Greek Freak. It wasn't to be. Late chance for Ronaldo. Down the byline. Can he get the ball into the box? CR7 wins Pen a penalty. There's the ref saying, all right, I'll leave it out. Vieira to step up. No. Bruno Fernandes. Scores this, sets us up for a very exciting last five minutes. Bruno steps up, scores. Well, 
There is time. There certainly is time for Greek Freak to get back into this tie. 5-4 with what? Four minutes remaining? About that. Plus additional time. If you're lucky to get two minutes, I doubt that'll be the case, but... You can always hope that depth goes down from Naylor. As I said, these are the moments where champions are made. The best players are separated. When you've got all the pressure on you, so many white shirts driving forward. Oh, no. Oh, no. Chance. Oh, great challenge at the back. Give it away again. Wins it back, though, doesn't he? And it should be in his hands now. Additional time of just a minute. Naylor. Seconds away, final chance away. And you can see the disappointment from Greek Freak. He knows he came close. He knows he came so, so close. Maybe a late chance on oh, no, the red. That could have been. The enthralling end to the last couple of seconds in that game there. However, that won't be the case. Greek Freak drops down to the loser bracket where tomorrow, that will, of course, take place tomorrow, he'll play against a landside waves. Marco in a massive game there. To Naylor, though, what a second leg, Richard. That's why FIFA is played over two legs with an aggregate score. And for those moments there, you might have had the best first game, but you've got a second leg to put it all right. And that's exactly what he did. Massive, massive result. Yeah, incredible second leg performance from Naylor, showing us why he's one of the best, if not the best player in this region. Uh, attacking, he, he ironed out the kinks in the second leg, in the offensive third. And, and really, he'll be thinking... Who else? Who's next? Who next for me to beat in this tournament? Very good performance, and I'm looking forward to seeing him tomorrow in action. Yeah, well, as I said, well, that's one player in the winner's final. Of course, that one happening tomorrow. The question is, who will be joining him in there? Uh, of course, will it be Dylan or will it be Mark? Only time will tell. We'll be back for that game in a little while indeed. But before we do that, we're going to pass it back to Carl and Mike to get their thoughts on that one. Guys, what a game it was. What a game indeed. Brandon, Richard, thank you so much for that one. Mike LaBelle, I mean... Something Richard said, that is why FIFA has played over two legs because we've seen time and time again, so many players, it doesn't go right for them in that first leg, but in the second one, they tweak something, they adapt something, they change something, and it's a completely different game. Were you not entertained? I think that's the question <laughs> you got to take from that. And uh, the shift wasn't even necessarily about tactics, but what Naylor was able to accomplish kind of right around the edge work or inside the box was just pure brilliance, pure class, so much creativity, extremely dynamic. It, it, I know we've used this cliche or I've said it now a couple times on the, on the broadcast, but it was really the tale of two legs. It was such different performances because Greek Freak played amazing in the, in the opener. Look at that first time shot. Is that FIFA 21? We don't see that goal too often. And that's just a sign that everything is clicking. You have that confidence, but look at some of these cancellations, the step overs, the scoop turns. That was a huge goal for Naylor to get himself a lifeline, and he was able to carry that momentum into the second leg. And it comes down to a lot of just the sneaky footwork, the, the clever one-twos, the touch to the left, the touch to the right, open up your body, finesse shot. And you can see the variety in terms of how prolific he is offensively. He might be... Uh, the best uh, player that we've seen in the attack, especially with some of the small details. You see a couple little turns inside the box. You get a smile. He equalizes everything that's been happening. Just continually carries that. And look at this more of this meta maneuverability. When you're talking about the player lock, you see the ball roll into the scoop turn. Another overpowered tactic. I love that goal. I think we might have to review that later on. I'm just going to throw it out there early. Gorgeous, beautiful. A couple penalty kicks late. Naylor deserved it. Say what you want, but he deserved that win. And he gets the win indeed. 5-4 it was after two legs of very entertaining FIFA 21. Mike, for Greek Freak, what has he got to learn from that second leg? He does drop down into the loser's bracket. He's still got another life in this competition. What does he learn moving into day two? Well, in that in particular matchup, the big key is going to be able to see out a game. I'll say this as well, just as uh, maybe some constructive criticism even for Naylor. As great as he was offensively, the last five, six minutes when he conceded that penalty kick and all he had to do was see out the game looked shaky. It was not crisp. It was nerve-wracking. 
I, I couldn't see Brandon or Richard, but I'm sure that they had some reactions while they're commentating <laughs> that. Because watching him, I think I heard a couple oh no's. You see the switch of the pitch, and it's just not open. And it's like, if you're going to do that, go ahead and send it deep. Clear it deep. Uh, and then for Greek Freak, maybe he was counting his blessings a little too early because he had a perfect first leg. Great opener. Could have even been up 3-0. He defended well. He attacked well. He finished well. And then in the second leg, he just wasn't able to really have the tempo set. He didn't control the game the same way, which gave Naylor so many opportunities offensively and allowed him to really showcase where he is able to differentiate himself from other competitors with some of that creativity and just how... Uh, technical he can be right inside the box. He knows how to beat those defenders, and he does it in such a clever manner. It's hard to predict what's coming next. Well, the Naylor train keeps on moving in the winner's bracket side of the competition. Let's have a look at that bracket right now. Here you can see all the action from today. We started in those quarterfinals. Naylor beating Oh No A Goat 10-3. And then in his semi-final beating Footwiz, Greek Freak, his teammate, 5-4. And he makes his way through to that winner's bracket final, which we will see tomorrow. And who will join him? Well, we'll find out in our next matchup. SF9, Mark 11, taking on DW Dylan in that one. And the loser from there will drop down into the loser's bracket to face Marcus Gomes. And as you can see, Marcus Gomes, 5-1 against oh no a goat he'll come up against the loser of this one and it is greek freak who we've just watched will take on atlantide marco tomorrow in that loser's bracket round number two a matchup there's plenty of action for us tomorrow but before we get into all of that mike we've got one more game to look at to end the day right here sf9 mark 11 taking on dw dylan both of these completely part of the new guard both of them so young mike i mean it, it feels like both of us we're the oldies now that they're coming through all the youngsters mark 11 dw dylan we're, we're the old fogies mate i don't like this i don't like the direction that you that, that you're swinging I, I don't like the slander that you're sending our ways look <clears throat> we're not old men these guys are just very very young <laughs> young gentlemen and uh I know that Treaders is probably working on the back door this time around in terms of like maybe some coaching and being in the microphone with Dylan, uh, obviously from Dire Wolves. And uh, both these guys have been in form. We've kind of had Mark, uh, this being his breakout season. And Dylan, you could make the same argument, but we at least got to see him the previous year. So we knew a little more about him. And uh, I, I'd say that Dylan comes into this as the favorite just slightly been a little more consistent in comparison uh, to Mark. And that's what we talking about when we saw these interviews. It was all about Dylan and Naylor being the two guys to watch. And I think this could be one of those days where we actually see the two favorites or the two guys that have shown the most best consistency be able to take that and really progress at the big moments. We still have one more matchup left on day one of the Oceania playoffs, and it's going to be a huge one. SF9 Mark 11 taking on DW Dylan, and it's coming up after this short break.
FIFA Global Series 21 Oceania Playoffs is brought to you in part by Turtle Beach. Hello and welcome back to the FIFA 21 Global Series Oceania Playoffs. My name is Kyle Walker and we've got one more matchup for you on day number one. And it sees two of the young players from this region going head to head in our winner's bracket semi-final match number two. Let's bring Mike LaBelle into the conversation right now. Mike I want to talk about age when it comes to the FIFA scene because there is this story, this narrative that younger FIFA players, they do seem to be better. We've seen it across all the different regions, but surely having the experience, being at the events, being there, being on the big stage, that counts for something as well. It definitely counts for something, but... And we used to always make this argument saying that you needed a certain level of experience to have success. Young, old, in between. I don't even know what old or in between is at this point. <laughs> because we're, we're, sometimes we're calling people old at 22. And I, that just doesn't seem right. Uh, but, but we used to say that it accounts for so much. But then we started seeing so many of these 16 and 17 and 18 year olds winning events without necessarily having these prereqs. So I think that the tide has completely shifted. I, I like that you brought up age. Mark's a great example. If you recall, and I don't know for this event if things were uh, maybe adjusted or adapted, but he's not able to play during the week. <laughs> during the week, he has to do his schoolwork. His parents got him locked out of the system, the console. It is shut down. And then he comes <laughs> to life every weekend and does his prep work. If we get a chance to interview him or speak with him maybe today or tomorrow or whatnot, I'd love to know if he got any uh, shifts from his parents, maybe some different approvals. Yeah, maybe he asked, could, could I have a few extra days? Am I allowed to play on it? Please, I've got a massive tournament coming up. And he does take on Dire Wolves Dylan in this winner's bracket semi-final. It is the second one, and it's the final matchup here on day number one. For Dylan, you said that he might be coming into this maybe as the favourite to some people because of the season he's had. He, he kind of burst on the scene, it feels, throughout the end of last season. We saw what he managed to do in one of the Summer Cup series events but here he is right now here he is at playoffs he could go so far mike then no doubt about it and i think that he's also mentally ready that he that he has a certain level of maturity to to make these deep runs or to challenge to be a champion in the biggest moments i'm just so interested to see how this plays out because we already kind of have an idea what's happening in the upper bracket we don't have this result yet but but we know that nailer is sitting and waiting and then you can see that development in the losers bracket Oh, we have some spicy matchups. I'm talking jalapeno and habanero, a dirty, dirty combination. Uh, I'm looking forward to some of that spice tomorrow. And it is double elimination, which means the person who does lose from this matchup, they're not out of the competition. They drop down into that second bracket right there, into that loser's bracket where they have to win because if you lose twice, you're out of the competition. If you do win from this matchup, you make your way through to that winner's bracket final, Mike. And let's be honest, that is where all of our competitors want to be. No doubt. I mean, it just puts you at such a competitive advantage. And I stressed on this earlier, but I feel that being in the upper bracket is more important for this tournament in particular in comparison to some of the previous regionals because you have so much added pressure. And there's other factors that come into play because every round that you go further, it basically doubles your money, which is massive. I, say what you want. You might not want to think about that, but you do. And you're also one step closer to FIFA E World Cup. That's massive. These are big announcements that just went down, that just happened. People want this. It's what you play for all year. Have I not painted the picture? Have I not built it up? If you weren't feeling the pressure, now you are. I don't like know why a, the table got hit. But like a did. modern day Picasso, aka Mike LaBelle right there, painting the picture beautifully. Let's bring in two of our colleagues. I'm trying to think of other artist names right now. We've got a, a Lichtenstein, um, I, I'd say. Michelangelo. We maybe a Michelangelo as well. You guys decide amongst yourselves in the Twitch chat uh, who is who. But someone who's a master, not just at painting the picture with his words, but also with the predictions, Richard Buckley. Four for four. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cheers, mate. I'd probably say I'm the Andy Warhol of FIFA esports, <laughs> to be honest. I could paint some Campbell soup if you want. That's about it. Um, <laughs> I got you that, didn't it, Kyle? You did. Oh. That's good. That's good. Yeah, predictions. I, I, predictions, <laughs> Richard. Come on. Get back to I'm, it. I'm looking forward to this game. I mean, when you consider that they've matched three times across all three of the different qualifiers and Nailers won every time. Uh, I should say, where uh, Dylan, uh, I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna back Dylan. 
Oh, interesting. Again, I would have chosen Dylan as well if I was in predictions. I'm not. Let's see if you can make it five for five. Brandon Smith, who have you got? Let's spice it up. We'll go for Mark. Um, I think this guy, 17 years of age, is the youngest competitor in this top eight. Just signed for a brand new esports organization called Squad Force Nine. Um, just won the uh, the E League Australia as well. PlayStation champion there. That was only a week or so ago. This man is coming in to this tournament full of confidence. And you know what? It's playoffs. Mike said that the the stakes have been risen. Maybe this is his time to turn up. And also, let's not forget, these are in a winner's bracket. Whoever loses, you've got a second chance. They do indeed. I'm so looking forward to this matchup right here. Mike LaBelle, who do you think is coming out on top? I'll keep this one simple for you. I, I think Dylan's going to get the result. I think he's just going to have that extra whatever is needed. And it, it's these fine lines, the the, the, the moment, the, the magician, the warlock, the wizardy, Lee, wizards, wizardly. I'm trying my best with the wizards. Comp, you need that unlocking of the sorcery. You get the idea. I'm going, I'm going with Dylan. Okay. He's just okay. a wizard. He's just a wizard. He's a wizard, Dylan. He's a wizard Why right is he there. Wizard? Why is he a wizard? Why? <laughs> have, you seen how, have you seen how many players are in the box? You got to have some way of unlocking that. You got to cast a spell. Throw it out Just there. Just get a key. Uh, yeah, okay. They have keys as well. They have keys. <laughs> they got to go through the castle doors. Right, Mike, I, I, I'm going to get you out of this big hole you're digging yourself right now. Let's throw it straight across to Brandon it's and Richard. It's a swap, brother. It is the, the final match of the day. It's our winner's bracket semi-final. Guys, take it away. Thank you very much. I don't know what's bigger in this game, Rich. The fact you could be five out of five for the day, which we'll never hear the end of. Uh, or we could be heading towards having our final two in that winner's bracket final. Who will be joining Naylor? Uh, as we said, in that winner's bracket final. Who will be playing against Marcus Gomes tomorrow? The loser of this game will face against uh, one of the OGs in this scene and Marcus Gomes. Two legs of feet from front of us. I did go for Mark, but I'm not saying that Dylan's not had a great year because if you look at what Dylan's done, he's won a qualifier, qualifier number three. The last one he won, he came second against Marcus Gomes in qualifier number two. He's won the FIFA E Club World Cup. He's only 18, this guy, and he's one of those other newcomers into the scene here. But he's up against someone else that's a, a newcomer into the scene, and Mark, who's only 17, and he's also just come off the back of a huge E-League win in Australia. So these two are young, but they're getting so much experience so early on to their careers. Statistically, you would say that Dylan is the, the most winningest player this year in FIFA for this region. At Club World Cup, a regional championship, a second place, he's been in numerous different events throughout the year as well he has been very very good he's been top top level however mark he's sort of on this momentum isn't he he's on this confidence he's been at all three of the the qualifiers as well he's he's placed well he's placed consistently over the year has mark and really I think it's just going to be that winning, that championship experience that's going to send Direwolves Dylan through. We'll have to wait and see. We've got two legs of feet for in front of us. This is the first time we've seen either of these two on the broadcast today. You can see them pictured in the comfort of their own homes. All right now, Direwolves is Dylan from right to left in the Direwolves kit. And of course, in that red strip of SF9, Mark. 17 years of age, so young. Chance for a finesse from distance. We scored a couple of those today. That one maybe slightly too audacious from Dylan. I think we first saw Dylan last year. Summer Cup Series, we saw him knocking on the door when he was obviously a year younger back then. And he's 17 at the time. You've got to be 16 to remember to compete in FIFA Esports. These players coming in, some would say without much fear. I think that's one of the... The big factors that always works in the favour of these players. They've got no fear. They want to be amongst the big names. They want to be playing for the big money. It often seems to work in their favour. As I uh, alluded to in the preview, last time these two matched, Dylan 7-2 win. Qualifier number three. That was the winner's bracket final. So he's got good memories of this matchup, has Dylan. Well, one thing that works in Mark's favour as well, Richard, that he's always been in the top four. Qualifier one, two and three, he's always been in the conversation. It's just when he gets there, he's just lacking the extra win or two to get to a winner's bracket final. Or into the grand final, I should say. Just 
not a bad time to make your first grand final, is it? If you uh, if you do it in the playoffs. Second against third in the rankings as well. These two nip and tuck with the year they've both had. We'll be hoping that they can continue their run. Is CR7 for Dylan maybe to get him off his mark in this matchup? As well back to Pele. You bring on into the conversation. Maybe Vieira will play on the flip side of that from Marku. His hullet wins the ball back. Remember, $20,000 up for grabs tomorrow. In our finals day, we'll be finding out who will be the first Oceanian to go to the FIFA E World Cup. Who will be the first player to take that first spot of the 32 for the finals that everybody wants to be at in London? Ronaldo, R9, lovely turn. It could have been an unbelievable finish. Beautiful play inside the box, wasn't it? With the, uh, like a McGeady spin, actually, from Mark on that particular attack. And bad pipe. Twisting, turning, trying to weave his way in and out of that defence, trying to find the perfect angle for a shot. You did mention the 20k winning, Brandon. You win this game, you're guaranteed seven and a half because you will be a guaranteed top three finish, finishing in the winner's uh, I should say winners bracket semi final, so it's a guaranteed two and a half K. Brilliant ball went back by acres of space. What a block from Barat! Honestly, see it. It's about to go in. Still, the chances are lower. Back to R9. Another block there. That time, Wamba Saka, I think, was the player to stand the strongest. Chances at either end. This first leg starts to come alive now. Last game of our broadcast for today, we must remind you. And if you've enjoyed what you've seen today, well, guess what? We're doing it all again tomorrow. But the stakes will be even higher. Pele. Steal Pele! I'm not too sure what happened at the back there. I think it was Alfonso Davies that just got his pocket picked. I think he won the ball, then somehow the animation of the player then gave the ball back to Pele. Uh, sort of areas he's never ever missing I don't actually think he ever won the ball back I think he, he did the heel to heel just through Alfonso Davis he'll be very disappointed Mark that he's not won the ball back you saw a, a slight sort of eyebrow raise from Dylan as that ball went through Alfonso Davis with Pele and look you'll take the goal all day long I'm just trying to work out. I think he actually went through the legs of the defender. And by that point, there was no way through. If you're a Dire Wolves fan or a Dylan fan, well, you'd be happy to know he leads by a goal to nil at the moment. A player that ranked second this year on the Global Series rankings in Oceania. A player that's won a lot. He's won a qualifier, he's won an E-Club World Cup. Of course, he couldn't take that into the... E League Australia. There's the cup out. There's on oh, nine acres of space. Two of the goals. I mean, at this point, I'm asking questions. Alfonso Davis again. Pele just sort of getting getting through it. R9. Tossing Vieira to the floor as well. Simple finish into the back of the net. A lot of talk about Wizards before this game started. I think. What well, it seems like. Pele. Might have taken some, uh, or Alfonso Davis, as I would say, invisibility potions, because he seems non-existent at left-back. Maybe Ashen. Goalkeeper of choice. Always find it interesting what player defensive they go for. But this is not good. You can just see a very animated mark at the moment. That tells you everything you need to know about this first 45. It's been all Dylan. He's been clinical when he got the chance to set. The first goal may have been a, a difficult one for him to really sort of break down and, and get over. But the second goal was well taken. Arnon turned his man very well. And when you get the ball in that sort of area, you know you're always going to be causing problems. Die Wolves. 
And there FIFA Pro did and leads by two goals to nil at the end of the first half of the first leg. Of course, all these games played over two legs of an aggregate score. Like, still so much time left. So much time left. Yeah, no reason to panic at all yet for Mike and no reason for Dylan to take his foot off the gas as well. 2-0 up at half-time. It's a two-legged format, so there's plenty of FIFA left to be played here. Mark, 2-0 down, but he'll feel he'll feel a little bit hard done by, but there's no reason for him to feel like this game is done, like he's out of this game at all, because the, look, the goals he's conceded on another day, this is 0-0. And also, as we know, from all the games we've seen today, Rich, it's been a case of you've got two legs of FIFA. There's a lot of FIFA still to be played. And anything can happen within that. Back underway. Is there a squad force nine fan? Unfortunately, has there been the start of proceedings? Hullet, can he be composed for Mark? He just can't. Team of the season, De Jong. Team good enough by a handful of pros. To make it into these squads is Cristiano Ronaldo for Mark. Takes it around the corner, couple of ball rolls, surely on I never, ever missing from that. Huge goal. Again, get into the byline, get into that danger area, what I like to call it. Simple double tap, cut back, I nine. Always gonna finish that one. Smashing it into the back of the net. Game on. And such a good way of scoring, Richard. Get the ball down the bottom, as you said. You can make a defender. Sort of find themselves in no man's land, especially for your opponent. It makes oh, so many questions of them defensively. Where are you going? Are you looking for the cutback? Where's the cutback? Where's the ball going to end up? On that occasion, Ronaldo peeling away, making life difficult. He's R9 into CR7, hill to hill. Goes down to ground. He just looked like he fell to the floor, did Ronaldo. As you can see by the referee, not giving a free kick. Advantage played, R9. Trying to find a way around the corner. Alongside Vieira. Vieira comes out the stronger of the two on that one. I'm intrigued to see how the game will go if we know Dylan is a very, very sort of passionate player. He, he lets his emotions be seen and heard. If this game levels up at two apiece, where it could twist and turn down the rabbit hole, that is a second leg. Does he even just stayed like this? He's still looking at a ridiculous second leg, whatever happens. But that goal certainly would have given Mark the confidence in the final third. Goes for that player lock into Mbappe. Use of the player lock. Certainly a, a mechanic that has been a slow burn for pro players. A couple of people got on it really quickly, but for the majority, it was sort of put on the back burner while learning step overs, while learning cancels. But now we're starting to see the player lock used more frequently, especially in and around the box. Back post crosses to the player lock. There's, there's numerous different incentives and ways that you can use it. And as those grand finals approach, I'm sure we'll see more and more uses, just like this one. Might be a chance. Play a look. 
Goal! And a little bit further. Where's he come from again, Richard? Down the byline. And as soon as you see that player lock coming, you're thinking, what do I do? How do I defend it? How do I even keep track of Mbappe, R9, Cristiano Ronaldo, all the players that are in the box there making these runs? It's pretty much the exact same goal he scores his first. Down the byline, easy as you like. There's the cutback. And we said that the second leg was going to be an interesting game. Well, at this moment in time, Richard, we're going into it with everything to play for, even Stevens. No, I 1,000% agree. It's down that far side again. In that area, you can play a look into the box. You can play the pass yourself. But as soon as it dropped back into Team of the Year Mbappe, there was only one outcome. And the two-goal cushion that was worked on and crafted by Dylan. Now no longer means nothing. Chance. Messi off the pitch. Well, come into the, the frame of things for the Argentine. done from Mark massive game of fee for this as you said if you win it you're guaranteed pretty much double than you would get for winning a qualifier you want to qualify I believe it was $3,750 or so it's $3,500 if you win if you get to the if you win this game Richard what you're guaranteed seven and a half seven and a half thousand yeah top three finish guaranteed not bad going Kind of this groove now is Mark. Final five minutes of the first leg in front of us. Surely not a match winner. Dispossessed. I mean, Son also off the best. James Tavernier looking to inject some more pace into that. Back line is the Rangers fullback. I love how all these teams have got that one or two sort of player change, that one or two player difference. I have to remember that in the regular season, qualify one, two, and three, these guys would have played within a certain squad restrictions on their own. FIFA Ultimate Team accounts for this one. Players get access to a very special esports edition of the game where they can use. Any player up to a certain day, hence why you're seeing Team of the Seasons, Team of the Years, any icon that you want, prime icon moments. Charles back inside, I'm in song off the bench, into Messi, fakes your lead out! And I tell you what, that's a really well taken goal. The build-up play was fantastic, and at that moment from Messi, the fake shot to manoeuvre around the sliding feet of the defenders. You'll see it again now, two players he slid round. The fake shot inside, it might be a four-star weak foot, but who really cares from that sort of distance? It's Lino Messi, for goodness sake. It was a beautiful, beautiful fake shot back onto his right foot. The work across the box, Hyung Min Son, Ronaldo involved. Messi, first time fake shot, and then just tucked it back the way it came across the goalkeeper into the far corner. 3 2 Dylan leads. After being 2 0 up, the game going back to two apiece, he now leads three goals to two going into leg number two. And he's actually going to show us a little highlight here as well. Messi. Beautiful fake shot back onto his right boot. You see the slide tackle Tiny. going absolutely nowhere, wasn't it? And just sent him, sent him, sent him to the shops with that fake shot. Finesse shot into the bottom corner. Dylan leads three goals to two going into leg two. Final 90 minutes of day one here at the playoffs. And Brandon, it's been high octane FIFA action. Yeah, I mean, this is the highlights from that game. I think that. The key thing is it from Dylan, he leaves it with something, you know, because look, we'll see in it here. This is the first goal he scored. This was the second goal that he scored. He really crafted this lead and he scored two brilliant goals. This one was even better uh, taken from R9. When the ball did fall into the feet of R9, simple turn, round the corner, into the back of the net. We're asking questions there of Mark at 2-0 down. Did he have what it takes to, to get back into the tie? Both of his goals, Rich, came down the byline. Yep, 
fake shot down the byline, 45 degree fake shot. Little ball roll inside just to hold off his man and then a double tap pass to R9. R9 was the goal scorer, now turning provider. Bursting past Varane down this far hand side. Player locked to Mbappe, one touch out of his feet and smashing it on the left foot past the goalkeeper. You see Dylan's reaction after the game, leveled up at two apiece. But just look at Hung Min Son and Ronaldo's movement here. Son, beautiful move. He comes infield, away from the defender. Messi with that first time fake shot of dreams and then emphatic finish into the back of the net. Plenty of questions there for Mark to be asking. Maybe, oh, ref, why are we still playing with, with, with two minutes over? I think that the main thing that he was saying there in that little video is he's had three shots and he's got every single one of them. That's how clinical the players will be at this level in the Oceania playoffs. If you remember rightly, we were teasing earlier today a hashtag for you guys to maybe win a headset like mine and Richard's, the Turtle Beach headset uh, giveaway that you guys could get yourselves involved in for the new Stealth 600 uh, Gen 2. Well, guess what? We've got it for you right now. We can tell you that the hashtag is hashtag hear everything. The FIFA 21 Global Series Oceania playoffs are brought to you in part by Turtle Beach. Follow at Turtle Beach and make sure you tweet using the hashtag hear everything. Do those two steps. Follow Turtle Beach and use the hashtag hear everything for your chance to win a Stealth 600 Gen 2 headset. That's your hashtag on the screen. Get yourselves involved. Who knows? It could be your lucky day we'll have the second leg coming up in a second but i think what he was saying briefly mark was that he's had three shots he scored three of them and i think at this level we've seen it quite a few times the timing of that slide tackle was was everything there i mean it was just quickly done the fakes around the corner was really good from messi it's those really small margins those fine margins margins sorry of a tackle a block an interception a, maybe a fortunate bounce back that has really been the difference when you've got players that are just such a this level there's nothing separating them it's second against third in the rankings rich yeah best players in the region using the best players available in fifa i mean it doesn't get much more competitive much more better than this right now one game of fifa remaining to see who will be booking a top three place guaranteed going into tomorrow's championship sunday i can't wait to see it unfold but as of right now 3-2 the scoreline. I think, obviously, Mark will be disappointed to be going into game two trailing, but he's narrowed down that goal score, uh, his deficit, two, only one. I think, yeah, genuinely, this game can go either way. I don't think there's one player. In a lot of the games that we've seen, going into leg two, you've had a good understanding of what's going to happen, whether it be Marcus Gomes against Ono a goal in the loser's bracket earlier. You had a a good sort of feel where the game was going to go. The only match that really has been this tight was between Ainazer and Marco earlier on today, which ended via a penalty shootout. This is right up there. This, this could go to penalties, genuinely. Well, back underway for the second leg here. I felt like Dylan would have felt hard done, but if he didn't leave the game with anything to really showcase for that performance and that two-goal lead that he did put forward... However, we're into the second leg now. Will be Squad Force 9, a brand new esports organization that were formed just this year. Put pen to paper with Mark, made sure that he was part of what they're doing. That will be over the moon of the year he has had alongside the run that he could potentially have if he was to go to a FIFA E World Cup grand final. However, Dylan would love to go to his first ever grand final. Six players left in this tournament. These two on your screen. Marco. From Atlantide, of course, Marcus Gomes. They're the only two players that have been to a FIFA E-World Cup. The only other player from this region was Honey Badger many moons ago. Could we see another player? Can represent this region now. I mean, it definitely could be a possibility. Now, the six players that we have got left, of course, that will all be concluded tomorrow. We're just trying to find out who will be playing against Marcus Gomes. The loser of this game will do that. And the winner of this game will play against Footwiz Naylor in the winner's bracket final tomorrow. Still so much FIFA to be played. This could be a, a repeat of our final. 
in all honesty. The loser of this goes down to the loser's bracket. They fight their way through and could be a rematch in the grand final. We'll just have to wait and see. Mark Chance De Jong, 3-3. Three, three. Well, it's the third time he's applied in the game. How's SF9, Mark? And that's what Frankie De Jong's all about. Not just the player to break up the player, but you know what? He can get forward. He's got 92 pace alongside stats. With the majority of 90 plus. And Mark will respond once again. 3-3 three, three the score. And you said this could go to extra time. Why not? It's so nip and tuck between these two. So difficult to call. Where is this game going to go? Back to the drawing board now for Dillon. Cristiano Ronaldo! The tables turn again, and it turns back into the favour of Dillon for a fourth time. He's taken the lead. He's just trying to hang on to this lead now, which seems to be the issue. He just keeps on coming back, does Dillon. Cristiano Ronaldo on this occasion. Leads are meant to be broken. And so far, every time Dylan's gone in front, Mark has answered back. Ronaldo back to Pele. Seven goals already gone in. Oh, no! Strap yourselves in. This might be the last game of the day, but jeez. It's probably been the best game of the day. We're going out with an absolute bang. Beautiful work inside the box. Heel to heel, onto his left foot. Striked hard with venom into that bottom corner. Cracking goal again, I have to say. 4-4. Four, four. Three goals in 25 minutes. Eight games across the two legs. This is what happens when you get the best of the best from a region. You say, right, you win this game, you're guaranteed $7,500 alongside a place in tomorrow. Play your best FIFA. And tell us why you think that you should be going to a FIFA e World Cup. And this is what you'll get. Best part of, we've still got two thirds of it left. Brilliant build up. The one thing that I think will change this game, Rich, if Mark goes and scores again now, he's been always in a trailing position. Never been in front on the aggregate scoreline. Perlo. Back to R9. Nothing that both of these two have in common is that they're deadly round the box in these sort of moments. That'll be a three kick from just 19 yards out. A little step Very over good area. Surely it's not going to go on his own. He thought about it for a split second. Maybe he's faking it. Plays it short, directional. Nutmeg could be maybe in the ascendancy. No. Plays to... Sorry, tries to play it short. Tries to get Ronaldo through. That was not to be the case. I feel as though that's too close to pass right there. Because you're passing... You're passing short into just so many bodies. Like... From 19 yards out, if you go up and over the wall, I, I generally don't think the goalkeeper's saving it. I think there's too much too much pace, too much power on the strike, if you hit it well, that the goalkeeper's getting nowhere near it. Oh, two minutes plus addition. Chance for Mark. Ronaldo, back to Pele. Could this be the first time that Mark would lead in the tight? 
And he's always been trailing. Good play by Alfonso Davies. Any time to follow the minute at most. Is there a run there from Ronaldo? Couldn't get the ball clean away. That will do us for the first 45. Rich, what a game. We are really in for it. 45 minutes away from maybe extra time being needed. Honestly, outstanding between these two. We asked questions if Mark could bring it back. He answered with and passed with flying colours. We asked what Dylan could do if his sort of defensive work could hold up. He has done so far, four apiece. It, it really is too tight to call. Sometimes you just need to sit back. You just need to enjoy it. You just need to say, this is top quality FIFA esports action being played beneath our very eyes. That makes it so much more interesting, though, Rich, is that these two have played so many times this year. Across the different qualifiers, they've had some unbelievable matches. When you play against someone so many times in a year, month after month, when the game changes, when restrictions change, and you come into this where it's literally the even playing field in terms of the players within your own arsenal. There's more money on the line. There's more up for grabs. It just brings more performances like this. And for a fifth time, Dire Wolves' is Dylan will take the lead. But the question on everybody's mind is that will he hold on to it now? Can he start to run away with the time? Killing Mbappe, absolutely rinsing that defence. The through ball, it looked, looked like it had been played a little bit too too far in front of him, giving the defender too much to work on. But Rafael Varane outpaced and strength right there from Kylian Mbappe. In everybody's mind, can he now build upon it? A second goal would certainly be that. Seven and a half thousand dollars are guaranteed if you win this game. He'll be setting up a date. Alongside Naylor tomorrow, that was really well done. That could have been a brilliant well-worked goal from Cristiano and out of there if that final pass was up. In around the box, that's where he just springs into life, isn't it? DW Dillon. The one-touch passing, the little double taps on the cutbacks. Everything has a purpose. Everything has a a real emphasis in the attacking play. Mark again on nine. And we're not done yet. We've just did double figures, ladies and gentlemen. But guess what? There's still nothing to separate the two. They've both had a slice of fortune as well. The first time fake shot, Carlos Alberto not equal to it. The ball again, just bundling its way through. Fortunate for Mark, but he'll take it. 25 minutes left. Dylan looks like he was just in agony as that ball went in. This is where players are really tested, aren't they? Final 20 minutes, Mbappe. Fancies a little bit of the action. Every single time he's been down, Mark, he has replied five times. One of those was a 2 0 deficit. It's 
final 20 minutes now. If we are all square after 90 minutes, we'll go to extra time in our final game of the day. However, that might not need to be the case. Massive tackle is a late one. And that will give the pause the opportunity to be used. We've got the POV of Dylan here, so we'll have a look at what he's doing. He's in a 4 2 3 1 at the moment. He has got a couple of options on the bench if he wants to use, but you're making some serious debates here to take off the likes of Anan Aina, then Bappe or a Pele players that will offer you so much. He's going to take one of those options, though, which will be Hunmin Song that was heavily involved with Messi in that third goal, if you can remember rightly, the end of leg one. Yeah, I was just about to say, I'd be very surprised not to see Son brought on with his positive impact in the first game between these two. He's looking to be a game winner with 15 minutes remaining. Also, this could just get played short and then potentially worked into the box. Could be a, a goal-scoring opportunity. Maybe so. Ronaldo into our night. Charles Dillon goal! Is that the goal? But we'll send him into a winner's bracket final. He's got 12 minutes to try and hold on against a man that never says never. And he's not talking about Justin Bieber. Is Brandon. And I Ronaldo at the near post. Beautiful finish. Played from that short free kick as well. Worked his way into the box. Cristiano and R9 linking up. 12 minutes remaining. Potentially more changes being made here for Dylan. Nothing in the offing. However, Mark certainly will be making changes right now. Changes made again. One last roll of the dice. Final 10. Oh, no. Surely not. Surely not. Oh, no. <laughs> Straight from kickoff. Another pause. Ronaldinho driving at this team. He worked it back into the middle. As soon as the ball fell to R9, you just knew it was a goal, didn't you? Heel to heel, past the defender, and just a very, very comfortable finish into the back of the net. 12 <laughs> goals. 12 what of them. What a game. I mean, Dylan's just saying, he's going, what? Let's see. This guy, he just keeps coming back. Every time I score, he replies. Second against first in Oceania. This is the level of players you're looking at right now. Now, there is nothing to separate the two. Six, six. Final 10 minutes, or are we going to need extra time here? Davies into Vieira. Building. Might be looking for the final chance. Into a chance or an, a, an attack. I mean, Son. Messi not introduced this time round. He was heavily involved last time out. Davies. Extra time. Final Not chance. Yeah. Extra time is needed. And I mean, to be fair, 
Before a ball was even kicked, Richard, in the second leg, you said penalties could be on the cards. I mean, I don't know what crystal ball you're looking at, but I want to look at it as well. It just looked too even to too even to call. I mean, when you've got a, two two players, two opponents who just answer back at every single opportunity, it really is. Sometimes the fairest way to decide it, a penalty shootout. That could be on the cards. That could be on the cards. However, we've got 30 more minutes in front of us. 6-6 six, six the scoreline. Winner books a spot in the winner's final against Footwiz Naylor. This has been a game that's delivered everything for us. And a region that has kicked off these playoffs in style. The best part of it, we get to do it all again tomorrow. If you have just tuned in, this is our final game of the day here in FIFA 21 Global Series Oceania playoffs. It's been a 6 6 thriller between Dylan and Mark. Winner goes into the winner's final, loser goes down into a loser semi final. Where well, they'll play Marcus Gomes tomorrow. Winner plays Footwiz Naylor, the man ranked number one from this season. In Oceania, that could be a great ball around the corner. He'll have the, the right idea. Well defended on the flip side for Dylan. Simon Tavernier linking up expertly well. Very, very good tackle. Need a tackle as well. In the middle of the pitch there. I will always say it, the first half of extra time flies by. With the blink of an eye, we're already at half time and there's only 15 minutes remaining. We haven't even seen a chance. As I say that. Mark comes forward. Mark has not led this tie at all throughout the two legs. I've said it before. He takes the next goal. I think the game changes. I think he goes on to win it. I mean, people will say that's obvious for an extra time, but <laughs> I still believe that sentiment. And around the corner into R9. Goes for a corner. Last chance here in extra time. Two minutes have been played. We've overplayed. CR7. And that will do us 15 minutes left before we head to a dreaded penalty shootout. Time is really not against either of these two. We've already seen a penalty shootout today between Nazar and Marco. That was in a loser's bracket matchup. We're in the winner's bracket now. Semi-final to be precise. 6-6. This is probably the, the longest period in the game where we've not seen a goal. Well, I mean, we thought it was game over in the 78th minute when Dylan scored. 81 minutes on the clock. Next for you know, Mark replies again. Final 15 now. Dylan from right to left in that white strip with the green. And the red shirt and white socks is Mark. 17 against 18 years of age here. Two young players in Oceania. Who have played with so much skill and emotion in the last 12 months. They've both won tournaments. They've both been involved heavily in this e in this esports ecosystem. Dylan and E-Club World Cup winner for the first ever time. Mark and E-Liga. And E-Liga Australia champion, sorry, on the PlayStation with Newcastle Jets. Chance. However, only one name can go to that winner's bracket final. Who will it be? Great challenge. So what, Patrick Vieira there, stepping out of defence. Real big tackle. Maldinho now. That's a deal. Pull it around the corner. Maybe one more chance, R9 for Martinez! Maybe that one will be the 
winner to send you into a winner's bracket final. The man that's been finessing them in all day long is R9. And he might have scored the final goal of day one with four minutes left on the clock. I said it, Rich. This whole it's... game. He it, 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 it just has not taken the lead. And, and speaking of the time to do it, there's no better time. It's been a day of finesse shots. It's been a day of long shots. Mark rolling the dice as he looks up to the heavens. Finally, it pays off. R9, beautiful turn. Finesse shot on the left foot. Whipping it into that left-hand corner. And then Dylan, head in hands moment as a grimace comes across his face. He's been leading. He's been leading. He's been leading. And now he has to come from behind. Do I even dare to say that's why r has got a five-star weak foot as well. He can go on his left. He can go on his right. He can basically score from anywhere on the pitch, apparently, today. Prime Michael moments, R9, the man that everybody dreams to have in their team. Might have just secured $7,500 and a top three finish guaranteed, at least, for Mark. Or is there going to be one more twist to this tail? He's in his hands. It's a throw away. A minute left plus additional time. It looks to be Naylor against Mark in the winner's bracket final tomorrow. And D.W. Dillon taking on Marcus Gomes in a loser bracket semi-final. A minute of added time. Another newcomer onto the scene. 17 years of age, fresh off the back of an E-League Australia PlayStation Championship. We'll go for a goal kick and that will do us. Surely, referee, the ball goes forward. And the full-time whistle blows. Squad Force Knight book a spot in the winner's bracket final tomorrow. And for Dire Wolves, their player in Dillon will drop down to a loser bracket. I mean, that was a 13-goal thriller, ladies and gentlemen. A 13-goal <sighs> thriller against second against third in the playoff rankings. Ridiculous game. You know, GG to both players, as cliche as it is. That was a, a, a brilliant showcase of how competitive a game of fever can be at this level. Generally about as good as it gets right there between two top players. Goals galore in our final game of the day. And what a way to round off day one here in Oceania. Yeah, what a day indeed. That is it from me and Richard on the commentary booth. We'll be back tomorrow for the final games. But for the meantime, let's throw it back to Kyle and Mike. Gents, we've seen so many good games today. That one surely just tops it all. What a way to end day one here in Oceania. I mean, like Brandon just said, we've had some great games today, but what a way that we closed the show out. Mike LaBelle, 13 goal thriller right there between those two going head to head. Neither of them wanted to give it up. I think all of you are underselling that. That's not great. <laughs> That's not good. That is fantastic, unique. Let's start using better vocab words to attach. I, I, I'll give Brandon and Richard a pass because they might be out of breath calling the game. Oh, we're going to go <laughs> over those highlights. I hope we're getting some edits here. We're going to be here all day. I'm going to be out of breath. There were so many goals and the amount of times that I sat there and I said, oh, Mark surely got to be out of this game. He can't make another comeback. But I was wrong! The comebacks just kept coming every single time he had a rebuttal, a reply. And then you would also see Dylan working it around. Both, both of these guys unlocking spaces. Beautiful step work there. The cancellation, so smooth. You're telling a story and I'm buying the novel. Give me the link. Where can I pick it up? You see the heel to heel, just pure power. We're going to be here for a while. Uh, Kyle, just to keep this energy going, I'm going to pass it to you. Go ahead and keep talking about goal after goal after goal after goal. There was plenty of them indeed. They kept coming and coming. And you said fantastic. I would say phenomenal, Mike LaBelle. 5-4 it was at this point between both of these competitors. And every single time Dylan got an inch, Mark came back. Every time Mark got an inch, Dylan came back. Neither of the two wanted to give this one up. And it was in the final few moments of these games with 14 in-game minutes to go, we thought, that is it. Surely that is it. DW Dylan's going through. But SF9's Mark 11 said, hold up, Kyle. Hold up, Mike. 
Oh no, I'm not going out this easily. And we saw him manage to bring it back right there. And it wasn't until the final few moments of extra time, the 116th minute, we saw SF9 Mark get the winner. And you can see how much it means to him. The relief on his face right there. He does win that one, seven, six. He progresses through to our winner's bracket final. DW Dylan isn't out of the competition just yet. He drops down into the loser's bracket side of things. But Mike, look at that. Eight shots, eight on target. Seven of those with goals. That is what you call efficient. Well, even with Dylan, six shots, six goals. This was the ultimate professional match. We talk about being clinical and the importance. It's actually too bad that one of these guys has to take a loss with how they were able to score. And even defensively, there weren't that many mistakes here. And that sounds crazy when you say, what do you mean there weren't that many mistakes? It was 7-6. Watch them back. It's, it's not really poor defense. It's amazing offense and making the right choice at the right moment at the right time. And that, that key particular that's so important if you want to be able to unlock space, whether it's that heel to heel or little side touch or the long shot, they were always able to intermix creativity constantly. Both, both of these guys, just a hand clap. That is an absolute pleasure to watch. You want to end the day with some energy? Come on. Good morning. Yes, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you're watching this, we can guarantee you some great FIFA 21 action. I'm not allowed to use the word great, am I? I'm not allowed to use the word good. I'm not even using fantastic, some phenomenal FIFA 21 action between those two competitors right there. Mike, one of them in Mark progresses through to day number two in the winner's side of things. It is Dylan who progresses through in the loser's bracket side of things, but both of them surely have got to be full of confidence after that game. I think they both know if they replicate what they were able to showcase in that matchup, that they give themselves a chance to win any game against anyone. Uh, with that being said, Naylor still there, still undefeated. And the man has been unstoppable and he's been scoring a lot of goals. Uh, we saw 10 in that first matchup against Ono Gold, another five against the Greek Freak, his teammate there at Footwiz. And I always feel that he goes under the radar. We got to get him on the mic. We need to get an interview in tomorrow before we get started. I wonder if he perceives his positioning the same way as you look at the loser's bracket. Yes, we can see the loser's bracket right now. Tomorrow sets up for round number two. Marcus Gomes taking on DW Dylan. And then it's Atlantide Marco taking on Footwiz Greek Freak. Both of those matches, the winners will go through to round number three where they will face off against each other. The winner of that makes their way through to the loser's bracket final, and they'll face the losers from the winner's bracket final right now. Mike, day number two, I've got a smile on my face already. I'm looking forward to it. And we got that classic, that vintage, that matchup that we keep discussing, or the old guard versus the new guard. You saw Dylan, you see Greek Freak, you see Marcus Gomes, and you see Marco. So I can't wait to see how this kind of unfolds. It's a lot of matches that you asked for. It's what you would expect with a playoff run. We've seen premium quality FIFA on display, matchup on matchup on matchup, and it's going to continue. It is indeed into day number two. But before we get into that, let's have a look back at some of our action from day number one. It's time for our game highlight presented by PlayStation. And Kyle, I just feel that it's only right that we showcase a little more of Naylor. And he's been the performer of the day, in my opinion. Got the results needed. And the second leg that he had against Greek Freak was spectacular. Arguably the best leg of FIFA we've seen from any of the competitors. And we start with the player lock. And you need to have a mastery of this if you want to be at the pro level, or it seems that way. And you get complete control, almost a manual guide to making the runs. As you can see, he unlocks that space. And then Pele afterward, the step over into maybe the quickest ball roll uh, in, into that scoop turn. You lay it off, R9 on the back end. You feed the bear, you feed the beast. You always feed R9. The Brazilian knows what to do with it. It's a beautiful conversion, and it's something that we have to review. And it also was the go-ahead for Naylor, so it was a massive goal for him in terms of his confidence and also officially completing that comeback. 
It was indeed. How many times have we seen that man, R9, step up when these pros need him? And I'm sure we'll see plenty of it tomorrow as well in day number two. But Mike, day number one is provided so much action. This is what the playoffs is all about. We've had some great qualifiers, but we've forgotten about them. They're in the past. Now it's about the present. It's about the playoffs. And these players, they're here showcasing why they're the best of the best in this region. No doubt, uh, they're almost reconfirming for everyone. And I just think we have so much more FIFA that's, we do, but it's gonna be on display. And also it's kind of a reset. Whether you played amazing today, or if you played in, in a way that you think you could be better, either way, it all starts over tomorrow. And we've seen players come up from the bottom bracket. We've seen people progress from the top bracket. It's still anyone's game. It is indeed right. We've looked at a game highlight. Now it's time to have a look back at five goals i don't know how they've managed to whittle this down to just five but we'll have a look at some of the best of the best it's time for our top five goals of the day you have been following this region this year you would remember he did go and win qualifier two cr7 it's moments like this where you've got to be clinical and he'll do exactly that with all night Cancelo. Why well, no a go? Find an equalizer. Bruno Fernandez twisting, turning the bolts. Can he find CR7? Does well! I tell you what. A really well taken finish by no a go. The way he shifted the ball from left to right. Going to take the lead here just before half time. Perlite. Back to our. From Naylor. Another chance to come forward again. R9 back to Mbappe. Mbappe still. Last chance. R9 left right. Back of the net. Good night. Players standing strong. Players standing in the way. Ronaldo from distance! Oh, nine! With the finesse of dreams! Brandon, How far give me the line. Was that one? Give me the line, please. There we have our top five goals of the day. But Mike, there was plenty to pick from, but they were really the, the creme de la creme, the best of the best. And we get to do it all again tomorrow. No doubt we're going to rerun it or run it back. And I mean, just after 13 goal thriller, uh, you could have probably taken at least three or four out of that match if you really wanted to. You could indeed. Right, it is time to talk about something that is super, super exciting. It's not just EA Sports FIFA 21 action that you can watch. Okay, we've got something that's very special. Yes, from June 1st to June 13th, the Apex Legends Global Series showcases the best Apex players in their regions as they go head to head to compete for the championship title and their share of the one million dollar prize pool coverage starts tuesday june 1st at 6 p.m pacific standard time so make sure you stay tuned to twitch.tv forward slash play apex to catch all of the action Mike, we've got plenty of action right here as well. Day number two is coming up for us and it's going to be an exciting one. The Oceania region is a region that has grown on me because of the pros that make it. And tomorrow we have six left in this competition right here. And I will say this, all six of them are worthy champions. Anything could happen tomorrow. No doubt, mark your calendar, set your alarm clock, do what you got to do, depending where you're tuning in from. It'll be very early in the morning if you're in the United States, but it's worth it. Uh, you're going to get not only the, the top quality FIFA, but you're a part of history. This is the, the first uh, player that we're going to have that's qualified for the FIFA E World Cup, which I think is extremely exciting uh, as someone that comes from that background as a competitor. 
that's the goal. Every year you set out with maybe mini goals in mind. Oh, I want to get to this regional or this qualifier. I want to be ranked here. I want to make playoffs. But as you're itching or you're, you're meeting those goals, you want to be at the FIFA E World Cup. That is very, very true. And one of our competitors, they'll be going to sleep tonight, dreaming of being in that FIFA E World Cup, but only one of them will make it and we'll find out who that will be tomorrow. So make sure you tune back in tomorrow. It is the Oceania playoffs. It's the FIFA 21 Global Series. Day number two is coming up your way. And as I've said all day, you do not want to miss it. So make sure you are there. We'll see you tomorrow. Make sure you stay safe. Thank you for tuning in. And tomorrow it gets bigger and better. We'll see you there.